lead attorney here. Hope you guys are doing well, man. <laughs> Struggle streaming already. Uh, this is a listen. I hope this is not an indication of how this is going to go. You know, some of these things go so well in my head. And then when I when I click, you know, in broadcast and I think, oh, that was such a good stream. The next day when I wake up, you know, bombarded with emails. Oh, this is so terrible. Oh, I, I, I knew the truth would come out. Oh, I knew you were a part of the manosphere. I knew you'd start beating up on these black women sooner or later. Someone told me you were associated with O'Shea Duke Jackson. That's what they told me. <laughs> Boy, those emails. <laughs> Boy, I've gotten a few emails these last few days where I'm just like, what the hell is, it, is going on? Is it me? I swear to God. I have gotten some emails today where I've needed some 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 fucking affirmation. I shouldn't have cursed within the first two minutes. Forgive me, YouTube. I have like, am I seeing this thing wrong? Right? Shout out to uh, shout out to El Guapo. <laughs> he had to send me a message. He had to make a video for me and be like, "No, nah, Lee, no, nah, this ain't you, Lee. This is like this ain't you. This ain't you." Shout out to Rebuilding. <laughs> I tell you, I've gotten some emails where I'm just, is it me? Right? But shout out to the brothers holding it, hold, holding the lead attorney down, man. And shout out to some sisters too. I didn't get any messages from sisters. I didn't emails, but I got some comments. They were like, hey, man, you know, you treat her respectfully. All the sisters, vast majority, were also supporting Suzette too. Shout out to, shout out to Suzette Speaks. She's coming on today, guys. Listen, listen to what I tell you. I want you guys to, to listen with half an ear. I want you guys to see if you can pick up on anything. And not just from her. Hold me to the same standard. That was one of the issues, right? That I got all these emails about, oh, I was treating her so bad, treating her so, so aggressively. Go back and watch the tape. Like you don't, you guys don't know that we're trained. <laughs> But uh, your, your boy has gotten some emails. What does my man Darius say? Shout out to Darius. Says, man, Suzette knew she got demolished. She's trying to redeem herself. Let's be real. <laughs> Let the games begin. <laughs> Let the games begin. I hear you, Darius. And listen, to be fair to Suzette, it's y'all's fault. <laughs> it's y'all's. She thought she was just going to be like Darius. She's like, oh, okay, yeah. I, you know, I, let's, let's see what the lead's talking about today. Darius showed up. Darius like, okay, let's see what the lead's talking about today. Suzette showed up with the same disposition. Suzette showed up with the same intention. All of a sudden, y'all just take her and y'all y'all push her onto the dam. She didn't even want to come up. It was y'all who were like, get Suzette up, get Suzette up. She was like, me? Well, okay, I guess I'll go up. What are we doing? Right? 30 minutes later, she's in the hot seat. Like, I didn't plan any of this, guys. I just I just clicked on it just like y'all. And so a lot of y'all criticized her with really the only reason she was up there in the first place is because of you. That's how you know the chat ain't shit. Boy, y'all will, y'all will set people up. They said, they said y'all set her up. So uh, you know. Let her redeem herself a little bit. She was not prepared at all. She didn't know what the hell was going on. Now, to be fair, I didn't either. To be fair, I showed up to talk about April Mason. And we'll just do a little quick review, a little three-minute review so that everybody knows who April Mason is and what the deal was. I did not know that day I was going to be collaborating with her. Right? And because of this, you know, because she did so well in some sense, you know, she got hundreds and hundreds of subscribers. She might have like over 500 subscribers over the past couple days because a lot of y'all were rocking with what she was saying. So, you know, on one side, it can look like a demolishment. 
if that's a word. But on the other side, it's an absolute victory because a lot of people were rocking with what she was saying. So I don't know how you want to call it, but this is the time she's prepared now. All right. She, she, she knows what the deal is now. And this is not some type of hot seat thing. Guys, next week, next week, guess who's going to be on the hot seat? Guess who's going to be on the hot seat next week on her channel? Right. The tables are going to turn. The cross-examination is going to turn. Right. She's like, no, Lee, you, 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 you gonna invite me into your home and you're going to have the home field advantage. Shout out to uh, Mixmaster Miko. Thank you so much. Shout out to <laughs> just talking about rebuilding. Salute. Let me, I always call him a rebuilding, rebuilding Black Wall Street. He's like, no, nah, man, let me tell you about my other channel. Father and son worlds apart. This channel is blowing up. I was watching some woman today. Goldilocks something. And she had kind of done a review on this or that. And to me, it seemed like she had an excellent analogy, but I didn't understand the analogy at all because I'm not into Marvel comics. I'm not into the, to the comics, to the dolls, right? <laughs> not dolls, <laughs> the action figures. Right. And, uh, and so, uh, I, I didn't get it. I didn't get the full message, but I was like, man, I bet rebuilding knows if this is a good analogy or not. She was talking about how black men see black women. What black, what black men want in a partner? And she was, I'm, I'm going to mess this up. I'm sorry, Goldilocks. I'm going to fuck it up. She said that men want a woman who is like the peppermint. Is there somebody named peppermint in Marvel Comics? Peppermint somebody? But then there's another woman whose name is like uh, uh, Captain Marvel. Is that a woman? Oh, this is all messed up. Anyway, she was saying that women thought that men wanted a woman like Captain Marvel when really what men want is a woman like Peppermint, a woman who can come in, be super competent, kill the game, but then it's kind of like, you know, fall back a little bit. Whereas a woman, is anybody, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Goldilocks. I messed your whole video up. I don't know what the, y'all go watch her damn video. Uh, but um, I thought it was interesting. I wish, but I wish I would know. Anyway, what's the point? The point is father and son worlds apart talks about all of these things. Marvel talks about all of these things. Comics. If you know about the, the Marvel world, if you know about all these characters, this, this, this brother's channel is blowing up. He has been supporting me since day one, uh, way back in the day. Um, he's been supporting me. I, because I admire him not only as a content creator, but also as a man, I invited him to be part of my uh, personal, my private free mastermind uh, of uh, small content creators where we talk about various things. Now, you know, he started the rebuilding channel, but now he's on to this channel, beautiful channel that he has with his son who's over in Germany. And uh, they talk about all of these things, Marvel and, and Superman and Batman and all that. And it's just blowing up. So if any of y'all are interested in that, and you know, I'm young, I mean, I'm old, right? Some of y'all young was the twenties, the thirties. Y'all know about this stuff. Y'all go check my man out. Excellent content creator and, a, and an excellent man. Excellent man. He made a video again, because sometimes I'm getting all these damn emails. <laughs> I got an email and it had me questioning myself. I was like, am I seeing this right? And uh, he made a he made a email he made a he made a video uh, and uh, it really touched me and it, it kind of let me know that I was kind of seeing what what I was seeing. So shout out to Father and Son Worlds Apart. Shout out to Father and Son Worlds Apart. We got humble. We got humble, Brian. Thank you for such a generous such a generous super chat. What's he say? We literally healing our community with the black manosphere and the women who are willing to support. Yes, this is history, people. We are blessed to see this. I totally, totally agree. I remember when I was coming up, there was no manosphere. I remember when I was coming up, man, there wasn't really, you know, I hit it right. I was there at the beginning of the internet, right? Maybe in high school where you would get in the mail, you would get the CDs. You would get the AOL CDs and you put the CDs in your in your computer. So you would buy minutes. You would buy minutes of the Internet. 
and you would you would check the mail every day to see if your minutes came. Doesn't that sound weird? You would check the mail every day to see if your minutes, your internet minutes came, right? I mean, there was no help for the brothers. <laughs> there was nothing on. I don't even remember what was on there. Uh, I don't know if even YouTube was on there. I think we had chat rooms. Y'all remember chat rooms? I used to play chess on the ICC. If anybody is chess players, if, any, if anybody remembers the ICC, but I used to play chess on there, and then later on, maybe videos, and later on there was a uh, there was music. Y'all remember Napster, LimeWire? I mean, way way back. So what Humble Pariah is saying right now, man, that I mean, you young brothers today, you doing uh, before the billions, you uh, you you uh, Jonathan. Barronville, like I, there's a reason why you guys are so advanced. Because <laughs> when we back, when we us dinosaurs, when we were your age, man, we didn't know nothing. We were there with sticks and stones. So when Humble Pie says, "Man, this this black manosphere is really killing the game," and he's bringing us together, he's absolutely right. There was really no space for you know what has gone on between me and Suzette. There was no space for a black male attorney and a black female attorney to talk and say, hey, what, what the hell's going on, right? Two intellectuals might be a, too strong of a word, but two educated people, two people who are precise and accurate, two people who are not wilding out at each other. You know, you'll go some parts on the manosphere, you see 10 icons and everybody's screaming at each other, right? That's not what we're doing. It's just, it's just two people who are educated but who are part of this, you know? Suzette's single. She's looking. I'm single. You know, I'm on a dating app or two, right? Shout out. Somebody recognized me on a dating. <laughs> I ain't even gonna say her name, but she recognized me on the dating app. She was like, Lee. <laughs> she was like, man, I love what you are doing. Shout out to her. I ain't gonna say her name, but uh yeah, man. So we're both looking. So not only it's not like we're just sitting up, you know, in the stands looking at this and trying to figure out what's going on. We're on the field. We are on the field. We're just like you. We're on the field. So this is a very interesting moment right now. And uh, humble uh, pariah. Am I saying that correctly? Um, is absolutely right. So uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, did I miss something? All right. So thank you so much, Humble, Humble Pariah. I really, really appreciate that. And not, not only the super um, the super generous super chat, but also the comment. I absolutely agree. Absolutely agree. My man Walk said, Pepper, Pepper, Iron Man's wife. Said, yes, yes, yes. You guys know. You guys know that she was saying that she was saying, and this was so deep, even though I didn't really get it. She was saying that the issue was the women. She's saying the, the problem was the women. That's too strong of a way, but you know, she says the women thought that the men wanted the Captain Marvel when really what the men want are the, 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 pep, the pepper, the pepper pats. What is, uh, is that true? How do you guys feel about that? Is, is, do you guys think that's a right, uh, a correct uh, I didn't I didn't understand anything, but the way she described them, it was like the women have a misunderstanding of what the men want. The men want a, a woman who can come in and like lay it down, come in and be strong and be competent. Right. Be competent. Come in and handle it. But they don't just want a woman coming in, kicking over buildings. And shit, right. Like, you know, because that kind of how do y'all feel about that? Do y'all feel like uh, that's the right assumption or not? Uh, but yeah, thank you so much, Dario, for, for coming in and supplementing my uh my knowledge. All right. So, but shout out to uh to Goldie. What's her name? Goldilocks. Is Goldilocks something something? Goldilocks something, right? But I thought that was an interesting uh I thought that was an interesting video, even though I didn't have the underlying context. But the way she explained it, I think I kind of got it, right? Oh, my, my man. <laughs> My man rebuild it. Says, love you, bro. I mean, I feel the same way. You and El Guapo both. Because sometimes I was like, I didn't really know. Guys, I've gotten a lot of crazy emails. 
I've gotten a lot of crazy emails over these past few days. And it's just like, uh, am I seeing this right or wrong? Right. So I am not. Let me be, let me be honest. Okay. I'm a confident man, but I, I don't really have a big ego. Like if, 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 if you tell me something, I'm going to really listen to it and I'm going to consider it. And I know that I am not perfect. I have made countless mistakes. So sometimes I'll see something and then somebody like, oh, lead. I don't know if you're seeing it the right way. And I want to listen because I want to be right overall. I mean, I want to, I want my, my perception of the things to be right. It's not like I need to be right. I want my perception to be right. I want to know that I'm seeing this the right way. And uh, one of the reasons that this, 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 not even only the mastermind, but really all of this black YouTube space, the connections that we're creating are so important is because we can back each other up. You know, I've never met El Guapo in real life. I've never met Rebuilding in real life. And yet we have this, we have this connection, right? And they can send me a message and I can, I can absolutely take it to heart. Absolutely. When, you know, I started to feel like, am, am I the, <laughs> you know, is it you or is it me, right? You know, <laughs> sometimes you'll be arguing in court and the judge won't agree. And you'll be like, listen, judge, I mean, I know what I'm saying. Is it you or is it me? Because one of us is, is not on the same page. And I think I'm right, but, you know, I'm willing to listen, Right. And so when you have brothers who will be like, let, let, let me send this brother a message, then, you know, that really just goes beyond. It goes beyond something where it's like, no, no, don't worry about it. Right. Because, you know, it was important. It was important, uh, kind of what we were discussing. And I wanted to make sure I was seeing it the right way. And to be honest, I felt a way about it. I was upset. <laughs> if I be honest, I was, I was, I was, a little, I was a little upset about it. And it's not like they were saying I was right to be upset, but they were saying, you know, you you see in what you're seeing, right? So thank you so much, uh, Rebuilding. And again, y'all go check out Father and Son Worlds Apart. If any of the um, if any of the moderators, you're a moderator anyway, right? But uh, whoever, if, if one of the mods can um, can put the, the 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 link to Father and Son Worlds Apart, it's a beautiful channel brother over here with his son over there in uh, Germany and they make videos together, right? How beautiful is that? You know, we're hearing all this stuff about black men and don't black men don't care about their kids. Black men don't care about their sons. And look at this. Look what, you know, look what we're talking about. So, you know, we are absolutely dispelling a lot of myths that are flying around. But again, thank you so much, uh, Father and Son Worlds Apart. Really, really appreciate that. What does Trash Can Wave say? Uh, Captain Marvel is played by Brie Larson. I have a mission for that chat. Look up Brie Larson's feet on Google. Sorry. <laughs> oh, we back to the feet. <laughs> you know, I do not understand this. Let me tell you something, guys. Let me tell you something about women. That's the thing, too. You know, Suzette, Suzette Speaks came on. And some of the stuff she was saying, like, men were not... They were just not getting it, right? You're just not getting it. I have a friend. Her feet are beautiful. Her feet are absolutely beautiful. How do I know that her feet are beautiful? Because she wears sandals all the time. All the time, all through summer, early spring. She starts it off in early spring, all the way through summer, all the way through late fall. She gonna hit you with the sandals. Is she hitting you with the sandals because her feet are beautiful? No. She said it with her sandals because, you know, she likes to wear sandals. So I pulled her to the side, man. I said, listen, you know, I'm in this internet thing now and I've learned a lot of things. Guess what I learned? I learned that women are making so much money with their feet. She was like, what? I was like, listen, there's this thing called OnlyFans. And if you get on there and take pictures of your feet, you can get paid. And this is a young woman. She's young and she's working kind of by the hour. It's not like she has like a salary type of job. So she's getting paid an hourly wage. It's a nice hourly wage. It's a nice hourly wage. But, you know, it's not like she's making 60 grand or anything like that. Right. Because she, she's young. I said, listen. 
get on there, take you a few pictures, and just try it out. You know what she said? <laughs> she was like, no, that's weird, right? <laughs> Why do I want people looking at my feet? Fair enough. You wear sandals from the beginning of spring to the end of fall, you know, every day. Every day you are showing your feet. But then, you know, you don't want people looking at them for, you know, $100 a photo. It's, I just, some things, you know, maybe it's a gender thing. I don't know what it is. I do not know what it is. But if you, how is it that you show your feet at the mall? You will walk through the mall. There will be a thousand people that will pass you and you're showing your feet. You didn't receive a dollar. But at the same time, you can just take a picture right after the mall. Just take a picture in the car from the mall, put it up on the internet and get paid for it. But that's weird. I don't, I don't know. Maybe it's, the, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is at all. Shout out to uh, My Vivid Life. Shout out to my vivid life. What does my vivid life say? I appreciate you and the mastermind group. Yes, y'all know, y'all know vivid man. Excellent, excellent content creator herself, right? Also part of the the mastermind group. Uh, awesome, awesome, awesome content creator and uh, really cool person. She does a lot of uh, varied content. She'll talk to you about guns. She'll talk to you about. Uh, empowerment, proving your life, not giving up on life, even if you're over 40, you know, keep getting it. Keep going, keep getting it. And that's why I love it. Listen, you know, I'm 44 and sometimes I'll be like, man, it's just easy for me to stay in this house, right? And then I'll see her and she's out at the damn skating rink or something like that. She's living it up. So sometimes we do need some, uh, some inspiration, right? Sometimes we need some inspiration and her uh, channel is super inspirational, right? So uh, shout out to uh, Vivid. We got me, uh, Mixed Master Miko. What should we say? TLA, who are you going to fly out to Atlanta to join the World Series, right? Guys, I'm trying to go. Nobody, everybody like, oh, the ticket. And now, you know, we kind of in the hole. We need this. We need game three. We absolutely need game three. Lauren or Suzette? Man, Lauren's big balling now. She's out in LA, right? She's doing her thing, right? I, mean, I don't really hear from Lauren like that. Lauren. <laughs> Laura got too big for you, boy. She in LA. I'm sure she's doing like photo shoots and hobnobbing with the stars. You talking about front row tickets at the Lakers game. Shout out to Laura. She's doing it up. Right. And Suzette, man. Suzette, listen, Su as we all saw, Suzette's right here. She is a chat. I'm going to pull her up in a second. Suzette's standards are high. Okay. We talking about some high standards. I don't know if the lead, you know, the lead is just the lead. You know, I'm a black. I don't know what that means. You know, she probably dates black. I don't know. They'll date anything down there in Miami. I went, I went to South Beach. I was looking at all these people. I was like, who are you European? Are you from Africa, Nigeria? Like, where are you from? You can't tell where anybody's from. Cuba, the Dominican Republic, Brazil, Portugal. You do not know where people are from. In, in damn Miami, they they can be from anywhere, boy. So uh, I guess when you're in when you're in uh, Miami, maybe your your racial preferences are more fluid. I don't know. That's something that we can ask her, guys. Um, you got I sent out a, a message on on uh, on Instagram saying, hey, if you guys want me to ask her some questions, you let me know. A lot of questions came in and shout out to the women. Women really ask more questions than the men. Awesome questions. So we will get into some of that. Says a uh, way to maintain coolness under pressure while struggle streaming. Man, <laughs> I couldn't even pull up y'all's y'all's comments on that last struggle stream. That was embarrassing. That was absolutely embarrassing. I have been doing this for when did I probably started my first live stream? Maybe maybe last year, maybe in November. So it should be almost a year. I should I should have this damn thing done down by now, right? But who knows? Who knows, right? All right, so let's uh let's kind of what is this? Lead pimping out feet, man. They wouldn't even let me. I listen. <laughs> they wouldn't even let me. I was like, listen now, go listen, listen, listen. I can tell you the poses and everything, and we'll split it 50-50. You got the feet. I got the ideas, right? Come on. Let's split it up. Now, you know, shout out to Sin for the P. He will say, oh, we'll see that show's lead as a square. Why? Why does that show lead as a square? Because when you really pimp it out, women, you don't split nothing. It ain't no damn 50-50. You get the whole thing, right? 
which is why I don't really I don't understand the pimping game at all. Because if I was a woman, it's like how am I give you a hundred percent? This is going down the wrong road. But yes, you are exactly right. I don't. If I was showing my feet every day, May, June, July, August, September, October, I would. I mean, you're showing them anyway. Why don't you get paid, right? Fifty dollars, a hundred dollars a pop. It's dudes out here, man. <sighs> you want to talk about simping? Get you some pretty feet and see what happens, right? There are women. And maybe that's me being a man, right? And just placing too much value on money. Because to me, if you're showing something anyway, you might as well. Y'all know what I'm saying, right? I mean, am I sounding too weird? I don't know. Y'all know, y'all, y'all see what I'm saying. Lou Kaisley 20. What does Lou Kaisley say? Oh my God, her feet looking like an out of two keyboard. <laughs> Lou Kaisley looked it up. <laughs> Luke Aisley looked it up, said, no so BS, no so BS, the chocolates. <laughs> oh, she actually looked it up. Now y'all are making me curious. No, man. <laughs> Shout out to Luke Aisley, man. Luke Aisley, one of my biggest supporters, always holding the lead down, always supporting this channel. These streams that you guys are watching. She's always supportive. Thank you so much, Luke Aisley. And she does her homework, right? She's like, no, nah, let, me, let, me, let me go tell Lee what the deal is. She's like, Lee, don't even, <laughs> don't even do it, man. She said looking like an auditory, out of two keyboard. That is hilarious. I have never heard that before. Shout out to, what does that Caleb say? Uh, a, a foot pimp named the leader told you she wouldn't let me do it. Ladies. And she's young. See, that's the thing, right? She's young. If she was 38, she'd probably like, Lee, take, you know, just tell me how to do it. Like, take me to the promised land. Show me how to get this money. Right? But she's in her mid-20s and she's all, you know, you know. Right? But it is it me? Like, I need to ask Rebuild. I need to ask Guabo. And like, if you're showing that you defeat every day at the mall anyway. Why not get paid for it? If you're like, you know, 25, I don't know. I don't know. At any rate, it's a personal decision, right? It's a personal decision. What does Daddy Dave say? Lee, check it out her feet to tell male from female in Atlanta. <laughs> Atlanta's deep, guys. Atlanta is deep, boy. There are things... There are things that will go on in Atlanta. Let me tell you something. Suppose me, suppose I I, I fly Suzette up out here. Like Suzette, I don't know how the Fogos are down there in Miami. Let me take you to my, let me take you to the best Fogo in the nation, right? But before then, before dinner, I say, hey, let's go to the park. Y'all seen Suzette. Suzette's beautiful, right? I swear to God, guys, I could take her to Piedmont Park. No one would look at her. No one would look at her. You know who they'd be looking at at Peabar Park? They'd be looking at the lead, boy. Go to Peabar Park as a black man and see what happens. A beautiful park right in the center of the city. Right right in the center. Beautiful park. The, the best park that we have in the state. Best park. Go to Piedmont Park as a black man and see what happens. <laughs> Shout out to all of Atlanta, boy. Atlanta's Deep, 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 deep. What does Charlie X say? Looks like sinful uh, needs to do a, please do something for my feet, Rose. <laughs> Shout out to Sin, man. I listen to this dude and he tells me, I mean, not me, he tells all of us stuff, right? But it's just a whole world. It's a universe that normal guys just do not have any visibility on like any access to it's, it's super weird and to be honest you can tell he's kind of religious too so i don't i don't understand how those two i don't understand how the religious world combines with the p world right you can go down to atlanta you can see a lot of worlds go down to piedmont park you will see a lot of worlds that you didn't know existed and they are existing Side by side. 
So I'm curious. I like to like look in to kind of peel back the curtain and say, what the hell, what the hell sinful the piece talking about? And I'm listening in with my half an ear and I'm like, man, he's talking about some real stuff. And the interesting thing is when you take truth, because the truth is going to be the truth no matter the world. It's two plus two on Mars, guys. Like the truth is the truth. So when you hear the truth from that world and you can apply it to your world, you can apply it to other world. I, I love Simple the Peas content, man. I absolutely love it. You know, <laughs> he did a video, guys. You know, the video that he did, you know, where it was talking about me and Tasha Gay. It wasn't like that video was very complimentary to me at all, to be honest, to be honest. But this is what I'm telling you guys. I don't really have a big issue. If you want to criticize me, especially if it's fair criticism, I mean, it's not like the stuff that he was saying was just crazy. You know, I, I don't I don't walk around on Stewart Avenue with a Glock with dope under my nutsack. You know where I'm at at three in the morning? It's not on Stewart Avenue. I am in my California king size bed under my weighted blanket. I am asleep. All right. I am not out on the track. I am not waiting for a woman to hit me up on my beeper to tell me, you know, where my five hundred dollars is. I'm asleep. All right. So if, if Sid is like, oh, you know, the leader square, this and that, I got to take that. I can, what am I supposed I, I'm supposed to argue about that because I'm a man. Now, of course, I'm a man. And I got a little ego, right? So I don't really like to hear. But if it's the truth, <laughs> if it's the truth, what I'm going to say, guys, listen, listen, listen. Y'all have me, listen. How, how, why am I talking about this? Y'all pull me out so much. I told Suzette, I said, listen, show up, Suzette, show up around 250. I ain't even going to do a bottle law, right? I said, show around 250. I haven't even got, <laughs> I'm so far behind, guys. Listen, let me get on it. Let me get on it. Let me get on it. Um, let me give a big shout out again to Suzette. She's in the back. We're going to bring her up. I want you guys to ask questions. All right, and I've got some questions that a lot of you ladies uh, wanted wanted answered as well. A lot of you men, and we're going to be respectful, of course, right? Because it's not like you know she's gonna she's gonna grill me on her on her collab. We're doing a collab next week, Wednesday, two thirty, three o'clock. Check it out. I'm gonna announce it, uh, but I want you guys to kind of calendar it calendar it in. It's gonna be good. So you know, just as a refresher, what the hell is going on? I was talking about April Mason, you fuckers. Y'all push Suzette up. She she was not ready to talk about April Mason. I, to be honest, guys, I didn't really know much about April Mason either. So we were just, we were built, shout out to Kevin Samuels. We were building the plane as we flew the damn thing. Shout out to Kevin Samuels. He showed up. Not only was he in the chat, but he came on the panel. Huge, huge milestone for the lead to have the Godfather on, right? I got some emails about that too. <laughs> Some of y'all women hate Kevin Samuels. You, you, you hate that man. I got some emails about that too. I got some, I'm unsubscribing immediately emails about that too. To be fair, even Suzette, you know, when we were having our back and forth. Suzette brought that man up four or five times, right? It's like he is just in every body, specifically the black women. Like he is just invading in their mind, All right? So it was interesting to have him come up and give his perspective as well. But let's get to it, guys. Let me give a big shout out real quick to my Patreon members. Shout out to all my Patreon members, guys. If you want to learn how to get a YouTube channel off the ground, if you want to learn how to have Kevin Samuel show up on your YouTube channel, join the Patreon. Do not join right now. Join, you know, November 1st. If you join right now, they're going to charge you and they're going to turn around and charge you in a couple of days. Don't do it. Just wait until November. Do not join my Patreon now. Uh, do not get double charged. Big shout out to United Fitness, excellent content creator, part of the Supreme Court of my uh, of my Patreon. I was talking to him yesterday, guys. He's got all new equipment. He's moved. The studio is going to be awesome. Guess what? He said he came up on the panel like Suzette. He came up on the panel, closed out a $5,000 contract from coming up here. So when you guys come up here, it can really have value. Look at Suzette. She came up here. She's got like, what, four or 500 subscribers, new subscribers now. Guys, join the Patreon. Come on up. We're doing really good things, right? And salute again to United Fitness. I mean, for closing out that client. That's awesome. $5,000 client. 
Shout out for my man, Jamar John Johnson. He came up last time, guys. A brilliant, brilliant, uh, uh, um, a renaissance man, business, entrepreneurship, comedian. Like he's got it all down. He's got all the ingredients. Excellent, excellent, excellent content creator as well. Also a member of the Patreon at the highest level, the level of the Supreme Court. Right. So shout out to Jamar John Johnson as well. Now, let's kind of get into it, guys. Just a quick recap, because we got Suzette coming up right now. All right. How did we get here? How did we get here? Well, all right. Well, uh, let me shout out to my man, Gene, too. We shout out to my man, Gene. What does Gene say? Gene Joseph says exposure, expansion, feed on one another and bring scrutiny, deserved or not. I warn you way back then this would happen as you excel and even mention Kevin Samuels as an example, though I did not present my point well. No, no, no. Your point is well taken. Your point is well taken. And listen, you know, this is this is a you know what you're what you're saying is is absolutely true. Not only is it true for me with someone, what with 75,000 subscribers, true to Suzette, you know, with a thousand. You know, Suzette came up here. She was like, wow, you people in the chat are talking, talking crazy, right? If you get on the internet, man, that's why there's so many great brothers like uh, the Steel Curtain. It was like, man, I can't, I got so many great things to say, so many great ideas. And you know, it's true because you see him in the comments, but he's like, I can't come up here because then, you know, Tasha K will come after me or then, you know, these random people will come after me. Tommy Sotomayor had a man go into a grocery store put the man put his hand on Tommy Sotomayor's mother's shoulder, took a picture and then sent it to Tommy Sotomayor. Imagine that, right? This internet's crazy, right? And Suzette is like, man, I didn't know. I'm just trying to talk about women's empowerment. I don't want all these fuckers coming after me, man, right? I feel the same way. I'm like, man, I'm just talking, trying to talk about court cases. And then Tasha Kay's talking about white woman's discharge. Like, what are you talking about? Where? <laughs> How did we get here? All right. So your point is, well, <laughs> take it, John Joseph. Really, really appreciate it. Right. Really appreciate it. Shout out to JT and Coin Rings. How did I miss that? Hello, TLA in the chat. Yes, 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 yes. I think I missed another one, too. Um... Oh, shout out to uh, shout out to Shiv Inu. Shout out to Solo TV, man. Solo TV 84 made me so much money. He got me in on that damn Shiv Inu, boy. <laughs> shout out to all the crypto boys, man. Them crypto boys know something that we don't. They absolutely know something that we don't. Uh, so, so absolutely shout out to shout out to that. All right. So how did we get here, guys? So I made a video. And it was talking about, um, oh, we got our man. Got another high value man in the house. Shout out to Dr. Thunder. Excellent content creator as well. If one of the mods could drop his uh, channel in the chat. Shout out to Dr. Thunder. So what is, uh, how did we get here? I made a video, I made a live stream. It's like, let's talk about, let's talk about these black women and black men and why can we not get on the same page time article man shout out to time they were like listen let me show you something like what did time say anybody remember that damn time article what did the time article say let me pull it up bam look at your boy the production value right time came out it said men are more likely to be single than women it is not a good sign Men are more likely to be single than women, and that's not good. And it talks about how men are living single. Look at this man. Oh, he's got the he's got the coat and the tie on for the Zoom meeting. Look at this. He's sitting here in damn shorts. He's sitting five feet away from the washer dryer. <laughs> and why is he sitting away five feet away from the washer and dryer? And then he has his clothes on the damn clothesline. Make it make sense. <laughs> Like we, we men are hurting. That's what Tom is saying, man. We need a woman, right? What, what's going on? What's the deal? Well, you drop down. You drop down. And they're talking about relationships and all this. But then Tom says, okay, stop the show. Shout out O'Shea Duke Jackson. He says, stop the show. Let's, let's really talk about what's going on. Tom says, check this out, guys. 
uh, are men and women, you know, is are they single? Yes. But the trend has not had an equal impact across all sectors. Here we go, guys. All right. Men are now more likely to be single than women, which is which was not the case 30 years ago. Black people. That's us. Black people are much more likely to be single, 59% than any other race. Hold on to your horses. And black women. Black women are the most likely to be single of any other sector, 62%. Asians, 29%. Asian people are the least likely to be single. What do the Asians know that the black people and specifically the black women, what do Asian women know that black women don't? Asian people, 29%, are the least likely to be single, followed by whites, 33%, Hispanics, 38% right and we're almost at the we're almost double we're almost double what's the problem why can't black women and black women black men get on the same page what's the issue you see suzette you see she's beautiful you see she's intelligent you see she's educated why is she single when she says her priority is to be married why is she single when she says her priority is to have kids She's single, right? Why? Well, well, there's a black woman that's got an idea. <laughs> there's a black woman that's got an idea. Shout out to Positive Vibes. Enter April Mason. Who is April Mason? Oh, y'all remember Rebecca Lynn Pope also in the ATL. Shout out to the ATL. Who's in the ATL? Rebecca Lamb Pope, April Mason, AMS, Kevin Samuels, the godfather himself, Tasha K right down the damn street. Got the lead attorney right here, right? So many content creators are in Atlanta, right? Enter April Mason. What does April Mason say? April Mason's like, no, nah, I know why the Suzettes. I know why the Janices. I know why the, the, the Michelles. I know why the Shaniquas. I know. <laughs> I know why these black women are single, right? Not all of them. <laughs> Shout out to Suzette. Not all of them, but the majority that come to her for help. You know, why does she know so much about this? Because so many black women come to her for help. What does she say? She says, after 10 years of helping women, I'm moving on, right? Dozens of success stories, fair enough. However, <clears throat> the majority that come to me have unrealistic expectations. The selfishness, fake everything. Think they should be chosen because they have vagina and good looks. The entitlement. Just fucking mean. These women are mean. Not knowing the difference between a good woman and a wise woman. Will fight you to be strong. Not knowing how to be versus do. Thinking being feminine is weak or a pick me. Whatever that means. Placing blame, not taking responsibility or accountability. Jesus Christ, does some of this sound familiar if you're in the manosphere? Not taking responsibility, not taking accountability. Have you? Has anybody heard any of this before? Now, you know, if a man says it, it's all, you know, you hate women. What if it's a woman who's dedicated her life to helping women? What if it's that woman? Now, what do you say, women? When one of your own, someone who, you know, you women are down here, you guys are seeking help. She is one of the few that you guys go to. You pay her tens of thousands of dollars. She has 50 courses. She's been doing this for decades. She has a better sense of what's going on than you because you are living your life and you got three, three friends. She's helped thousands of you. Listen to what I'm telling you. 
I called her an expert. Some black women were like, oh, why is she an expert? You know, I have an opinion too. What is your op opinion compared to her? Experience means something, ladies. She's been helping black women for decades. You've just been sitting on your couch. All right, you have an opinion, fair enough. This woman has been helping black women just like you for years. You're going to tell her something? Like you, your opinion matters just as equally as hers? When you go to her for help, your sisters go to her for help, your sisters pay her thousands of dollars for help. They don't let me tell you something ladies, they don't come for you. they don't come to you. If you want to be an expert, you dedicate your professional career to helping black women. If you want to be an expert, you receive thousands, tens of thousands of dollars each year for 12 years, 15 years. Do that for 15 years, I will happily call you an expert as well. But don't think you get the term expert just because, what did she say? Just because you have a vagina and good looks. That does not make you an expert, right? What makes you an expert? After more than 10 years of helping women in this area, dozens of success stories from women who are now married, engaged, or dating high caliber men. That's how you become an expert. Don't tell me that your opinion weighs the same as hers. It's not true. It's not true. All right. And, you know, just to close the loop, she's talking about black women. What did she say? Being disagreeable, defensive, argumentative about everything. Always finding something to nitpick about, looking for perfection. If you mention anything about doing something kind for the man they chose, it's all what is he going to do for me? Right? And the list goes on and on. So I pull up. So we're talking, right? And I pull up our girl. I pull up our girl, uh, Suzette, after y'all fuckers pushed her up. <laughs> She's like, okay, what are we talking about? <laughs> okay, I'll talk. I'm not really prepared. I don't, you know, I don't know what we're talking about. What are we doing? Y'all pushed her up. And uh, and uh, so we get to talking. And then, you know, through the back and forth, it becomes clear that, you know, maybe there were some disagreements. We talked about online dating. I got on to her a little bit about that. She was a little frustrated by it, but I thought it was fair. Why? Because she says, number one, she's been on online dating before. She says online dating works. Not only that, guys, listen to this. She says that she has friends that have been married because of online dating, All right? And she said she didn't have anything bad to say about it. She's like, oh, it's not the season. Y'all remember the season? It's too covid right? It's not the season. Shout out to Suzette. I'm going to bring her up. And uh, she says, well, I'm not really on them. I don't want to get too far into this. So let's do this. Let's do this, guys. Let's do this. Uh, I'm going to bring her up right now. I'm going to feel some questions. If y'all want to, to have your question, just, just put a Q colon and then ask your question. I'm going to try to catch it. I also got some questions from Instagram. A lot of, a lot of women had some questions too. All nice, all respectful questions. You know, if you want to put in the, <laughs> if you want to put, if you want to while out and put in the super chat, oh, you know, ask her her weight. <laughs> I appreciate those $20. I really do. It's going to buy me at least two cups of coffee. But come on, guys. Shout out to the dude. Go back. I was about to click on that damn. I was about to click on the damn super chat to bring it up. You know what it said? That damn super chat said, ask Suzette if she's a virgin. <laughs> like, come on. I'm not going to do it, guys. We're going to keep it respectful. Let's keep it respectful. This is this is like this is an interesting opportunity that we have. Let's not mess it up. You got two attorneys talking about 
Very important things. Time says this is a disaster. These white people working for time, these white people working for time were like, I don't know what black people are doing, to be honest. What did they say? Black people, when well, you know when time starts off with black people, they're not fucking around. Black people are much more likely to be single than any other race, and black women are the most likely to be single of any other sector. So this is serious, you know? We got a lot of people, a lot of young brothers like Jonathan Barronville, a lot of young brothers like Before the Billions, they want to be married, they want to have kids. How does it look when someone like Suzette, you know, gets out of her 20s and into her 30s and she's, you know, she says she wants the same thing, but she's still single. Is it her fault? Like, you know, but it's not just her. It's not like, you know, she's the only person in the nation. Time says no, like this is the majority. Guys, some of you might think Suz Suzette, you know, her situation is weird. Time says no. Time says her situation is the majority. Her situation now is the new normal. Why? Right? So get your questions ready. Get your questions ready. Let me pull up the one, the only. We got the Suzette Speaks in the house. <laughs> What's up, TLA? What's up, everybody? Oh, my oh, goodness, I'm back. <laughs> that speaks the beautiful Susan Bessie, the, the beautiful draftee. Gets, Listen. Uh, <laughs> who okay, got pushed now. on to pushed on the stage. How are you doing? I'm wonderful. Thank you again for inviting me back. I'm really excited. Uh, there's a lot to learn, I guess, all around. Everybody has an opinion, so... Uh, I'm glad to be a part of the discussion, hopefully to elevate relationships between black men and black women. Yes, that is what we are trying to do. And unlike the last time, I specifically invited you up this time. Late, late, late last night, I said, hey, Suzette, you know, the people are calling for you. You know, I keep getting these damn CLA. Instagram posts. People, <laughs> listen, and you've gotten some subscribers. People are really rocking with you. Am I yeah, right? Yeah, I think both of us. I, I appreciate the love. I'm going to start there from both men and women. Yeah. Um, I've gotten some feedback via uh, direct messages and under comments and things like this. So it's always exciting to meet and connect with new people because of a platform like this. Thank you for sharing it with me. No so problem. yeah, outside of, you know, I feel like the first half wasn't my half, praise God. And you know, <laughs> it was a, it was a, it was a rough start. Like I said, uh, I, I, my analogy, I was trying to think of the best analogy for it, but the conversation started with me kind of, uh, in my um, Volkswagen down the road, kind of sightseeing, enjoying everything going on. And here comes, TLA and the Hellcat, you know, you know, splashing <laughs> water on my windshield. So yeah, that was kind of how I felt. I was like, okay, we're not sightseeing. We're not sightseeing here. Uh, but in the most unanticipated way, sometimes there are blessings. And for yes. me, like you said, the subs and people coming over to check us out. I can't wait for our interview, by the way. Let's yes. go. Next Wednesday. I can't wait for that. Tables will turn a the little. The tables but... will turn. Right. Guys, listen, <laughs> the lead attorney, lead is going to be in the hot seat. Next Wednesday, Let's is go. it 2.30 or 3? What no, is it? No, 3 o'clock, sir. Two uh, 3 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, guys. Put it on your calendar. You guys in California, y'all going to be starting your lunch break. You got, right. You're, you're going to be ready, all right? The lead's going to be in the hot seat. I don't know if y'all have ever seen me in the hot seat before. You know, let's see let's see how, how an attorney really does in the hot seat, right? Yeah. Uh, so, so, yes, please check out that collaboration. I am excited for it. What does Uncle Stu say? The old man on the block. Shout out to Uncle Stu. I did it. Talk about collaborations. I did a collaboration with him yesterday. Check it out. It went fantastic. We talked about so many things. So many strong brothers showed up and uh, strong sisters, too. And it was amazing. Shout out to Uncle Stu. What does he say? TLA holding Supreme Court. Love the collaboration. Truth can't be denied anymore. Absolutely. Absolutely. I really, um, really, really appreciate that. And I agree with it wholeheartedly. Yeah. And the collaboration we had yesterday was just fantastic. Y'all, please go check him out. The old man on the block. Excellent content creator. You know, he, he says, hey, Lee, I want to do a collaboration with you. I say, just tell me a time. Right. That, that's how great of a content creator he is. You know, listen, guys, you know, <laughs> you know, I'm starting to grow a little bit. The price is kind of going up, 
But when a brother like Uncle Stu says, hey, will you come on? Listen, just tell me the time and I am there, right? So y'all, please go check him out. Uh, thank you so much. And then we got, let me do this. All right, let me start reading these damn things before I pull them up. Says, uh, okay, this is a good one. <laughs> says this, I'm sorry, I got to read them. <laughs> and I'm sorry, guys. Uh, says, Caleb says, Suzette, do you date outside of your ethnicity? I never had color boundaries and I had success. You know, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background? And then, yeah, what do you think about this question? What do you think? Sure. So, hey, everybody. Um, good to see y'all again. Appreciate y'all. Uh, it's been fun. The last week has been rather crazy, like TLA, unexpected in terms of your reactions to everything going on. So uh, not a relationship expert by any means. Hello. I thought I was going to co-counsel with Ms. Mason, but I ended up being the expert witness, <laughs> apparently, <laughs> where I know uh, by any means expert. Uh -huh. So with that, you know, fully conveyed, I would be happy to, you know, just share in a general sense, my experiences and my experiences of those uh, in my circles. So for me here in South Florida, you know, we have such a mix. Ethnicity is kind of like, um, you know, very uh, diverse here. So I don't just stick to my parents are Jamaican, but I grew up in South Florida, like I said, which is like a hodgepodge, as TLA talked about, of people. Yes. So um, I'm not. Pre privy to one set of, you know, ethnic background, I tend to date people of color. That's where I'm most comfortable. So if you're asking me if I date white dudes, not so far, not yet. Would I date a white dude? He got to come correct. But yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, it's something about a black man. I don't know. Gotcha. So and I don't both think of I your exclude parents are them. True. Yeah. I don't exclude them. But if you're asking if that's my preference or if I seek them, not necessarily no. Got you. And both of your parents are Jamaican. Is that right? Yes. Salute. Represent Yachty's. <laughs> all right. Shout out to all the Jamaicans. Let me give a big shout out to DeAndre Jackson, newest member of the YouTube family. Thank you so much, DeAndre. Really, really appreciate that. What is, uh, let me, I got, read I got them first, TLA. Now, come okay. on now. They're getting messy, TLA. I was in the chat earlier. They're getting messy. You said read them first. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm just so, guys, I, I, you guys support me so much. I always take y'all shit and throw it up. I don't even read it. I just throw it up. But I have learned for this particular situation, I need to, I need to read them. All right. Um, all right, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna pull it up. I think it's fair, but if, if something comes up and it's not fair, you just let me know and I'll skip it. Says, is there a guy in your past that you left and now regret leaving? Also, have you told him you regret it? And I would say this, guys, I would say, let me jump in. There in my, you know, I just got out, just, you know, I got out of a relationship in the summer. And man, this woman was special. She's super special. We're not together anymore. And even with me, you know, sometimes I'll be like, man, you know, should I call her? Should I not call her? You know, yeah. It's, it's hard. You know, a, a lot of us, if we're honest, you know, we got that one person where we're just like, man, you know, that's what kind of Steve, I suppose, is he's kind of asking with you, you know, how do you feel about that? I don't think so. I don't think I'm. Missing... <laughs> She's like, fuck them. No, it, that's not what I tell people. Worry about. I'm just teasing. <laughs> I'm just teasing. <laughs> I mean, I think I've learned and I've definitely grown um, from uh, each person I've dated in that experience. And I don't think I missed that one. I do think, you know, like any human being, I think that, you know, sometimes <laughs> when it's cold outside, girl, that moment, <laughs> you're like, dang, I wonder what so-and-so is doing right now. Oh, okay. That, What's up, big head? <laughs> moment of weakness. I'm like, should I call him? But I'm like, no, no, no. You, you, that it didn't work out, and I remember why it didn't work out, so I leave it alone. That's but what, yeah, I don't, uh, I don't think I, once I'm done, I don't really like revisiting. I heard that. I heard that because it's usually more the same, right? Basically, and then they make the same, you know, error or whatever. Because yeah, people really ain't trying to change too much. It's true. Shout out to blind guy, his wife, their life, also hey, excellent guys. content creator. <laughs> Also yeah. part of the mastermind that we had. What is a uh, blind guy? His wife says, uh, his life. Blind guy, his wife, their life says, Suzette, your channel is the truth. Woo! You lawyers do your thing. Shout Thank out you. to the lead attorney. Yes, Thank guys. You. I was over on um, Blind Guy, his wife, their life's channel today. In Me fact, too. they had an excellent. Oh, you were over there too? Yeah. They yeah, had an excellent, um, excellent stream with uh, Lauren. 
and uh, just really, really great content creators. Uh, I have admired them for so long, which yeah. is why I uh, asked them to join the private mastermind that I was running. So excellent content creators. I've collaborated with them, been up on their channel numerous times. Please go check them out if one of the mods could drop their chat, could drop their link in the chat. Thank you. And yeah, we lawyers, we try to do it a little different. You know, for, 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 for you civilians, you know, we'll take it easy on y'all. But for the lawyers, sometimes we got to pull out the pull out the bit. dagger, right? Yes. In Miami, we say pull out the stick. Pull out the stick. I heard <laughs> that's hardcore right there. Shout out to Dexter. Shout out to Dexter Matthews. Listen, man, no comment, no question, just pure love. Thank you so much, Dexter, for supporting the stream like this. And you are the, you're the, you're the, you're the, you are the the stream co-sponsor let me and let me just the stream sponsor not co-sponsor you're the sponsor right now and let me give a quick shout out and i should have done this before i don't i don't know if he's in here but a big big salute to uh jonathan baronville jonathan baronville for sponsoring the last stream really one of the most important the most special streams that i've had with the channel having Kevin Samuels on, right? And having Suzette on as well. And we had a very great hey, conversation. Hey, not saying Candy Man today, TLA, please. What's please that? that? I think you've said his name twice already, so. Well, I do want to thank him. I want to yes, thank him for thank coming you, on. We, it we was, got it Candy was... Man and him back into the street. Hey, listen, look, <laughs> look how scared they are. Look how scared they are. You mentioned Kevin, oh my God. Oh I'm my God. But listen, look, I need to I'm make like... it short of that. When I said, listen, we got Kevin Samuels in the back. Did you see her? She was like, oh my God. Oh, I don't know what to do. You it's see gonna... my blood pressure. Like I was in shock. I was like, "What is going on right now?" So yeah, I thank love you. Love it. Let, let's let's uh keep Mr. Samuels over there where he is. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So listen, let me thank Jonathan Barrenville for sponsoring the last stream. And when 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 a Jonathan Barrenville, when a Dexter Matthews just steps up, and I think all of y'all who support me. But some of y'all just go way above and beyond the call of duty like like Dexter. So I really, really appreciate that, Dexter. Shout out to Dexter Matthews. Really, really appreciate it. All right. Um, all right. I don't know if I can read that one, but thank you so much. Sometimes they're long, guys. And just the fact your name is uncomfortable truth. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I'll be able to get that. Let me do this right quick, though. Let me do this. Mm -hmm. Was there anything, any like possible misunderstandings or miscommunications that you thought were had in the last stream that you would like to clear up or, you know, is everything um, I'll just cool? go with the flow here, TLA. Like I said, it, it has been quite a learning curve. Mm -hmm. um, I do think uh, coming into the chat, like you said, at the first initial chat, it was very fun and I was hoping to be more of an observer, but here we are. And I think the last chat, like I said, I, I was not taking it to be a deposition. I was not taking it to be a full-fledged cross-exam, yeah. but I understand that, you know, we, we want to get, we want to move the conversation forward. Yeah. So if that, if that helped <laughs> move it forward. It did. Like, Listen, we really want to find out. Each other, yeah, I'm down for it. So yeah, I'll leave it there. When I date, I run into so many women like you, you know, mm. women who are doctors, women who are dentists, women who are directors of um human resource offices for very big companies and they're all in your situation right and so right. it's like mm -hmm. we we really want the opportunity to, to to talk now now no one particular woman is going to be able to talk for all of the women but we do want some perspective into this world you know if i want to talk about if i want to find out about the pimping world maybe i go talk to sin for the p now he can't speak for all pimps Right. I don't even know if he would, you know, pimping isn't legal. So I'm not I'm not saying that he's a pimp. Right. I'm just saying wow. he has an insight into that world. You yeah. have an insight into this world that time is talking about that. You know, so many of you professional women are out there. I mean, may I point one thing out then? Absolutely. I would add. And I think some of the commentary that I saw uh, was expecting me to respond in my attorney hat. Mm hmm. And I was responding more so in my, uh, which I say, everyday woman hat or my feminine, where I approach relationships not as adversarially. And I think a lot of attorneys, women attorneys get that rap mm. that I was watching in the chat. They're like, well, who wants to date an attorney? Like that kind of commentary is coming forward. And I think that's great that we talk about it because I think it's uh, stereotypical to believe that when I leave my uh, nine to five, when I come home. I'm carrying all of that uh, 
um, all those sensibilities with me. And I do mm -hmm. think just like I code switch, I don't sound like this when I'm, I'm kicking it with my friends. I'm being very cordial with a colleague here. We are having a public discourse and I'm, you know, making it very, um, you know, genteel. But when I when we're hanging out and, you know, Suzette code switches and I, you, I throw that patwa out there, it's a whole different ball game. So I think when people are expecting kind of a, a, a back and forth that an attorney would uh, naturally be aggressive or uh, argumentative when it comes to relationships. And again, how I see myself and how I saw myself during both interviews, I don't see myself as necessarily being the bulldog that mm -hmm. I would be in court at all. So if I'm leaning into the emotional side, if I'm leaning in more into the heart side, uh, that is a real um, approach that I would normally take. And I see like we had two different approaches when we were looking at the same issue. And I think that that might be, you know, neither here nor there. But mm -hmm. in my heart, I just want to say that a lot of women, when we are um, so-called strong career women, we are pigeonholed as being that every aspect of our lives, all times of day, you know, with anyone we're with. And that's not true. When I come home to boo, you're not necessarily going to get, unless you want a little, uh, you know, a woman in charge or, or a woman that's laying down the law or a person that will go off on you and handle you properly in court. But mm -hmm. if I think people anticipated seeing that because I wear that, you know, hat, I'm an attorney, so I'm gonna come at lead all crossways or I'm gonna be, you know, highly argumentative, et cetera. But I, for one, I can't speak for every woman attorney or black woman attorney in specific, but I know and I try to put like I take um you know pains with putting that hat down when I'm in a relationship. I'm not here to be your attorney. I'm not here. Yeah, but let, let me just push it. back a little bit. Like sure. if you've been in relationships before, right? You've had mm -hmm, boyfriends mm -hmm. in the past. Mm -hmm. And I would imagine that in some of those relationships, you guys have had some some arguments, some disagreements, some arguments. Let's just call them what they are, right? Yes. But you are an attorney, right? So you're trained in the arts of arguing. You, you, you've you argued with other attorneys. You've argued with judges. You've argued in front of, of juries. Is that yes. right? I so have not done jury trials as of like a while ago, but yes. Okay. I, I do civil litigation mostly. Okay. But you're, you're, you're skilled in arguing. Mm -hmm. are, are, are you saying that when you get home, you take off your attorney hat and now you are thinking and processing like a person who has just never been to law school day That's one? That's not what I'm saying. No, okay. what I'm saying is I'm picking and choosing what to um, reveal, ask, do mm -hmm. in a way so that I don't harm that person or relationship as much as I know my skill will allow me to. Okay. So you're saying, listen, I got the power. I just don't, I just have it under control. So just because I'm an attorney. Start, yeah, exactly. I, I choose to show deference. Gotcha. I can make handle you if I want, but I'm not going to do that. If gotcha. you're my man. Gotcha. Okay. Listen. I I'm not saying, I'm not saying that. <laughs> listen to what she's saying. She's like, listen, I got the power, guys. I just don't use it on you. All right. I shall, I understand where you're No, at. not the power, but in how I argue, I could do that. I find that well, it doesn't that's power. Wait, wait, wait. That, that's power, right? You have the power to really I characterize it like that, Lee. Is it is it false? I'm not saying it's false. I said I would not characterize it like that. What's okay, what's wrong with the word power? I don't think of it as power. You don't think it's power to know how to argue? You don't think that's I think a power? If, I think I have an ability to. I don't think of it like that. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying I don't think of it like that. All right. So what you're saying, all right, it seems a little bit semantic -y, right? Like we'll yeah. do it, but so what you're saying is that you do not unleash your ability on these men. And just because you're an attorney doesn't mean that every time you you get into an argument, you unleash your ability on these men. You hold it in, right? So or I'm selective. You choose your battles. Absolutely. Fair enough. Fair enough. I love it. And uh, Uncomfortable Truth, and this there's nothing wrong with this, says it's because uh, of hy hypergamy. The more money and accomplished a female is, the less likely she will find a man on her level or higher. Most Black women like Suzette are single. Do you feel this is true? The whole part about the more money and accomplished a female is, the less likely she is to find a, a man? I do believe that after college, uh, I think it was Kevin Samuels who even mentioned that. I think it's harder to find people, period. <laughs> I do mm. think now that you add money as an overlay, yes, I do think that is something that is very, um, uh, it, it creates boundaries for people. It creates, mm -hmm. uh, you know, expectations for people. So I do believe money does play a big part. 
I think um, the pool of people that make what I think I forgot how many people make even six figures in our country across the board. It's a very small amount. So if you're trying to find somebody within, you know, a similar range or more, it's going to definitely cut out your your, um, you know, the people that are viable in terms of what you're seeking in a relationship. So, yes, I do think people being able to earn a, a, a good standard, you know, living mm -hmm. is a big part of why many women who have can't necessarily easily find somebody, you know, who can at least be comfortable with what she makes, not necessarily make the same, but be comfortable with what she makes or, you know, accepts or that woman accepting maybe less than what she makes. Got you. Got you. Got you. All right. Shout out to uh, JC. What does JC says? My sister is an attorney and she's having the same issues. Aww. No disrespect, but black women uh, need to focus on family before a career. Now, what do you think about this? Because we talked a little bit about this and how yeah. women are raised to value certain things or to, to achieve certain things. What do you think about this comment that uh, more black women need to focus on family before a career? Oh Lord, I'm gonna get controversial. Oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord. I, If I am blessed with a child and a daughter in specific, I think I would raise her totally different from how I was raised. Interesting. I think I will try to emphasize a little bit more the relationship side, which is always a double-edged sword because there is a fear, I think, among Black people <laughs> that, you know, daughters who are, um, you know, seeking relationships are going to get off track in their early years in high school and such such things. But I do not think I will, oh my gosh, I'm saying it now, maybe I'll feel differently if I do have a child, but to be as strict with dating, to, you know, not talk about marriage openly and why it's so beneficial for both parties. Uh, to not encourage, you know, maybe doing some some of these, what should I say? I want to say um, cotillions. That's big down here in South Florida and things like this, where you're in programs that are, you know, pairing young men and young women of color together so they can see each other in a positive light. Mm -hmm. I didn't do those, but I think I would do some of that because I think we can condition that um, a little bit more. Got you. Got you. Got you. Got you. Okay. Shout out to uh, Daddy Dame. Shout out to uh, Andre Walker. What does Andre Walker say? Uh, I love the energy you guys have. Candy manning him back. <laughs> you guys are truly entertaining. You guys get it in. Thank you Thank so you. much, Andrew. Thank you. Also, a uh, shout out to Casual Observer. Shout out to London King. Says showing my struggle support. Really appreciate it. Shout out to Ant26. I can't believe I missed this one. Shout out to Ant26. What does Ant say? TLA, let's put... Oh, wait, let me read this first. Uh, shout out to Ant. Okay. Um, all right. Maybe we can read this. I'm going to read it because that's an Ant, but you know. What does he say? TLA, let's put that pressure on. I'd like to submit timestamp 5931 to 5949 from round one to the jury. Being that Suzette relies heavily on her circle, what should we glean by her friends not presenting marriage-minded men in view uh okay yeah seeing that you rely on your friends but your friends really aren't producing or you're not getting you the, the results. i gotta get i gotta get them from the team <laughs> yeah he's like well, yeah he says like what's the what's the matchmaker update is your you're matchmaker like, isn't your working? friends ain't no good bye like, <laughs> Um, hmm. so what do you think? You know, it doesn't seem like your friends are really coming through no, for you. No, some of them much. are very concerned with me getting married. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> who are married? Oh my gosh, my married so friends what, are like, yikes. So some why them, why aren't know. the people, why aren't the men that they are putting in front of you? Why aren't they good enough? No, no, no. I think that might be a, a poor phrasing, if I may say, sir. Because if you huh? just read that 62% of men are single, um, and 69% uh, of us are single. No, no, I no, no, no. It did not say 62% of men. Of it black said, men? No. Oh, please no, correct me. Please. It's, please I correct will. The I will. No, I absolutely will. You switched it. It said 62% oh, of black women. Thank you. Are, you said black men. Don't say thank you. Guys, no, wait, 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 wait. I got it wrong. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. 62% of black women. 62% of black women. Put it up for me so I can get it right. You have seen this. I've not seen this article. I just want to make sure. Thank you. No problem. Let me, let me, let me get. Correct uh, the record for me, Eugene. Counsel, let me get Eugene's. Let me get this out the way so we can see it. Yes. Where, where is it at? It said, uh, 
All right. Uh, the trend has not had an equal impact on all sectors. The Pew study notes that men now are more likely to be single than women, which is not the case 30 years ago. Black people are much more likely to be single than uh, single than any other race, Black people. And Black women, 62%, are the most likely to be single of any other sector, Black women. Asian okay. people are mm -hmm. the least likely to be single, followed by whites and Hispanics. Okay. So, so it says black people in general uh, for 59%, not black men. Okay. I missed Correct. That, that includes both of us. And it's you, it. black mm -hmm. women are most likely to be single of any other sector in the nation. Right? So mm -hmm. it's a fair question to say, hey, Suzette, your friends are, are helping you. They're putting black men in front of you. They're putting other men in front of you. You are not in relationships with them. You're not married yet. But Why think, haven't they been able to, to meet the standard? That's a fair question. I don't think that necessarily characterized the issue properly. You're saying What's I have not, because mm -hmm. I'm saying if we don't have a specific amount in terms of how many black men are single, it takes two to tango, TLA. So with you assuming that I am meeting marriageable men, that's a bad assumption for me. It's Wait, wait, wait. How is it a bad assumption that I'm assuming that you're meeting marriageable men when it's your friends who are putting these men in front of you? But that don't mean they know them back to back. They can know them in a circle. They could know them from, you know, their their um, I don't want to say like golf club or these type of places like it's they'll meet a nice guy and they'll say, hey, met a nice guy while I was at the I don't know, picket Kiwanis or whatever. Um, volunteer organization or something. It doesn't necessarily mean that it was their best, best friend from high school that they know and they know uh, like through and through. It is just necessarily like, oh, this guy seemed nice. I met him through X, Y, Z. You think you might be interested? Oh, okay, cool. Shoot me my, my, your number? Okay, cool. Like we, we, we move a different way, but it's not necessarily like their brother or someone that they have a lot of information. They have basic information about. So it's up to me then to like, you know, get to know them. So I don't think it's necessarily foolproof uh, to say that my friends know they're marriageable. They know they're single. <laughs> That's about it. Wait, they the probably friends, they no, have wait, a decent wait. job. It's not like your friends are putting strangers in front of you, are they? Like your friends don't want you to get hurt. No, they, they, are you saying your friends just throw people up in front no. of your face? Yeah, like, like, that's, I'm asking. That's a red herring. That's a red herring. No, how is it? How I'm is it a red herring? I'm saying that these are them, your friends. They know you, right? Your so, friends okay, know you I'll very well. I'll give you an well. example. Oh, I don't want to mm -hmm. business out there. I'll give you an example. So there's a gentleman. Let me say is in I don't know Arizona. So my friend's husband friend is this mm -hmm. dude friend. Mm -hmm. So my friend who is talking to him and saying, yo, this might be a good dude for you, don't know him. Actually, her husband, don't know him. It's her husband's friend's friend. They met because they were both uh, groomsmen at his wedding. So will this my guy friend- guy's in Arizona or where is he at? I missed it. He's in Arizona. Say, say, I'm making up a place, but he's in Arizona, say. So- He's out of my state. People, yes, my people live in Florida. He lives in Arizona. So they meet about a wedding. Wow. He seems like a cool dude. They're like, yo, single and so-called looking. So it's not so wait, wait, not to interrupt, but you're open to meeting men out of state. Absolutely. Wow. <laughs> TLA Wake. Like it's just <laughs> it's amazing to me. Like if, was, if, that was a genuine from your spirit. Wow. Like, yeah, I like if, if if a friend came to me and said, Hey TLA, I know you're looking, right? Yeah. Oh, I got this bad one, TLA. Oh, where? Yeah. Where's she at? New York, she in the Bronx. I'm like, what the <laughs> hell? <laughs> The Bronx. <laughs> what am What am I supposed to do well, with that? Flagstaff is, or wherever Arizona is, not the same as the Bronx, but, but it's yeah. exactly I mean, the same as the Bronx in terms of the the point. You said, "Now listen, listen, listen." The point is that Arizona is far away from Florida, okay. and New York is far away from Florida. Listen, okay. Let's be honest, and let's not just draw crazy distinctions that don't have a difference. It's exactly the same, Suzanne. Okay. It's I, exactly okay. I, the same. You know same. what I was thinking about culturally, but I understand what you're saying. You were talking about the distance. Exactly. Susan. Okay, got Come it. on. Got it, got it. Come on. No, okay, was... okay. So no, but it's just surprising to me that you were you are open to meeting men so far away. Now I think that's a good thing if you're like, hey man, number one, it's competitive down here in Miami, and number two, this is a priority, so I'm willing to to meet men. Um, but damn, you know if. What's the... Well, my point is that they don't know every work? man th thoroughly. You get what I'm saying? Like, they might know of him, but they don't know him necessarily. 
<laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, you know who we got in the chat. <laughs> Kevin Samuels in the chat. You know who we got in the chat. <laughs> who is, who is... Oh my God. Who Listen, are you? <laughs> who is in the chat, Taylor? Your boy Kevin Samuels is in the chat. <laughs> You know who is in the chat. Listen, you know, and we we did this, and I, I talked about, I talked about, um, uh, I talked about your girl. Uh, what's her name? April. And I will say, it is my opinion that April Mason is an expert because this is what she does, right? For years, she helps put people together. I will say that equally. Your boy Kevin Samuels on so many levels is an expert. And it appears that we have an opportunity for you to you're dating men in Arizona. You're in Florida. Do you really not want the opportunity to talk to this man? Listen, no, TLA, I don't. Thank you. Very much. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Shout no, out I'm, to I'm gonna say in our last chat, he was awesome, dropped you know, great gems, and there's so much respect I have for him. That I don't want to take it as disrespect because no, I think no. he's awesome at what he does. And I yeah. think he's very helpful for a lot of people. But like I said, in my opinion, <laughs> my my only goal here is to elevate the conversation, but and and to give some insight into how maybe we think and to hear what you guys think too. But I again matchmaking, I might have handle that offline, but right here in this public forum here, I'm good. <laughs> I hear you. Well, listen, shout out to the Kevin Samuels, really, really appreciate uh, you coming up, Godfather. Thank you. And, uh, and, and Thank you. All right, so you are you are open then to dating men who live outside of, of Florida, right? Absolutely. Um, do you think uh, long distance relationships are more difficult than than relationships that are local, or why is it that you feel that you need to travel or look outside of your your locality into well, relationships that might be much more difficult? If if the man is right, I mean, I don't see it as out of bounds. I, I think if the man is right, I think I would travel. So I I know it can be difficult, particularly for um, from his perspective. But I think it, it would be worth it if you found the right person. So I'm not I'm not opposed to that right now, based on mm -hmm. what I see. Y'all, I, I saw a lot of comments about people in Miami. <laughs> like people, y'all don't know Miami. What's uh, wrong we, with Miami? Talk a no, little talk to us a little bit about Miami. The 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 type of um I mean you have a mix everywhere you are, but you have a lot of people that's fronting and people that's bums bro i've had dates where I, I didn't find out until like date number three that the dude didn't have papers um i have had dates where i've i've been in situations where like things are not what they seem put it like that yeah. so you have to kiss a few frogs in miami quite a few <laughs> but is that not everywhere in the nation no we're special no no okay where is it in the nation where women don't have to kiss a few frogs no uh, of course everywhere but i'm just saying i think we might have a higher okay here's the frogs. thing though suzette i i said so okay. all right no we're gonna, we're gonna so no we are getting two okay. different points i hear your point you're saying everybody if you're asking me here's the issue not, not to interrupt me i yeah. said something Mm -hmm. And then you said no, and then I restated it, and then you said yes. No, the thing is, when I said no, I meant the volume of frogs is not the same as Miami. I have That's to be more not... specific when I'm saying no, because you're you're thinking I'm answering your question, and I no, was thinking I no, repeated, it's not the same. I repeated. Here's here's the messed up part. You said you have to kiss a few frogs, right? And you yeah. said you have to kiss a few frogs. I said. You don't have to. You, you have to kiss a few frogs anywhere you go, right? In the nation, you said no. And I could and add on I, Miami is different. That's where I, I should have added on a little bit more. Because Miami right. is different. Well, so it's really yes, you do have to kiss a few frogs anywhere in the nation, but Miami is different. Like it's it's not a no, it's a yes. Am I right? I mean, is it me or like no. it's yes? You well, okay. I can say everywhere you do have to kiss a few frogs, but in that moment, I was thinking we we're looking at it. Your prior question led me to believe that you were saying, Oh, Miami is just like everywhere else. To me, it's but that's different. not what I said. I just said everywhere in the nation, you have to kiss a few frogs. I agree with that. Yes. 
Okay. <laughs> so the no is now a yes. All right. So we, guys, we're going to get it. We're going to get on the same point. Right? You're going to the same point. What did I talk to you guys about? You can use this in your own relationship. Suzanne knows. <laughs> I'm like, if this is, we, can, we can't parse these points. But yes, yes, you're Listen, right. No, no, no. Because, you know, a lot of people say this and it's so true. Words mean something. Absolutely. You know, do not let guys when you, you know, if they were talking about oh, we're powers in this and all that. No, words absolutely mean something. Com communication is so important. Women will have you walking around thinking all oh, men don't communicate. But if you listen oh. to them, if you listen to them. Right. So take it from a, a, a trained communicator, guys. If you listen, you will go very far. Let me ask you some uh, questions. It was a woman who asked a lot of questions and uh, she asked some over Instagram. She said, I'll give you a little soft, softball question here. She says, um, first of all, she says, do you speak a second language? I don't. Don't speak a second language? I okay. understand Spanish very literally, but I don't speak it. Mm -mm. Okay. This is a Merle with a B. She said, where would you like to go on a honeymoon? Mm, South Africa. Interesting. Shout out to South Africa. Shout out to Jay Bird. All right. Um, she also asked, how many children do you want? Two or three. Two or three. It's okay. It's so like a that's a nice size family here for, for America. Nice. All right. Stizo says, and this is a more um involved question. He says, Okay, listen, Stizo Jr. 23 says, What in your opinion are the duties of a woman? Mm. Um, I think or wife, or did he say woman? Is it you know you're wife? exactly right? I read that wrong. Mm -hmm. He said wife. Okay, so I do believe. Uh, the wife is the engine of the household when it comes to culture. And by culture, I mean like food language. Mm -hmm. I also mean that she's the emotional center because, or I also would add, I should say that she's an emotional center because usually uh, we're tapped in when it comes to uh, emotions and matters of the heart and what people need on the emotional sphere. I also think she's a big supporter of her husband. I think, you know, once you are married, your career, your uh, desires even become secondary to his and the units. So I think there are many adjustments wives make in order to support the vision, I think, outlined by the husband as well as uh, what is best for the family. So I think they do take a secondary role in terms of making sure leadership lands with the husband and reinforcing, I think, the, I guess, the vision of the plan mm -hmm. that um, serves the family. I think wives should prepare food. Maybe not Eric. Interesting. <laughs> Y'all hear that, right? She's in. I'm a lot Jamaican, of women bro. are like, I'm not cooking. Jamaican, and nice. My parents cook every night. Like, mm -hmm. We might cook it two nights and freeze, but you know, or whatever. I but heard that. I do think, you know, when it comes to, and I think this can vary, a wife can handle finances. It depends on the husband and wife combo, who, who is stronger or who they agree upon. I have uh, cousins who are married that the wife is like the financial person that creates the budget, you know, watches spending and kind of helps the family save and move forward in that area, make sure mm -hmm. bills are paid. And I have other uh, examples of people who like, the husband does that. So I think it's depending on what you guys agree on. I think a wife also is a nurturer for everyone in the family. I think not only kids, but husband as well. Let me just stop right here because you're you're saying all of these duties, right? And if you say something is a duty, it's really not optional. Right? It yeah. is a duty. Mm -hmm. So why is it that if, if these are wifely duties, everything that you're saying a man would love, everything that you're saying a man would love, why is it that there are so many women who say they want to be wives and, and yet they're single when all of these men want what you're saying? Is it that is it are the women really delivering on these duties? Taylor, I can't wait to have you on my show next week. I, <laughs> I can't. Because I'm like, oh, my God. I mean, listen. The, 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 the fact that it, it always appears that the women is not the women are the people that are not delivering. That's why I'm like, I, I have a problem with that premise. So I think I'm just saying that, you know, time has said it's not it's not the black men that are most single out of any sector. It's you. It's April as a population are. 
the most single. Didn't it just say we the people? Guys, I, I, people. I, I, I will keep bringing this up. I will Bring keep, it up. It said fifty nine percent of black people. Sharing this, I will keep sharing this so that we so that we so that we see it. Give me one second. All right. I will absolutely keep saying it says black people are much more likely to be single than any other race and black women are the most likely to be single of any sector black women. Now, of course, you guys are pulling our stats up as black men, right? <laughs> That's what's happening, TLA. That's exactly that's what's happening. We, you know, we, we are trying to be loyal. We're trying to hang with you black women. That's why I need to oh, know. Oh, you know, no, we are not gonna divest. Are. Oh, we are not gonna goodness. divest. We are not gonna swirl. Oh, black men don't cheat, right? Oh. We are trying. <laughs> we are trying TLA. to stay with you. Y'all won't both choose are us. Our to play. Oh my gosh, ladies, you, are y'all in the chat? Are y'all in the chat? Who want to? Who want to speak the truth? Come on, guys. Come on. What did time say? Time says it's you, April. Mm -hmm. Don't even get me to talking what April said, right? April, listen. Just you know, just a, a, a quick refresher where April was at with it. Oh, it no. <laughs> April said, "Listen, the majority of the black women that come to her." unrealistic expectations, mm -hmm. selfishness, fake everything, things they should be chosen because they have a vagina, entitlement. I mean, we can go, <laughs> oh, they're not entitled. No. Like, it's, it's, like, it's, it's interesting. I, I'm just hitting you with some facts. That's all I'm doing. I'm, I'm hitting you with some facts. These people, people who have these opinions from, who are from, who are experts and also facts and statistics from from time, right? So we, I'm just trying to figure out if if all of these wifely duties you're naming men love, you know, every man wants to be with a woman like that. Why do you women remain so single? May I answer? Please, yes. <laughs> I Can't think, wait to hear. <laughs> no, I think uh, something that Kevin Samuel said when he was on that I think maybe cuts both ways. Uh -huh. Was he was talking about the what he called the black woman's uh, perception or the way we think about black men, like mm -hmm. either being you know historically driven or just in pop culture and and within ourselves. Maybe he feels like there are preconceived notions that black women have about men. I would offer that there's a possibility that our black men maybe have some preconceived notions about who we are, because the black women I know are very nurturing. Matter of fact, we very traditional, many of us, those in my circle and those who I know. And I'm thinking to myself, there's not a black woman because most of us are raised up in the church, above, uh, after, uh, what should I say, above a certain age, who think uh -huh. of being a wife in these very terms that I speak of. So I don't know, like I said, your assumption is that we are not these things, but I'm just thinking to myself, who are you talking to? we are the people that I know are and want those very things. And those who are married that I know are operating in those very same things. So I don't know. I feel like there's a disconnect. I'm not saying it's you. I'm just saying maybe there are folks who are wanting and doing, but there's maybe an assumption that we won't be, or we, we can't be, or we don't know how to be some of these things. And of course there's some truth that there are women that don't know and don't want and don't present these as their uh, function in terms of being a wife. But for the majority of who I know, I'm just like, why is this like, like, wow, wow. It's like, oh my gosh, a black woman who could do those things. I, I There are people that will find that insulting because I know that's what we want. If they're so great, why are you single? That's the whole point. You're not choosing us, darling. That's what I'm trying to say. Wait, who's not choosing you? If, okay. Wait, 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 wait no, that we're getting somewhere now. We're getting who's somewhere. Who's not choosing us? You're, uh, you're okay, saying like, that the black men are not choosing you? I think we have to have two to tango. If there was all this choice being made, you mean to tell me that no one would be like 59% of black people as time says? You talk about we driving up the stats, but y'all don't want to say that y'all in the stats of black people. Okay, fine. But yeah, I'm just trying to say, no, <laughs> TLA, I love the fact that we, I think we're, what I'm hearing from black men, just looking in the, in the comments and such, and what I'm hearing from black women, I'm like, Maybe like a, what Mr. Samuels was saying before. He hears both sides all the time. And if they both say they want the same thing, something is the breakdown. I don't know that I have the answer for that. But I think there are, you know, certain, um, like I say, maybe stereotypes that live within both of us mm -hmm. that makes us feel like, you know, that woman wouldn't 
give those those very nurturing and loving parts of herself to you or that I'm going to come to you as an attorney in my in my in my bedroom versus how I would behave in my boardroom. That's so that's 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 so like uh, elementary to me that I I the fact that it, it is asked, I guess maybe there are women that do it. I'm not, I'm not that woman. That's all I can say. I hear you. I, hear you. I, I, so, differentiate, <coughs> I differentiate myself, but maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm just one woman. And maybe okay. that's, that's not how other women get down. Are you, let me give a big shout out to LaVert. It says, the queen speaks. Oh, all right. So, LaVert Hicks always supports. She's so great. What does Andre, the, Andre C. Hatchett say? Also a great content creator. Says, shout out to Kevin and the lead attorney. Kevin matches couples even without trying. Yes, Kevin... Uh, Kevin Samuels has a history of creating black uh, marriages, successful black marriages. What does our Andre say? Uh, Aunt, sorry, not not Andre. Aunt twenty six. Thank you so much, Aunt twenty six. Again, supporting so hard. Says the greeter at Walmart is nice. Your circle knows you and your preferences. That in mind, they should be more of a referral service in regard. <laughs> Just sending men your way. They're not gonna she, give me the greeter at Walmart though. They, not, <laughs> they know better. They're not gonna give me the She dad, she dodged the matchmaker question. Please treat the witness, please treat the witness as hostile. <laughs> yes. We people starting to sense you kind of ducking and dodge a little no, bit. Right? Because I didn't say yes to Mr. Samuels. That's that's a no, no, this is not no no. This is not the Mr. Samuels thing. This is okay. the whole matchmaking thing, right? Oh, okay, okay. Like you know, I asked you, you know, why, why is it that you're, you're, you know, you're single and you're saying, well, listen, my friends, I'm relying on my friends as my network, my mm -hmm. matchmaking, you know, mm -hmm. so they're presenting, you know, men to me. I say, well, listen, okay. If, if your friends who know you better than anyone, your friends are presenting these men to you and none of them were, were working out. Is it, is it all the men? Like, what's the deal? And you're saying, well, you know, now, like, well, my friends, maybe they're not such a good matchmaker. No, I'm not saying that. Y'all are saying that. I'm not saying that they aren't. I'm not. <laughs> you, ju you just did. You just said that your friends don't know these men that are that are that they are presenting to you so well. It's not like they're they're best friends with these men. You, you said that. I wish I had a court reporter here to read it back. You absolutely said that your friends know you, but they might not know the men that they are referring to you so well. You did say that, Suzette. I'm Suzette? back. Sorry. Struggle stream. Must be my internet. Sorry. <laughs> Must be the internet. Shout out, shout out to Struggle Stream. All right. So, uh, yeah. No, Ant's point is absolutely well, well taken. And uh, what did... Uh, Luke Hazley. Shout out to Luke Hazley. Luke Hazley. Thank you so much again, Luke Hazley. Says, if Suzette passed her presentation with TLA and Kevin Samuels as the opposing team, she's ready to present any case to the <laughs> Supreme <laughs> Court. <laughs> so shout out to uh, shout out to uh, Luke Hazley. Always supported. All right. Um, let me ask this. This is from Vivid, My Vivid Life, excellent content creator. She says, if you didn't meet, this is an interesting question, and this is a good mm -hmm. question. If you didn't meet your ideal mate, would you still consider having a child but on your own? I've thought about it. I don't know that I can. I, I almost like want to convince myself that I could, but something in me at this moment today, and I, every woman has that prerogative of changing her mind and perspective um, as she grows, but for this point today, I don't think I would. I don't know. I, I, me and my, my, my friend girls and my, my family talk about it. I don't think I would have a child on my own. I don't know. Maybe I'll change my mind. But today, I don't think I would have a, a child on my own. Gotcha. Gotcha. Shout out to the steel curtain. Uh, what does a pound for pound say? The other says, listen, why is TLA consciously trying to trip and catch this woman or her boys? I, I don't, don't know. Get it. I'm like, we can have what? What's pound for pound. On? Listen, and see, I don't expect you to know this. And I, I explained this to you. I explained this to, to everyone in the last stream. Pound for pound, I would not do you like this right? because I don't have expectations of you, even though I'm sure you're smart. I'm sure you're smart. It's not like you argue before judges. It's not like you argue with opposing counsel. It's not like you just haven't been trained, right? So I would treat you with the kitty gloves that you want me to treat uh, Suzette with. But let me tell you something. Suzette is an authority on this. Suzette is so much better than you. At least she's ex she has had so much more training than you, pound for pound. I wish you knew. So what you are doing is you're putting your untrained self in her shoes. Resist the temptation. 
No, All right. I, Suzette I, is grown. <laughs> She's been trained three years of law school and then all of her practice. All right. You, you, you're not dealing with someone off the street. You're dealing with someone who's experienced and someone who's trained. All right. As a person who's experienced and who's trained, we expect good communication. And if I hear communication that's a little loose, I'm going to try to tighten it up because words mean something pound for pound. You know, a lot of times people just talk and I don't really allow that so much on this platform. If you want just talking, you can go other places. But right here, we're trying to figure out what the hell's going on. You cannot figure out what the hell's going on. People are just talking. You know, you say, so this? Yes. And then two minutes later, we'll know. Well, which is it? Yes or no? We're not just talking pal for pal. Again, I don't, you can come up and you can just talk and I'll ignore it. But with Suzette, like we have an opportunity to get some real answers. All right. And this is a person that can take it. You know, she can take a pounding. We are attorneys. We take poundings all the time. All right. So let's, 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 let's treat Suzette with the authority uh, that but she man, has. Uh, on the uh, relationship scene, I'm not an expert. I'm just giving my own personal experiences. Fair so enough. with that, with that being said, like, it sounds like I may not have all the answers for every person in the chat, every man, every woman, every child of God. I just know what I've experienced and can only express and share those with you. Hear you. I, I hear that. All right. Uh, sorry about that. Where did it all go? All right. Um, let me ask you this. Um, uh, shout out to, uh, Juno. I know I'm reading that wrong. Junie, Junie O says, what compromises would you be willing to make to get the man that you want? This is an interesting question because you mentioned maybe possibly, you know, flying out to Arizona. That's a huge compromise, you know, being, being willing to get into a relationship with someone who's across the country. You know, what type of compromise are you willing to make to get the man that you want? I would definitely uh, move. I would move where he can get the best opportunities. That's not a problem for me. Um, I think I would be able to switch careers because if I move, obviously, my I could I could practice remotely if I if I was creative. I could practice remotely, but if there were other opportunities that I saw that I could you know take advantage of as well as have a place where he can also maximize his earning uh, potential, I would do that. Um, if there are times in which, like I've, I've experienced even in my own household, there are times in which my mother became the breadwinner because my dad got laid off and, and vice versa. Mm -hmm. They carry each other. So I think when you're needed to step up, you step up. When you're needed to step back, you step back. Um, if she's more specific about any other type of compromise, like I, I think in just in terms of my own uh, ultimate goals and dreams, I think, again, when you're in a relationship, you're not by yourself. You're not for yourself. You have to really, you know, be cognizant as, as um, that you're operating as a unit. So mm -hmm. I think the largest compromise is you putting aside your own personal goals and dreams, uh, bringing them to the table, but obviously understanding that it may not be now, it may not be, you know, in this season and all that. I think you have to be very cognizant that now the unit has a different purpose and the unit has to move, you know, in sync. So I think just even your own desires are oftentimes, you know, what you, you compromise the most. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let me ask you this. And this kind of goes along with it, too, because every woman has, you know, kind of a list, it seems, of some of the things that they want. And when I asked you, you know, or when you came on the last time, what your definition of a good man was, you listed off like 10 things, right? Right off the top. I mean, oh, I got this. Bang, 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 bang. Women could give you a list. It wasn't that bad, TLA. It wasn't that, no, it wasn't that bad because it wasn't a 40. It wasn't a 40 item list. It was only it was only 10, right? Now, here's a question by Jackie. Mm -hmm. and shout out to Jackie. She says, um, when are you going to erase some of the expectations out of your list? You know, I guess she's kind of Oh, Jesus. If you've seen the people I've been on dates with. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to us a little bit Child, about that. That's mm -hmm. a good question. Because I, like I said, I have not um, stuck to my list as such at all. That's why I, don't, I think there's a maybe some uh, assumption that I would. But um, 
I don't what are some of the compromise? What are some of the things that you have erased from your list? Physical attraction. <laughs> wow. Did y'all hear that? Did y'all hear that? Now we're getting to it. Suzette was like, oh, bring the smoke. Okay. No, now will, we're getting to it. Erase that. That's what I'm saying. I've compromised on that. People that I'm like, well, maybe he got a beautiful spirit. I don't, I don't have to have certain things. Like that might be my desire, but I'm not going to get y'all put in a chat six, 10, this, uh, whatever. No. So like you have been thing. out, you have been out on dates with men that let me, well, anybody can go out on a date. Let me ask you this. Have you been out on multiple dates with the same person who you found, who you thought they were not attractive? Who well, you thought, they, found... they had a beautiful spirit. They, I wouldn't say they weren't attractive. They had a beautiful spirit. You see, what did Mixed Master say? I wouldn't even read this in, in, but in light of what you just said. Suzette <laughs> owns a Hellcat because she knows how to dodge questions, right? <laughs> Dodge questions. Lord. Uh, you are dodging. <laughs> and everybody in the chat sees it, sees that. Now try yeah. not to call it out because we got weak men like pound for pound saying, oh, why is he doing her like that? Why can't he just be nice? Right? So he's like, here's the question. Okay. How are you putting yourself out? I know we, I mean, we talked a little bit about your friends provide this network and then you're not on the dating apps. Is there anything else that you're doing um, to, oh, oh, oh. Hold that in mind, Mixed Master Miko. This is a great question. And then she's well. Let me let me ask. He asked this. We're going to get to the first question second. He asked, uh, "Is religious affiliation important to you? What do you think about this?" Ah, uh, yes, it is. I don't think I would date an atheist. Mm -hmm. I don't think I would date outside of the Christian sphere. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't matter to me denomination, but I think. Uh, someone who is practicing Christian. I actually, that happened to me with a guy who I thought was cool, but I was like, I don't know if this man worships or loves God. It was really, I, I thought, oh, I could, you know, he could do his own thing, but I don't think I would cross um, or I would stay in a, a situation where the person was not religious or in the, in Christendom, I guess is the best way to put it. Like I probably would not date a Muslim person. Mm -hmm. All respect. I don't think I could, I don't know. I've seen friends do, you know, dual religious households. I, for me, I would probably want my husband to be a Christian. Got you. And uh, also, Meryl with a B, she asked, "What kind of wedding would you like?" I have dreamt about weddings from the courthouse to <laughs> the <laughs> like. I already know if I go to a courthouse, what I'm wearing. <laughs> wow! Well, listen, guys. Listen, just. <laughs> She's just ready to show up, guys. Let's like, go. I don't like, have let's get it. Green wedding of. I, honestly, I don't. I try to think about it, and I'm a very visual person. I try to like visualize it because I come from a big family, and I think that's what they. I would want to share it with them. So I think about like I would want this beautiful wedding, but I I I could be in a big wedding category. I don't have to be, but mm -hmm. I don't. It's not like it, the wedding is not the most important thing to me. I know how you, some people assume, particularly with women, it's like, oh my God, my magical day. It has never been that for me. I'm not, the the marriage is what's important. Married to the day, let's not spend a whole bunch of money. Let's let's make it nice, um, but not, I don't need an over the top wedding. This is interesting. You guys are on it, man. Okay, number, uh, number 16 says, okay, well, listen, you know, if you if religious affiliation is important, you know, why hasn't the church been able to help you find someone? Y'all know there's a lot of predators in churches, right? Wow. The church mm. men be the ones you'd be like, well, mm, 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 mm. no, it's hard to find because people have said that to me before. Well, if you got if you got the, the desire to be with someone who is religious, why not date at church? But some of the most it's it's a mixed bag. You can find both at church. So you have people who know that the majority of single black women go to church and they go to church just to to uh, meet somebody. Mm -hmm. and you're not necessarily going to find somebody whose heart is necessarily all the way, you know, there for the right reason. Let's put it like that. Gotcha. 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 OK. Uh, what does uh, Jay say? She keeps dodging questions because she knows TLA will let her get away with it. Not to say that TLA is soft per se, but he ain't Kevin Samuels, which is why she didn't want to get on live. 
She knows sugar from salt. Listen, I did not come here for that. That's what I'm saying. Let's talk relationships. Y'all want to know about me, but that's fine. Well, but I ain't come here for that. I'm not a relationship expert per se. And you're I'm just part here. of no, no. People don't want to know about relationships and tell them like you are part of this, 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 this almost this epidemic, right? <laughs> of successful, attractive black women. And you know it's so weird, Dean. And and I take what Jay says as a compliment. I really do. I really, really do. Because uh, yeah, Kevin Samuels, he's he's stern. He's stern with it. And yeah, I but- want you people. I want pound for pound to see this. You know, soft people like if we're going to use the word soft, soft people like pound for pound, saying, "Oh, why are you doing her like this? Look at this." Jay is like, "No, he's being nice. He's just, mm-hmm. the lead is being nice." Like some of you guys emailing me. They were all women and probably pound for pound. Right? Oh, why you do her like that? Jay is like, no, he's being he's he's being cool, right? right? Me, so, just, <laughs> just be ready. Just be ready. She said, just be ready. Like I said, you let a whole subset, a whole gender just off be ready. the hook. Because it's all women and we're all bad. Oh, okay. Okay. Let me, okay. Let me ask you. This is from another attorney. Shout out to Esquire82. Uh she asked, or he asked, uh, I can't tell. Uh, what is your zodiac sign and height? Mm, I will plead the fifth on both. Okay. Uh, someone asked, I didn't get the, the name, says, uh, have you ever been in love? Damn. I don't think so. Wow. That's deep. That's deep. That's deep. That's deep. Um. Reclaim the throne ask, you know, do I'm gonna change it a little bit. Do women over 35 believe in the one? What do you think about that? Or at least you. I can't you know? speak to that, but I don't what about believe you? the one. And just you general, don't I don't care one? what age you are. I don't believe, I think there are many matches that we could all have. I think with 7 billion people or however many now on earth, mm-hmm. I think there are several people that could be your soulmate. That's my personal belief. I don't believe there's only one person on earth made for you. I don't believe that. Okay, I got the uh, I got the chat pulled up. Shout out to uh, we got our man Anthony Brian Logan in the house, excellent content creator himself, a bohemoth. Shout out to uh, <laughs> shout out to Anthony uh, Brian Logan. All right, uh, ha- okay. Jonathan Favors Art asks, Have you dated men making less than you? And if so, why why did those relationships end or that relationship end? Yes, I have. Um, it, I would say probably because they weren't they weren't very la- long lasting. Mm-hmm. They were more so based on I just I would call it like personality differences and things that we just didn't get along in terms of how I would want to get along with somebody who I'm seeking for a long term match with. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't monetary. So it wasn't speak. related to the money. No, okay. No, no. Okay. And asking another monetary question, reclaim your throne. Ask, would you consider allowing your man to be polygamous if he made five hundred thousand? And again, some people are in the Atlanta is huge for this. Atlanta yeah. is huge for yeah, polygamy. Yeah. How do you feel about that? I don't know if that's a scene down there in Miami. Nah, or kind I'm of- not. Well, I'm not a part of it. I don't know nothing about that. I'm. I'm probably more traditional. So you yeah, know, that probably wouldn't fit what I'm looking for. Got you, got you, got you, got you. Okay. <clears throat> this kind of goes back to what we were talking about before about you being an attorney and you being trained. And, you know, I think you might have answered this slightly, but, you know, this is a, a little bit different take on it. Uh, uh, Lexus Drivers, Lexus Driver asked, would you consider yourself uncooperative or argumentative? Cooperative. Uncooperative or. Yeah. Un- uh-huh. Isn't that the same uh- thing? uncooperative no. and argumentative is two different things two different things someone can be uncooperative and just sit there and not say <laughs> a word true, 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 true. someone who is argumentative is going back and forth with you all the damn time verbally mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um i like every now and then a good uh healthy uh exchange mm-hmm. but i am very differential when it comes to relationships i don't like arguments i rather just dead it and let you get your way or just more like, okay, next time. Or I really cut the conversation. I'm not a very argumentative person. I like, again, robust conversation where we can, you know, talk about today's news, talk about what's going on, talk about our lives, talk about, you know, what we think. I like that. 
but not necessarily to the point of arguing. But no, um, what's the other one? Uncooperative? Mm -mm. I don't. I don't see myself as. I don't see myself as. I try to make things work. I do. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. 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 Let me see here. Um, what does uh, Marty say? Shout out to Marty. Says much love, TLA from Vegas. Suzette is gorgeous and feminine. I think that she is special in that regard. I'd chase after her if I lived in Florida. Much love to Suzette and Ebony K. I love black women attorneys. All right. Shout out Aww, to the black women you. attorneys. Thank you. And uh, I don't know who Ebony K is, but shout out to uh, shout out to her. I think she's on The Real Housewives, I believe. I oh, okay. Believe. Shout out to Eugene. Eugene says, I would honor you, Suzette. I'm <laughs> a black man, and I would not mind having a career woman like you as my soulmate. I support oh. your endeavors. Just support mine. All right. Huh? So hey, we got some, we got some, some, some men in the Move house. The <laughs> <laughs> okay, Eugene. Thank oh, you. Oh my God. I would Actually, honor you. Somebody did drop a comment and it did cause me to go over to his profile. I was like, mm, that's what was up. <laughs> um okay. Shout out to Brother Padat. Shout out to Solomon Kennard, too. I see Solomon Kennard in here. Shout out to Solomon Kennard. With the great British pounds. Where the hell are you at? I thought you were in Cali. Man, these high value men be everywhere. Uh, Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. Thank you so much, Solomon. What does uh, uh, Brother Padat say? How much older or younger would you date uh, in years? I would do probably 10 up or 10 down. 10 up or 10 down. That's what's up. And... Uh, do you have any influential, uh, you know, I guess aside, uh, I don't really understand that question. I'll, who are the influential respected men in your life? You have my dad, anybody, your dad, my brother, my cousins, my family, basically. Awesome. 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 And I have awesome. good guy friends too. I'm good guy friends too. Okay. The intentional millionaire, shout out to the intentional millionaire says, based on your opinion, why do women come after men? after a general conversation why do men why do women come after men after a general conversation do you understand this question i don't uh, as in the argument i'm wondering if you could clarify what um... yeah intentional millionaire i'm not really following that mm -hmm. following that either um but thank you so much for that and let me ask you this you know because i don't want to put words in your mouth let me just ask you even though i think i know the answer do you consider uh, being a wife and being a mother, um, a priority for you. You asked me that before and I think so. Okay. Um, some people had kind of, uh, asked in an indirect way, not necessarily towards you, but it seems like a lot of women wait for the men to choose. Do you kind of wait for the men to choose? Or if you see a, a, a fine man walking in the a fine gentleman walking in Publix, will you go up to that man and say, hey, I'm Suzette? I previous, like when I was younger, I would, I totally was taught and believed that men choose you. Mm -hmm. Now I was like, oh, they lie. That's not how the game works. You have to actually pursue them. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I think now if I like somebody, I would more speak or say something because I realize people may not mm -hmm. uh, for whatever reason. They might actually be like, you know, interested in you, but they might not say anything to you. So I will speak more so. I, I don't know if I would be all up on them, but I would definitely just like make myself available for a hello or a conversation. But yeah, now I would in, in you know, prior years, I, I often felt that men were the people that make the first moves. And I was like, oh my God, that was the biggest lie of my life. They so now you're willing to make the first, will you tell a man just off the rip that you're interested? Will you try to get the number and let him know how, how forward would you be? Really? I heard, what did you think about that? That's awesome. A lot oh, of women you, no, will never no, do no, that. <laughs> no, now that I realized that was like a big lie, I'm telling you, we get messed up with the, again, no one wants, wants to say it. The religious overlay is when a man findeth a wife. But mm -hmm. I was like, all these women been on like, especially our white counterparts, they have been on the hunt from undergrad. Now, when I look back and anal analyze a lot of my white friends, even uh, through law school, oh my gosh, they were hunting. We was busy mm -hmm. trying to get the degrees. We was busy, busy trying to run the campus. We was busy trying to do other things, but they were very much in tune with, and I say hunt, but I mean in tune with the fact that they were there to find a mate. With my black friends, they were not, we were not on that. So yeah, I think we got sold a lie a little bit, but yeah, I've changed since then. Okay, when was the last time you saw a man and really kind of pursued him, said, hey, I'm interested in you? 
I mean, is that more of a theoretical thing, or has it been a couple yeah, I years? Yeah, can't remember, since but that? I know I do. Like, okay, I'm all right, listen, guys, listen, listen, listen. This is here's the thing, guys. Here's the thing. See, this is why you gotta kind of ask questions too, because you ask, you say, "Well, will you pursue me?" Oh yeah, I, you know, we were sold a lie, and yeah, I'll do that. Okay, when was the last time? Uh, no, I think 2015. No, no it, it was. It, it was a it guy got, in public. Well, maybe, in I'm being skillfully and like trying to remember an exact time. And right here, blinding in these lights, I cannot remember. Oh, it's the lights, time. guys! Can you hear it? It's no. the lights. I'm being honest with you, TLA. You like tell me your, your last time you got this, that, that. I was like, what? Wait, wait, TLA at? Like, guys, yeah, like, it's the lights. I she can, can tell you straight up. I have pursued or have made the first move, <laughs> and that should be that. But you, I'm just trying to figure out kind of. Last year, December, and Christmas. No, break, just the like, year. Like, Listen, just the year. You know, because if you said that you pursued somebody earlier this year, but okay, I can't remember exact. Okay. Yes, I don't know. Earlier the, this year. <laughs> Did you try to make it sound like it's 2015? Come on, now, Taylor. I didn't know, but you didn't but, say. That's the but thing. Yeah, I no, asked. I'm just saying, like, I was trying to think of the exact time, and I can't think of the exact time. But this year. No problem. No problem. I know those lights are blind. I know. I can't. <laughs> But yeah, All right, guys. Human being too. Yes, yes. You are a human being. And let me just say, let me just reiterate, let me just reiterate that uh, you are being an absolute, absolute great sport. So here's what we're going to do. Because, you know. <laughs> Thank you, Larry. I, I know I have missed What's the date, time, and the phone number? Man, that you said you was, I'm like, bro. Listen, uh, listen, I know she's going to get me. She's going to try to get me. But here's no, what we're going to do. Baby. Next week, guys. Next listen, day. next week we are we are, I, we're gonna do this, but in reverse. We're gonna see if she can get. Do you, who thinks she can get the lead? Come on, listen. listen a, the lead attorney, is apart, really? Oh attorney God. versus attorney. We're gonna do this on her <laughs> channel. Please go over there, y'all. Go subscribe. If one of the moderators could drop the link to her channel, this is what we're gonna do. Uh, I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna let Suzette have the last word. And I'm gonna drop her. I'm gonna bring you guys up. But I do not want to bring you guys up while she's up, because Lord knows who the hell, unless Lord. she wants to. But no, we don't I mean, really... it, you know, I can always remove myself. So if <laughs> okay, I'll, here's what we're gonna do. Then here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna leave Suzette up, and you guys yes. come up, and you guys ask your questions, right? Because shout out to No Glaze Off. No Glaze Off says TLA, please let a brother on the live. So that's what we're gonna do. <laughs> What's we're gonna do? Um, what does uh, Abby say? Abby says Suzette is fine as wine. Okay, Aww. listen, we got a lot Thank of supporters. You, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop the link. Whoever wants to come up and ask Suzette a respectful question, you know, you know, um, and please be respectful, guys. And let me do this. Let me just say, just to be clear, mm -hmm. all right. If, if if you're not respectful, I'm I'm gonna have to ban you, all right, because we're not here to really, you know, go wild. You know, don't don't come up there. If you want to stay in the, if you want to be disrespectful, stay in the chat, all right. Everybody assumes the chat is raw, so please, you know, just say what you gotta say. Stay in the chat, and I got some moderators in the chat too, so they're looking, okay. But if you come up here and you as uh, you wild out, you know, I might have to I might have to ban you, okay. Let's 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 be respectful. Let's be respectful um to to our guests uh so i'm gonna drop the i'm gonna drop the link right now if you want to come up uh please do i know i missed some super chats so i'm gonna go back and get those i appreciate everybody everybody so i'll drop the link while we are waiting for you guys to come up let us hear the most beautiful female voice on youtube not the male voice you know el guapo got that got that locked down what does uh what does the beautiful Jessica X have to say to us? If you are coming up into the show, you are waiving your right to privacy. You are a willing participant of the show. The shows will stay up on YouTube, so do not come up unless you are willing to be part of the show. If you're not willing to, you're not comfortable with having yourself up here, do not <clears throat> come up. So again, disclaimer, disclaimer. If you want to be part of the show, you are waiving your right to privacy. All right. Don't come up here and start stripping at like Black Beauty and then try to try to get me to take it down. I ain't taking it. That was loud. Yikes. I always do that. Sorry <laughs> about that, guys. Sorry about whoever was having wearing headphones. I yeah, apologize ladies, y'all come up, please. Ladies. Ladies. Oh, she's so right. Where the ladies at? Y'all come and let the man, he reading all the men chat. He reading everybody <laughs> chat. And I'm like, wow, there's no women watching? Well, I know that's not true because I came up to my channel. Listen, so I, wait, wait, wait. Why don't we offer some ladies some space in this male space? We where are the ladies the at? We want the men. Where but I'm, the I'm just like, at? I am not an anomaly. I am not, you know, a unicorn. I am not. 
So I really, in my in my heart of hearts, there's so much more. TLA, I can't wait till Wednesday. <laughs> she said she can't wait. She because said I she want to be wait. so respectful to you and your platform. I respect you with so much like a big brother. So I don't I want appreciate to over here that. talking crazy. But when you come over, please understand. Let's there do are so it. many questions the ladies too have sent me. Y'all hear her. What's up with this gentleman? Y'all so hear we her. We, we the same boat. We single. We ready to mingle. But there's so many things, privacy concerns included. You want to get all up in my business, in my uh -oh. bed, in my, in my, all my stuff. And I'm like, once again, I want to elevate the conversation. And I want to hear what the gentleman have to say equally. But I think there's some ladies who could, could definitely co-sign on some of the experiences I've, I've, I've outlined. Let you know that we out here, we ready. Here's and you word. talk about what's wrong with the men, like what's wrong with us. I'm like, wait, um, you know. Right, here's what we, we're gonna we do, guys. We I see we got work. some, we got some people in the back, but I'm, I'm gonna prioritize the women on this one. Everybody oh. who's in the back, oh. I'm gonna bring them up. Oh. Oh. But oh. I'm gonna prioritize the women. <laughs> Let's get some women up here. What does Mark Anthony J say? Career women saying they would make or could be great wives is like a plumber walking into a hospital asking to be a heart surgeon because they want to. Career women tend to lack the mindset, experience, and ability. Agree or disagree? So do you agree or disagree with this? this I would statement? say there's a lot of men walking around talking about their husbands and, and they might not like the, the, the experience and the mindset. I think that cuts both both ways. Both ways? Yeah. Okay. I think I there's so, many, so much assumption that men are ready and men want. There's so much assumption around that in this. You don't think men are ready for marriage? I don't think they want it. Some of them, they talk a lot of talk. Sometimes it's a hookup thing, baby. We 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 talking apples and oranges. A lot of times we're we're assuming all these men want to be married, but 59% of black people are not married. So it's all women. I don't know. It seems one-sided, TLA. We're going to see. We're going to see. Well, let me uh <laughs> TLA is not nice. Jesus Christ. I, I feel like Inoki is going to send me a damn email. No, all I right? just sent him an email. Don't send him no emails, please. <laughs> no, right. no, I'm just thinking, like I said, that everybody sees what's wrong and, 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 and tends to beat up on women. And I'm like, guys, guys, all let's right. talk about what we can both do. All right, guys. So here we go. Let's let's we got we got a, a woman up here. We got Love Ice, a.k.a. Love. Can you hear me? Yes, I'm hearing you, Love. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming up. I don't know. I, well, let, let's see. Kind of. What are your What are your thoughts on what we've been talking about so far? You've heard You've heard uh, Suzette up here defending <laughs> defending women. Apparently, uh, what do you think about this? The question that you ask her about approaching a man, I've never heard. I I don't agree with that. Period. No, I'm not approaching no man. Mm -mm. Okay. Big up yourself, Miss Sister. I understand that. Oh my God! Here they go. Here they go. We are not taught to do that. I don't. You I, church, somebody, somebody, somebody you don't. Come on, man. Somebody was. Uh, somebody was approaching it in the, in the chat, saying that love eyes. Come on, come on. You have these ten men out there no. that you can approach. No, no. That, that's a red flag. Because I said that's a red flag. The person said no. That's not a red flag. I said yes. That's okay. Wait, flag. wait, wait. I'm gonna pause you for a second. I'm gonna pause you. Did anybody just catch what happened? <laughs> Did, did, I, is there anybody in the goddamn chat that just caught what happened? See, LA, or is it me? Is it me with my half a fucking ear that just? Oh, and Suzanne gonna put me in the hot seat. I caught it. Did anybody catch it? Did anybody catch what just happened? Oh my god! Listen, listen. <laughs> Yes, somebody, I, I just saw it. Somebody said she flipped the script. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Flip it again. Did anybody just catch it? And I let her go. I let her rock. Because, oh, lead attorney, you're so mean. No, Don't lead. interrupt her, lead attorney. I was, I, in my head, I was like, yeah, keep snapping. Lee, keep Lee. snapping. Lee. Keep doing all of this snapping because I'm going to call you out when you're done. You're going to. Lee. Did anybody I, catch listen, what just happened? I don't happened? know if you don't understand Patwa, so let me break it down for you. Oh, no. Exactly. The, oh, first is the lights. Now yes, it's the no, Patwa. No, no. no, it's the Patwa. <laughs> I do. I'm in Jamaica, right? Yes. I'm born in Jamaica, oh, raised here. But let me ask you this. Let me, let me actually clarify for my brother Lee because we are going to keep parsing little, little. It's like, not um, little. You said the opposite. It is. Let me tell you why I'm going. Let me tell you why I'm going. 
So right. if I am talking to my sister here, I'm trying to emphasize the fact that what she said is how I grew up. What yeah. she said is the mindset I was uh, uh, cultivated in. And you, you said it was wrong. This. And you but said it was wrong. You said, said they taught you wrong. Exactly. I, I go. Why are you now. snapping? I'm, if it's I'm, wrong. I'm agreeing with her that this was. I, this oh. is how I feel when <laughs> when I was in my 20s. This is what I thought. This is exactly what I thought. So I'm co-signing with her. Not that I say that is what's going up now. I'm just tell, like I was excited to hear someone knows. This is the type of yeah, big time drum. Wow, yes, wow. as Jamaican, <laughs> this is what I was raised under. Yeah, I'm not gonna walk up to you. Well. Oh, a, I go up to men now, but I was very excited to hear that. Listen, I'm not the only one that was indoctrinated with the fact that you're not supposed to do that. Listen, that's how I was indoctrinated. That's how I think that's it's a red flag. I think it's that's how I was indoctrinated. So if if I'm listening to her and I'm excited that she's saying the same thing, I'm like, oh yeah, this is exactly <laughs> what I I was Worse as a Jamaican, to, yeah. To do. But I have, oh to, my God. I have to go up to people now. Oh Lord! Oh come on! Please. Oh my God! You kind of get oh you get you get it out of control with that. That's so funny. I just, so we're just teasing. We're just you just in the hot is, seat. It's just warming up. No, it's just it, warm. it is not, I'm, I'm so cool. excited to hear She's that there's cool. a person that understands very much oh that God. train of thinking. But we got to go up to y'all now. I get it. I, I no, get no, it. This <laughs> is right. All right. Shout out to a uh, book of Alpharonomy. Shout out to book. Book of Alpharami, Dr. Boa says, uh, would Suzette give up her career to be a wife and a mother for a man who greatly out I already said that, yes. Well, I let's just, wait, 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 wait. Let's mm -hmm. just assume that the people in this stream didn't necessarily see the okay, other okay, ones, right? Okay. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, so much to render her income obsolete. What do you think about that? If I could stay home, raise kids in, in, in YouTube, that's what I would do. That's what's up. I that's, think that's what Absolutely. All right. So let me ask you, um, uh, Love Ice, a uh, Love Ice, aka Love, uh, just so that we can get a kind of a range. Are you in your thirties or where? Where are you? Are you in your twenties? Where are you at? Just generally. I'm in, I'm forty one. You're forty one. Okay. Are you married with children? Kind of. What's your deal? No, I'm single. Two years now. You're single. Two years. Do you have any children? Yeah, three boys. Three boys. Okay. How high on the on a scale from one to ten would you would you say marriage is for you in terms of a priority? One. Is one as in it's the most it's the highest priority or it's the least priority? One is the highest. One is the highest for you. So you're yes. saying that to be married to you is the highest priority? Yes. Okay. Does it make sense just logically, just logically, does it make sense if something is the highest priority to you on earth that you would not go and get it? That you would not go, if you see a man that you are attracted to, who you think might be a good husband, if finding a husband is the highest priority, does it make sense for you not to go talk to that man just to wait around and see if he's going to talk to you? I would talk. I would talk, but the approach, the approach of um say, okay, I'm interesting. No, that would be totally out. But yes, so how, I'll call to you. So how are you gonna how are you gonna grab your highest priority if you're just gonna sit there and hope that it comes? Put myself out there. What does that mean? I mean being out there, talking about it, discuss it, have a platform, so you're gonna talk, it must find you. One way or the other. Worse he must, wait, 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 let me just get this straight. You said he must find you one way or the other? Yeah. Guys, and, and this is what so is interesting. <laughs> this what is, just is in yours is yours. Nothing can <laughs> stop that, yeah? When when I found our friends that go off of them, like every day, I saw it, don't work out. You don't even work out for a month. So why am I going to try it? Wait, say that again? I have friends who go off of them plenty times. And it don't work out for not even a month. Okay. So you're saying that the man must find you. Like if, if yes. he's for you, he must find you. Like you don't even he have must, to, you don't you don't no, have to leave your even, house. He must he find must you. Have, he must find you. Okay. All right. You gonna snap for that, Suzette? I want to ask her. No, I'm not upset with that. I'm no, gonna I, ask her. I said are you gonna I snap want, for that? No. Come on. Man. I want to ask her the same thing. I think men are uh, 
questioning and I see a couple uh, messages here backstage. So when you say, uh, my sister, how is a woman approaching, they're asking how is a woman approaching a man, a red flag for you? Um, what what do you see? I know you said the outcomes for your friends who are doing that, they end up with a man for a month and then they get dumped. Like, what? why is it such a red flag? I think they're still curious as to why you would never do that if that's what you say you want. It's just like when they tell, it's just like when they tell a man, say, um, okay, then you are going to do, I'm not sure how much you can say on the chat. No, you're just talking to us. Don't worry about no, the chat. No, talk, talk, talk. Okay, Go okay. Ahead. It's just like when, it, when a man tell us, say, um, come give me a blowjob. I guess, and say, and say okay. don't. Him don't do. Him don't do oral. You understand? And then the woman find herself doing the blowjob and don't do oral. It's, don't, there's no respect there. The respect lost. It's the same thing as approaching it to a man as a woman. Okay. I have a friend who do blowjob like everybody she met is just blowjob. And then on the respect, ever say, oh, she's pretty. She's she's pretty. She's pretty, nice, sexy, attractive. And then don't respect her because they're not going down on her and she's the only one doing it. So there's no respect there. So why am I going to approach a man? Worse, we're going to give him blowjob. You. Hell no. <laughs> Too many persons around me experience now. I hear you. I'm learning from them. Okay. All right. Let me get this straight. I'm not even going to do it. All right. Listen, 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 listen. Thank you so much, Love Ice, <laughs> AKA Love, for coming up. Really appreciate it. I love your accent, by the way. I love it. So shout out Thank to you. all the Jamaicans. All right. Thank you so much Thank for coming you. up. Thank you. I'm All sorry, right, my guys. sister, blessings. Kevin would have got into that. I can't even do it. <laughs> I can't even do it. All right. <laughs> All right. You asked, I asked, I guess so, yeah. That got deep real quick. <laughs> All right, let's bring up Gorgeous Natural. Shout out to Gorgeous Natural. What the hell's going on? <laughs> uh, gorgeous, can you, hear, can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. We got the sisters up here. What do you think about? <laughs> <laughs> Lee, we go act like that just didn't happen. Yeah, we gonna... <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. But I marriage is our number one priority. Okay. All right. Um, man of prestige. Yeah, that shit just went left quickly. Yeah. That turned right there. All right. Gorgeous, gorgeous, natural kind of, you know, thank you for coming up. Uh, kind of, what do you feel about all of this? Are, are you supporting what, what, where your sister Suzette Speaks is putting down. How do you feel about this? Absolutely. I mean, I feel like just because we're men and women, we're going to have different perspectives on, mm -hmm. you know, dating. You know, of course, I can't have a negative perspective on, on a woman because I don't date women. You know, I have my negative experiences with men. So I feel wait, wait, let me just jump in for you. Uh -oh. You said, let me just jump in. Mm -hmm. You said that you cannot have a negative, you know, a negative experience or a perspective with the women because you don't date women, right? Uh -huh. But there, there is a woman who is an expert, right? She's an expert and she has a lot of experience with women, even though she doesn't date women. So you can absolutely, gorgeous, natural, have your opinions on your sister's even though you don't date them. You know? No, no, so I just, no. Uh -huh. And that's absolutely true. What I mean is I'm hearing stories from men about their negative experiences with women. Okay. I don't personally have those. And like you said, that woman is an expert. So she probably seeks out that information. Yeah. So that that's more so what I was hitting on. Not necessarily I don't hear about the negative interactions that men have with women. But I also think that a lot of men like to paint all women with one stroke of a brush. Oh, you know? here we go again. Here we go again. I really do. I really do. I mean, what I've heard over the years, because, um, you know, you just want to take, you know, constructive, consider, um, um, constructive, constructive, why can't I speak? Constructive criticism from mm -hmm. your uh, from your opposite sex so that you can incorporate that and do better in the dating pool. So, you want to hear what the men have to say about, you know, interacting with women and you take what applies and you let the rest fly. So, you know, I've decided to, you know, work on myself, go to therapy, you know, offer what I want to receive. And I'm still having an issue with like attracting 
um, a man that I'm compatible with. I've met men that are nice. I've met men who are um, interested, but they're not yet ready to give me what I need. So I have to pass them up. Um, yeah, I mean, I understand what Suzette is talking about. Like at the end of the day, where I'm at in my mind is I would love to be a wife. I would love to have children. I have no children, um, but I'm not going to force it and settle just because a subset of men say that I should because I'm a certain age, but I'm not going to settle. I, I'd rather be by myself and be happy because I've learned to love myself and enjoy the time that I spend with myself. So anyone that I want to share that time with, I want them to add to it. I don't want them to take away from it. And if so be it, I don't find that man in my lifetime, then, you know, I'm going to include in my life things that make me happy. I'm going to spend time with people that make me happy and I'm going to live my life to the fullest regardless. But I'm hoping that, you know, that man will come along that will make me smile and want to join me for the ride. And, you know, we have a good time. But until I. Yeah, but that, it, 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 when you say that, when you're like, OK, well, you know, if the man comes and that's cool and if he doesn't come, then, you know, I'm going to enjoy my life. That's cool, but that it, it makes it sound like finding a husband and having kids is not a priority. You know, if something is a priority for you, it's not like if it just doesn't happen, it's all good. You know, if something is a priority, you really try and go get it and you're serious about it. And it doesn't sound like, and, and if, if finding a husband and having kids is not a high priority for you, that's fine. You know, some, some women don't even want to be married. You know, on the scale of one to 10, with 10 being the highest, how high would you say, how high would you put finding a husband and having kids on your priority list if 10 was the highest priority? I would say it's a 10. And I understand what you're saying. It sounds as if I'm not being intentional about finding someone. I Correct. Think, you know, I, I'm 32. So I think I am kind of making my mind up to understand that there's P in the dating pool. And... <laughs> If I don't come across this person, I don't want to spend my life in misery because I didn't find that person. I'm trying to uh, more so mentally prepare myself that it's a possibility it might not happen. You know, I could put myself in as many spaces as possible. I work in a very professional setting um, right now because of COVID, we're not really having work events. But as soon as that resumes up, that's another space that I'll put myself in where I'll intentionally put myself out there to you know, attract the type of man that I want. But if it doesn't happen, I have to be able to be okay with the fact that it's just going to be me. I don't ever want to settle and be with someone who would make my life not what I deserve. Does that make me, sense? Yeah, let me ask you this, because we hear this a lot about women. And let me just give it about not settling. Let me give a huge shout out to Tam. Shout out to Tam, says, Suzette, keep your smile up and date all over the U U.S. Yeah, date in Arizona everywhere. We got a man in Nevada that said he will honor you, okay? Just do a middle left check on some of these folks. Shout out to Tam, <laughs> always supporting the lead attorney. Thank you so much. You know, <clears throat> let me ask you, let's, uh, what, what are you looking for in a man, let's say? Me? Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Um, I would like a man who is considerate of me. I would like a man who um, is intelligent. Um, he's ambitious. Um, I guess I can go down the line. I have it written down in the book, my little prayer journal. Wow. Okay, <laughs> guys, listen, listen, listen. This is this is what guys are talking about. What? She's got the she got the whole lit, and there's nothing wrong with it. It's, it's just interesting because guys don't do this. So you know, we find it fascinating that you've got the whole list written down in the prayer journal, whereas a woman might hear that and might say, "Girl, I've got that too." So you know, uh, there's no there's sure. no judgment in it. It's, we're just different genders, right? No, right, right, right. So so there's nothing wrong with that. Now let me ask really? you. We taught that. I'm sorry to interrupt. We're taught that. Absolutely. To write it down. That's Absolutely. what we're taught. And you manifest what you want. Like, so, sorry I manifested yeah. going to get my master's. I manifested buying my house. I, I manifested all of that. So I feel as if if I, if I want to make it true in my life, I need to write it down and I need to actively work toward it. And that's no different with finding a husband. Gotcha. Now, that list that you have, do you remember how many points are on that list? I want to say I've crossed out maybe about four over the last year or two. <laughs> and this is interesting. This yeah. is interesting. I love that. Why do you think you crossed those four out? Because I think I had to be realistic. Um, just as Suzette was saying, like, yes. you know, I've, I've given up 
um, yes. attraction. Like, you know, I can be attracted to, to someone's energy. Yes. Spirit, you know, someone's mind. Absolutely, Suzette. Um, you know, those are the things that are the most important. Like, well, I let me ask like you this, and I don't want to. No, I'm, I know I keep interrupting you, but I just no, I kind of want to. I want to. I want to <laughs> explore this. Let's say you got a list of ten things, <clears throat> mm -hmm. and over the years you're getting older, you start crossing some things out, right? Mm -hmm. So now you got a list of six things, mm -hmm. and it could be as you get older, when you're 38, now the list has gone down to three. Now, in your head, you can say, well, these are the most important three things. And that's true. To me, you know what that looks like? If I look at your first list versus your last, if I look at your 25-year-old list mm -hmm. versus your 45-year-old list, when there are mm -hmm. two things hanging on there, it looks to me like you've settled. No, because not really. Because if I've, if, if I've crossed out things on my list, I've probably changed the where I am in my life as far as what I actually want. So of course the things that I want when I'm 25 aren't the things that I probably want when I'm 38. So like for instance, when I was 25, I was looking for someone who made a lot of money, which was preposterous. But <laughs> So now you're not looking for that. No, you know, because I wait, wait, so you're not looking for a man that makes a lot of money now? I'm looking for someone who makes a comfortable uh income for themselves. That's what I am. But I'm talking about just the immaturity of the things that were on my list at 25. That's what I mean. So like- but here's the I thing, it's, it's not like you're adding new things on there. I I have added new things up there, but it's not gonna be as in, as, um, it's not gonna be as many things up there, but I definitely added certain things because as I got older and as I matured, certain things were more important. Like, does he have a sense of self? Like, is he insecure? Um, is he controlling? Does he make me happy? Those weren't things I put on my list at 25. <laughs> I was like, is he cute? Is your list you know? handy? I would love to see what this damn list says. <laughs> I would love see. to hear it. Hold on. Yeah, let's let's, let's, let's go go, go find go find okay, this list. Okay, give me one. Let second. me get let me yeah. Guys, we're gonna get into the female psyche today. Yes. <laughs> guys, listen. Are are, are, are are you fuckers ready? <laughs> We're about to take a deep dive into the female mind today. All right. We're, they're going to break out the list on us. Shout out to Dexter Matthews again. So forward. Thank you so much, Dexter Matthews. Says, in reality, we all have our lives and the accountability for the achievement of our dreams and goals falls strictly on our shoulders. Thomas Matt, absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Dexter, for supporting. Really, really appreciate that. And I will be honest, if I have a list of 20 things, you let me know when you're here, Jess, all right? If I have a list of 20 things and I over the years, I cross off five and then I add one. And then over more years, I cross off another five and then I add one. And over the another years, I cross off five and I add one. Now, over the years, I, it started off as 20, oops, sorry about that. Started off as 20 and now it's four. To me, on paper, it looks like I've settled. Now, I understand the opposing argument is like, no, you didn't settle. You just focused on what was important. Well, I have a question. Why didn't you focus on what was important in the beginning? Why is it the damn list was 20, 20 points in the beginning? Like, why is it, why is it that young women cannot focus on what's important in the beginning? What do you think about that, Suzette? Lack of maturity, I think. What she pointed out is that at 25, your mind is not yet, you know, I haven't hasn't seen the world, hasn't lived, hasn't dated enough. So what you think is important, the physical aspects of dating are more important at 25 than uh, maybe a little older. So I don't know if it's subtle, but I understand your point. Yeah, but yeah I think she's changing what she desires. She has evolved. Yeah. And to a man, because we're men. <laughs> Like if I go to a woman and I know from the rip that she is not attractive to me, to me, that sounds like I fucking settle. Like if the woman is not attractive and I'm on my third date being like, oh, like it, 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 I'm set like TLA, you could do better. You could do better. Why are you on the date with this woman? But she's so nice. I understand. But Men have a, that privilege, TLA. We don't have that privilege. What, what privilege don't you have? That of selection, period. Talk about that. What do you mean? You have you a greater have... selection. You can afford to let that not so or average person pass by because you're not as attracted to them. But as we 
uh, pursue men, we have to realize, again, there's a limited pool. So you might just admire his haircut. That's it. Wow. Hey, listen, listen, Suzette dropping knowledge sometimes, guys. I mean, just, I listen. love a fresh cut, though. <laughs> <laughs> but I've been on days where I'm like, bro, he got a fresh haircut. Wow. How and would that be? It's not make a it? matter of being mean. It's not a matter. Of, it's just a, like, again, physically, sometimes you're not initially attracted to somebody, but over time, even in arranged marriages, they'll say, like, I didn't like my husband first, but then I liked him. So, I, I mean, I think for women, it's different. I think, I don't know. I don't no, know. No, no, I totally agree. I think it's fascinating. Jamie St. Patrick says, why do the just, why do the just write what they, why do they just write what they want in a man in a manifest journal? Why not also write a cookbook? Oh, shit. Dang, Jamie St. Patrick. Dang. <laughs> He said, why don't they also write a cookbook submission and not having an attitude in the some some of y'all guys hit hard. Shout out to Jamie St. Patrick. He is not that one. That was straight to the gut, Jamie. Thanks. Jamie is not messing around. All right. I'm back. All right. Thank you so much. So yeah, tell us that we really appreciate this. And you're really helping a lot of men because there's there are 2,200 people in the chat. Uh, none, no, no man has a has a manifestation of the the list of the women that the characteristics, not one. So you're really helping us out. Right. So yeah, why, what's what, what's on your list in the manifestation section for the men that you want? Okay, so my first thing is I want him to be God fearing. Mm -hmm. My second thing is that I want him to be ambitious. I want him to be compassionate, considerate. I want him to have a positive outlook on life. And I want him to have a, goodness, I can't even understand my handwriting. I want him to have a, basically a decent income for himself, be able to uh, take care of himself. Okay. And so what did you, you said that you crossed out some things? Cause that, that was when I was 24. I don't got that journal. That's the journal you was wanting me to get. Oh, I didn't know you had multiple journals. Yeah, throughout my life, I journal. Damn man, you got jokes. No, I just <laughs> <laughs> guys don't know how this works, right? And to me, if you got a list and it's got five things, it's like you can't remember that. Like, why did you? Mean, no, 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 you got a list of five that you can't remember. I thought you wanted to hear what I wanted right now, and off the top of my head, I didn't know if I was reading everything that I wrote down. I just think it's weird that, you know, oh, let me get my post it and just write it. Not a post it, but you it's like it's, it's five things. What? But I, I, I hold on, hold on. Maybe, maybe that's part of the I manifestation. Got my book. Okay. <laughs> I just, I got my book. So I tried to read exactly what I wrote down. Okay. I, and listen, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. it. I didn't have an understanding of the purpose of the book. I'm a man. No man keeps books. I didn't so, know that you wanted the list from when I was 25. I didn't know that's what you were referencing. Cause I would have just told you, like, I don't have that old list. Those were things that I wrote down yesteryear. Here's what I thought. I thought you had a book and it had a list and then you crossed out and then added stuff oh, to the no, same no. book. I was just saying that my list had changed. Like I, I know for sure that the list that I wrote when I was 25 is not the same list that I'm writing as I'm in my thirties. Got you. That's what I was saying. I apologize. I didn't think No, that. no, believe me. Believe me when I tell you it was my fault. Suzette understood. I just did it. Let me ask you this. And Suzette said this and I was surprised. And then you said the exact same thing. And it's surprising to men because a lot of men spend a lot of time in the gym, you know, in the manosphere, you know, there's this saying that women want the three sixes. And one of the sixes is a six pack that women want a six pack. And to hear Suzette tell it, to hear you tell it, you're like, listen, we'll take a man who's attractive if we can get one. But, you know, we've kind of crossed attractiveness all out of our priority list. You know, a man doesn't necessarily need to be attractive to us and we'll still date or marry them, you know? And is that kind of how you're feeling as well? No, I'm not quite there yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not quite there yet, but- um, I could, Cause I thought you said that the man didn't have to be attractive no, no, to no. you. No, 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 I was referencing what Suzette was saying, like oh, how gotcha. we cross things off our list. Like we gotcha. have to be a little bit more realistic, you know? And I mm -hmm. understand why certain things might be crossed off another woman's list as things got crossed off of mine. So. What I more so have a question with is why is it that it's well before so you get to your question, let me oh. just stay on this for example. Okay. You know, you said you're not there yet where mm -hmm. you're crossing out 
So on your list, which I didn't hear the being uh, being attractive. Right. Well, okay. Wait, 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 so wait. Was... On your list was a man being attractive. In that book, do you have the man being attractive? I do not. But you just said you're not you're not there yet. So like, which one is it? So I will say I did not write that down because for me, that's a given. That's the first thing that you that takes your eye when someone approaches you or you approach somebody. So that's your list, not. You're, you're not writing down everything that's important in the list. All yeah, right, guys, listen, 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 listen. Like, what's the value I of the you, list? Sis. I understand What's you. Okay, you know wait, really I understand you, sis. He, he gonna he gonna try to nitpick that. Yeah, that okay. You know. No, I'm you just mean? asking. That's you guys okay. are making a list and it's half done. Why would you make a list? Okay, okay. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Wait, let me ask you this. What else have you left off of that list that's important? I don't think I've left left anything off the list that isn't important. I think so the that, only thing uh, that was left off the list that's important is the man being attractive? Because, because check this out, TLA. Attractiveness is subjective. So if somebody approaches me and they're like, hey, you know, I think you're, you know, nice looking, whatever. Can I have your number? You know, I want to take you out. It might be the way that he spoke to me that attracts me to him. Not necessarily that he's ugly, but I'm just saying that there's different things that, that attract you to certain men. Fair so enough. it doesn't necessarily mean the faith. That's why I'm just saying like. No, I understand what you're saying. You yeah. said you said that you left off attractiveness because it's a given. Yes, I did. What else is a given that was left off of the list? Um, Cleanliness, hygiene. <laughs> okay. I, I hope I don't have to manifest that. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, what's, what's on the list? Read the list again. So he needs to be God-fearing. Sorry, he needs to be God-fearing, ambitious. He needs to have a good income that su supports himself. He needs to be compassionate and considerate. Okay, so why is compassionate and considerate on the list, but cleanliness is off the list? What's the difference? I felt like that's a given. Being compassionate, being a man it's being not. considerate. Wait, wait. Okay, a man being considerate to you, your husband being considerate to you is not a given? Absolutely. I don't know. It's okay. And that's what I'm talking about. The experiences, the negative experiences that men have with women are definitely not going to be the same at, that women have with men. And a lot of the men that I've interacted with, they didn't necessarily have that characteristic. Wait, for a They're husband, very... for a husband, a husband being considerate to you is not a given. Is that what you're saying? Based on my experiences, I'm telling you that's something that I asked God to include in this person. Because I've met a lot of men who feel just because they're a man, they don't have to uh, be compassionate or be considerate of my feelings because I'm a woman. Have you not met men, though, who are also not the top of cleanliness? I don't think I's, that's been an issue. Where I need to ask God, can you send me a man that knows how to wash? Okay. Ah, All right. I, just don't, I, don't, I don't understand the difference. That's, that's, I get what you're saying, but I'm just saying a lot of things are just, I think kind of, you know, it, I mean, if you walk up to a woman and she has a smell, is that common? Where you're like, it, Lord, it, I, it, hope it, I, I hope I, I hope I stop coming into contact with women who. I mean, it happens. Listen, some of y'all women and don't act. No, I'm not. I understand, but that's why I made that example, that reference. Like, I've heard men say that when they interact with certain women, there's been, you know, a hygiene, a hygiene issue. <laughs> Got you. Okay, so let me ask you this. You said that uh, you said that attractiveness, you you said you're not there yet no. with with giving it up. When do you think you will be there? At what age do you think you will be there? That I do not know. Okay, I, what's I a ballpark age? When, I can't when, say. Uh-huh. I can't say when that age will, or when I reach that particular age, I'm going to say that's not important for me because I honestly feel like that should be a given. You know, that's something that Suzette took off her list, but that was her choice. Well, mm -hmm. y'all well, hold up now. Let me let me just clarify. <laughs> I'm not going <laughs> to say ain't no realm of attraction got to exist. We're we not going to say ain't no kind of attraction. I there. understand what you, you mean, You have to have Suzette. a little bit of, you got to work with something. I'm just saying, right. y'all going to act like I was like, any and everybody. Let's let's just say let's not lie about that. It has to be a <laughs> right. degree of attraction. Not, but it's not the most important thing, and it's not the only thing. And if a person is not what you know, Western culture thinks is 
attractive, we still can rap. But you know, we, we there are limits to that. There are limits to that. I hear you. I, I hear you. I don't want a, a, a gremlin, Suzette, but you know, he's <laughs> I'm just, it no, literal. I'm putting it out there for the chat. <laughs> he's taking it literal. Like she gonna date everybody. I'm like, fair. not everybody, but you know, we know. That's not fair. But here I come mean, pound for pound again. Shout out for pound for pound again. <laughs> here comes pound for pound. <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? Oh my god, pound for pound be rider for Suzette. All right. Um, um but I just had a question, TLA. Yes. Why is it? And this is a question I've been dying to ask because, you know, a lot of men follow Kevin Samuels. A lot of men follow a lot of, I guess, the men in the manosphere. That's what y'all call it. Mm -hmm. And it seems as if you, not you, but other content creators promote the idea of like punishing black women for being a certain age and not and not like settling. That's what it seems as if is promoted. And it baffles me because if the whole idea, because I, I just came across Anton, Anton Daniels um, platform and a lot of his videos and shout out to Anton. Outside, like, like him <laughs> outside of him, it seems as if, you know, because you guys have the control, because you do pick, you know, you control marriage and I guess women control sex. So, or access to sex. Um, it seems as if you that sphere promotes that men should basically allow women to feel the shame of being a certain age and feeling like they deserve or getting what they deserve is out of the question or still in the question, sorry. So getting what they deserve or what they feel they deserve is out of the question. Like we should just settle with whatever comes across. Like I don't, I don't yep. quite understand <laughs> it. And I think that's kind of unfair. And if, we're in this like time and frame of, you know, let's promote the back black family and let's, you know, try to connect. I, wouldn't you guys try to promote content or they try to promote content that more so connects us instead of like disjoints us? I, I don't understand. And that's just a question that I just, I always pose to myself when I come across some type of, you know, Kevin Samuel clip or, um, the numerous clips that are online, I don't quite understand. When you say punish for, for okay, here, here's here's kind of where I'm, I'm coming from. And this is kind of what it sounded to me. You know, Suzette was talking about the things that she valued in a man, you know, when she was younger and how that list kind of got, there were some things taken off of the list when she got older. And that could absolutely be, you know, a function of maturity. But from as a man's point of view, as you get when you, you when you put on there attractive mm -hmm. and then as you get older and older you cross that off to a man that looks when you cross that off to a man that's like okay you just settled you just you just not a lot not a lot but you just settled all right which is an in, in, in an intelligent thing to do right because you if, if something is your priority, you have to get it. But like, we don't go, control it. Hold on, wait, no, I I'll, I'll let you speak. I'll let you speak. I'm sorry, hold on. I'm sorry. Go ahead. So when you cross that off, it looks like you just settled. And so men are like, look at Suzette. She's crossing off something that is, you know, it's important. Mm -hmm. Why aren't you other women doing it? Now, to me, it's not surprising that you say you're not going to settle because you say you're 32. Right. So it's like, OK. Right. But maybe you and that's why I asked you, when are you going to feel different when you start crossing some things off? Right. The list starts to get shorter and shorter and shorter to, to us. That's not punishment to us. That looks like something that's reality. Right. Men have to settle, too. Like settling is something that humans do. Settlement is something that animals do. You know, maybe you can't eat lobster every day. Maybe you got to go to, you know, to the damn chilies or, or you know, the Cheesecake Factory. Maybe you can't go to Bones every day. Maybe you can't go to Fogo every day. Maybe you can't go to Chops every day. Just get yourself a nice meal. There's nothing wrong with a nice meal. Women are like, no, 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 no. We're not going to settle. But then when they reach 35, 38, 42... Now it's a little different. So men aren't punishing. Men are just like, hey, some women get it. Why don't all women get it? That's all men are. That's I think, I that's think you're I'm... pointing out the reasonable parts and leaving out the 
unreasonable parts. But I get your argument. Like I don't, I, I, I don't think it's an argument. It's just a perspective. I, no, At I, least that's how I see it. Let me let me walk that back. I don't want to speak for all all men, but that's certainly how I see it. And I know that's how a lot of men see it too. No one's trying to punish you guys. But at the same time, you know, we're kind of like, <laughs> hey, man, you know? So question, question. I, I'm taking up a lot of time. This is my last question. Oh, you're fine. I came across a clip where Kevin Samuels was talking about, or or um, it was a very short clip. So if I take it out of context, I apologize. But he was basically telling a woman that her degree didn't matter. He was telling her that the accomplishments that basically she got uh, or that she wanted to pursue, she should... Uh, forego that and focus on the marriage, the husband and the children. And I thought that was a little unfair because one, and before I find my husband, I need to be able to meet my husband where he is, regardless of wherever I decide that should be. But I need to be able to, because if something happens to him, who else is supposed to support the household? So if I go out to make myself as um, versatile as possible in the job market to be able to add to him. What's the problem with that? And also still pursue finding love or, you know, finding a husband. The problem is that last part that you said, you, you know, you said you want to add to him, right? And I think that's good. You should certainly add to your man, but you have to understand that your man doesn't need you to add to him in all ways. Your man I, needs mm -hmm. you to add to him in certain ways. Mm -hmm. You getting a psychology degree is not a way that a man needs you to add to him. You getting a master's in 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 early childhood <laughs> development is not an addition to him, right? And to be honest, maybe you even getting a law degree isn't an addition to him because whatever you make, you're gonna generally want him to make more than you anyways. So you want your income to be supplemental, but to a very small degree. And that's what Kevin Samuels has been able to, to get out, elicit from so many women. When women are asked, how much do you wanna to contribute to the household before it falls to shit? What do most women say? Zero. Well, if it's zero, how are you helping him out with your degree? You know, your psychology degree, where is it when you want to contribute zero? So when you say, oh, we're getting this degree to help you out, but then you don't want to help out. Well, now I see a contradiction. Do you see where I'm coming from? I understand that, but I'm, I, that's where I feel like we're painting all women with one stroke of a brush. I don't want to contribute zero to my household. I don't want to be the breadwinner either, but I do want to make myself as um, as diverse as I need to be to fit my husband's needs. And if I do have to go out and make money, why not do it in the way that makes me happy? Not just any way I can, because I did not prepare myself to have to go out into the workforce because I left that on my husband. Does that make sense? So even though I might not open, you know, a practice or I might not, you know, join a law firm or whatever the case might be, I still have these um, skills that will make me um, more um, uh, marketable in the, thank you, in the job market um, if I have to go out there. I don't have to go to Walmart and get a job because I don't have any other accomplishments on my resume. So I know how to, I understand that, you know, if we want the things that we want as far as men being providers and all of that, we do have to take a back seat. But that doesn't mean that I can't want the best for myself and I can't teach my kids to want the best for themselves. You can want example. the best for yourself and want the best for your kids and not try to get not try to get a Ph.D. in psychology. You can do both. Why are you making it just like an either or thing? I'm not making what all, all I'm saying is you if if getting if getting a PhD makes you happy, get your PhD in psychology or whatever you get it in. Do not take the step further and expect that a man will uh, will give it the credit that you want him to give it. That's all I'm saying. Get it for you and your kids if you want. But don't come over here and tell me how I need to value it. I'm going to value it the way that I want to value it. You get it 
if you want to get it. No one's punishing for you. No one's punishing you to get it. But you're saying it sounds like, you know, why isn't it valued the way that I want it valued? That's well, not the. Mm -hmm, go ahead. I, not necessarily in that way. I'm more so saying that it's being portrayed as if it's being spoken about as if women can bring nothing to the family dynamic. Like no, no, no family. one's saying that women. No, no, no. Wait, that's, that's too I'm broad. Saying, no, no, no. I'm just saying that's the perspective that I get when I see these clips. That's that why women I, bring nothing. No, well, little to nothing. Like that. That's what I'm getting from it. Like even if I go out and get a degree, it means nothing to a man. That's there what you I mean. go with the degree. Education, education wise, I think is what she. Yeah. Means. Oh, thank yes, you. Sorry. Like let's let's. Be, no, you're fine. Yes, you're fine. Yes. You're fine. Thank you, Suzette. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is, if I go out and I seek you know, higher education. And I do that with the idea that in some way I'm going to be able to use this skill, whether it's in the home, outside the home, I'm going to be able to use my education to make my family more well-rounded. Why is that looked at as not valuable? Like it, you can use your degree. I guarantee you there's a lot of skills that you, you received as an attorney that you didn't necessarily learn in a book, TLA. You understand? Let me ask you this. Do you think a man has the right to judge the value that you place on getting a PhD for yourself? Absolutely. In his life. Absolutely. How can this benefit me or does it benefit me? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I, okay. I do believe that. Well, that's what he's doing. So what's the problem? My problem is why is it being taught that it's not valuable? Why is it being? It's not. No, 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 no. Content no. creators that that's that's that if a woman goes to achieve any type of level of higher education, that it's not valuable. You have the right in your life to say, you know, if she gets her PhD, maybe she writes books. What something. they're saying, listen, they're not saying that it's not valuable. You're leaving out two words. Mm -hmm. That's the issue. That's where you're not connecting it. You're saying, why are men saying that it's not valuable? You're leaving out two words, very important words. Mm -hmm. The words that you're leaving out is to them. Men are saying, if you getting your PhD in psychology is not valuable to them. All mm -hmm. right. If you want to get it yourself, get it yourself. If you think it'll help you and your kids, get it. Fine. What what some men are telling you is that a, a psychology degree is not valuable to them. Now, if your number one priority is to get a husband, if your number one priority is to have children, should you invest all of those years in getting a PhD in psychology or should you do something that more aligns with your stated objective? That's all men are saying. Make it line up. Mm -hmm. Don't say that your stated objective is to get a husband and then spend eight years getting something that will not help you get that husband. Make it aligned. Make it consistent. That's all men are saying. That's all we're saying. Understood. Yes, go ahead. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think your point is very valid, Taylor. Like, I'm just going to go back to what it's like we have some uh, dissonance in terms of what we are taught in black families versus what black men actually want. I think this whole push for education and making sure uh, that women have something to quote fall back on, I think it's been very important. I mean, my dad lost his job. Thank God my mom had him holding him down as a nurse. So I'm so helped. glad you're saying that. I'm yeah. so glad you're saying that the family is teaching us one thing, but the manosphere really is it's coming in. Yeah. The yeah, manosphere, it's, 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 Listen, this is so important, guys. Let me shout out to the Blooming Ellen, uh, Blooming Ebony, excellent content creator herself. What is she? What you know? What is that saying? Listen, the family's teaching us one thing, but the men today in 2021, they the manosphere, they are telling you, they are telling you. And, and Suzette came on last time, and what did she talk about? Man, I had some misconceptions coming up in my family, and now I see things differently. What are you saying? What the Jamaican that came up? Oh, I, you know, we were taught this, and what we were taught that. The manosphere now is telling you the truth. You know, women shit on the manosphere when the manosphere is telling you what the hell the deal is with men right now. They're not echoing 
the, the, the misconceptions that you guys were given when you were younger. They're telling you in real time, this is what's going on, right? So receive it that way. It's going to sound harsh because you're like, well, I didn't grow up this way. This is not the truth that I was taught when I was six and eight and 12. Why are these men that I don't know saying it? Why are they saying this stuff in this way? It doesn't sound so flowery, right? It doesn't sound so nice. Oh, these people in the manosphere are terrible. They're telling you the truth. There's some people in the manosphere that own some bullshit, all right? That's anywhere. <laughs> I was about to say. That's anywhere, right? I mean, people, the people like it. People in the black pill, you know, I mean, you can find some crazy people in the manosphere. But in general, not the black pill. Don't look at the black pill stuff. In general, that what 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 people in the manosphere, what men in the manosphere are telling you is how we feel, not the way you want us to feel and not the way that you were taught that we should feel. We're telling you in real time how we feel. Yeah. And really, it's, it's shocking to a lot of people though. I'm telling you, it's shocking to women. Agreed. It is shocking. When I, if, if, if people here, like, again, those of us who have not been living, breathing, uh, you know, um, consuming manosphere stuff, when you first hear it, you like, what? Like you find it to be chauvinistic. You may find it to be just, uh, you know, something contrary to everything like uh, you've been, you ever, uh, you've ever known. So for me, I have people now that tell me easily, you know, Sue, if you were a teacher, you'd be married already. Exactly. Listen, shout, shout out to uh, Perry Unlikely. Perry Unlikely put some real money in my pocket, guys. Shout out to Perry Unlikely. He is an excellent content creator, creator. He knows about crypto. And he was telling me all the way. I bought a shout out to Solo T twenty four. What is his name? Solo TV eighty four. That bear put some money, money in your boy's pocket. He told me about that damn shiv Inu or whatever. He didn't tell me he made a video about it, but I got some of that. And uh, thank you. And uh, so Perry was kind of helping me out with this stuff. Even even uh, uh, yesterday, he was giving me information. Y'all, please go check out Perry Unlikely. Excellent brother. What does he say? I married a PhD. It has never conflicted. The fact that my home is traditional, not modern. The issue is when they think the PhD will make them better than the man. Mm -hmm. And so I think this is kind of important to kind of spend a little bit. It's not that the PhD, it's not that we're saying like, you know, if you get a PhD, we can't marry you, right? What, what we're saying is it, we don't see it as a value necessarily to what we are trying to do. And so if you spend eight years going down this road and once you get this piece of paper and you're like, I got the PhD, where are all the men now that I've got the PhD? <laughs> They're not the on that. Exactly. Ball it up, ball it up and put it on the Exactly, <laughs> right. So that's all the men are saying. So I'm glad that we Terrible. were able to clear that up, Gorgeous, because I, I think that you, but not only you, the, uh, hundreds of thousands of women are operating under this idea or like, why? No, why is Kevin Samuel saying this? Why are the people in the red pill community, the people in the manosphere saying this? Go get it if you want it. Just realize the value that we ascribe to it. All right. That's all we're saying. And there are opportunity costs when you go to get it. Right. When you spend eight years in school in that liberal institution, the institution where they're going to tell you to use all these different pronouns and this and that, you know, they might they might tell you how to think about men and you might come out of those eight years not feeling so great about men. And you got your Ph.D. Where are you going to be when you when it's time to have that 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 strong male father figure slash husband, father figure to your children and right. to his children as well? And the husband, where is it going to be? You can look up and now you're crossing shit off your goddamn list, right? And what Kevin Sam is saying, man, keep your stuff on the list. Keep it on the list. Just, you know, start a little bit early. You don't have to cross some stuff out. If you had not spent eight years getting your PhD in psychology, you wouldn't have to cross all this stuff out, right? You see where I'm coming from, gorgeous? I do, I do. I, and I completely understand. I just don't think that, men are more so seeing the other side of it. Like, I'm pretty sure that, you know, being accomplished puts you in different circles. And then that also have, allows you to interact. Gorgeous, with you're fighting characters. it. You're fighting it. I'm not it. fighting. I'm you're not saying, fighting. Gordon, you're saying, Gorgeous, you're saying that men don't see the other side of it. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about what you just said that, Gorgeous. No, 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 I, I, I get it. 
but gorgeous. I just it. repeated your words and now you're let saying no. Let me reword it. Let okay. me reword it, please. Okay. All right. <laughs> what I was saying was when women go and get these, get, you know, higher education, I understand now what you're saying. Okay. That's not, not necessarily um, useful in the home as far as the man can see, you know, as, as far as how it will help our family. Um, but I do want men to understand that that's what puts us in those particular circles that would allow us to look for a well-earning man. Does that make sense? No. No. You getting okay. your you getting your PhD in psychology will not necessarily put you around men. You know, listen, there are not going to be tons and tons of men in your psychology PhD program. They're not. But we're you know, talking the, about a PhD program. Exactly. Meaning, well, what's it in? That's the thing. No, no, no. I'm talking about let's go a little bit lower. We're more commonly, you know, gotten degrees. An I guess. MBA, maybe. Well, that's what that's what Kevin Simmons said. If you want to, if you want to get a man in college, get a man in college. That's what Kevin Simmons has been saying since day one. Right. If you if you want to be in a place where you have all of this opportunity to get a man, there are. I went to UGA. I went to Georgia. Mm -hmm. Thirty five thousand students. But we're not taught that TLA. Right. That. Black women are not taught right. that. TLA. Thank God this for is the, the manosphere. This is, this is the, well, and, and we got to really do something about it because when when there are opportunities, even in med school, my friends used to go to med school mixers. Uh, the white girls and the Hispanic girls, they all up in the black men's faces. And we have our, you know, the corner where we all hung out together, danced, had a good time. But they weren't on that. They were like, oh, look at those thirsty girls. But indirectly, the thirsty girls, so-called, not saying they were, but the go-getters got them dudes. And then my, my friends are still single. Oh, so wait, 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 wait. The go-getters got the dudes. Yes. Not the go-getters, not the manifestations, <laughs> not the let's wait back. Wait, wait, right wait. Right. The right go getter. Right. Y'all heard her. Y'all right. heard the go-getters get the husbands. Yes. Y'all heard her. We're on it. We're on it. We're on to something here, TLA, because most of the time, get that ear up, baby. Get that ear up. This is what I'm saying. We are God. not, we are not taught that. I'm telling you, from when I saw it. I was not aware that the go-getters got it. That time, I did not think of that as a good thing. I'm telling you what I was conditioned to think. That was terrible. That was a woman being fast or a woman being aggressive. That was not looked upon uh, in, a, in a good way. So now you got this whole, but somebody teaches something because they got them. Some not in our households. Our mm -hmm. households is telling us to, to be Christian and be good and wait till marriage and all of this, or at least the 90 days, Steve Harvey. But they're not teaching that. They're teaching like sit back and watch and he will come to you. God has a man that's made for you. And yeah, he did here with his good ear, Gail. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I agree with you. This more aggressive woman, I feel like has won. But I'm so shocked that I have been taught the opposite almost my entire life. So this is great. Somebody might get saved here. Like, ha hallelujah. Hallelujah. But the is, you're not. We're not taught this, TL. I'm telling you, it sounds like, duh, this is factual. This is logic. This is duh, duh. I'm like, if you understand the type of conditioning that is happening for young black women, it's not. It's clearly not across the board with the 62% like you keep calling out. It's not being taught. The man might taught be calling that. it out, but, but you're, we're you're, not taught this. Your point is well taken, and we can absolutely get into this. And this is something that's really not discussed so much, I don't think, in the man, of course, it's not discussed so much in the manosphere from the female perspective, right? So you guys are actually, you guys are ab not actually, you guys are absolutely, you know, shining that light on it too. All right, listen, thank you so much for coming up, gorgeous. Really appreciate it. Thank you for being so open. Thanks, you, you're you. great. All right. Thank you, TLA. Thank, I love thank you. you. I'll be watching your stream. All Bye. right. Thank, thank you, guys. You. All right, that was interesting. Let's get some uh, let's get some toxic masculinity up in here. All right, what does our man Kevin Mitch Kevin Miller say? Thank you so much, Kevin Miller. Says the amount of time it takes you to get your PhD detracts from her attractiveness because as a woman goes up in age, she goes down and looks to a large majority of men. Even as beautiful as Suzette is, she can't compete with her twenty five year old self. This is true. I can't compete with my 25-year-old self, guys. 25-year-old 
the Everybody damn killer. Everybody can't be with their 25-year-old That's son. exactly right. That's exactly right. So Kevin Miller is, is right on point, right on point with this. All right, we got our man, Fo and thank you so much, Kevin Miller, for this generous super chat. All you guys, listen, I've been up here working, right? I'm trying to listen with my good ear and read the job. So I haven't been able to get all the super chats, but I'm going to go back and get them. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin Miller. Thank you, for everybody, for supporting the stream so much. Uh, what do you think about this, uh, Fawcett? We got Fawcett Media in the house. Kind of what's your opinion? You've been kind of sitting back listening to this. What, what's your take on it? What's up? What's happening, TLA? How you doing, Suzette? Nice to finally meet you. Um, you. Yeah, it's not going to get that toxic up here, but uh, if you wanted <laughs> it's to. a joke. If you nah. wanted to. No, no, no. But TLA, I got to say, man, you you taking it easy on her, man. You see why April Mason quit matchmaking? You seeing all this going on? She over there laughing at the go-getters the, and calling them pick-me's, right? <laughs> back in the day, though. Back in the ba day. Back, back in the day, but back that was day, prime yeah. time for you to find what you're looking for. I can't, I can't currently. go back and relive it. I can't. I just got to go that's where that's I am point. now. That's the point. That's kind of, you know, where we're at now. To tell a woman to go back to college. We're not if I knew, no, no, no. If I knew. If I knew what I knew now. Right. Don't go back to college now, but you got to make some changes here. And so I would ask, I would say right now, Suzette, what is your, uh, how important is it to you to find this man right now? And what type of urgency are you using to find this man? Like, are you just laying back, like you said, and still waiting for him to come to you? Because he's not going to come no, to you. No, I'm on the ambulance, running around, trying to find a dead body. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you want Shout out to all the lawyers. No, Shout out to all the lawyers. No, TLA asked me this last stream. So if you didn't watch last stream, that's why I was on No, no, I've watched all the streams. I've watched we all did. the streams. Okay, yeah, no, I have to get on the dating sites for TLA, even though I'm still trepidatious about it because of so many good yet also bad stories I hear from them. Right. Um, but yeah, I'm dating and I'm out here. I'm out here. I'm trying to present myself. You know, made a channel, even all that good stuff. But yeah, I'm out here. I don't. I haven't got a matchmaker. That has yeah. not been the case yet. So I know that might be another next step ish. But um, yeah, you're saying get out there, keep it moving, and be in pursuit. Going to the gym. Hey, what's up? Since yeah. the gym is better than a PhD. Uh, yeah, that was <laughs> deep. That was deep right there. I was like, oh, they gonna be mad with you. I don't know who said it, but yeah, gym is better than a PhD. Ouch. Um, yeah. <laughs> I know that hurt women. I have bad. another question for you. I know sure. you, you won't tell us your height and you won't tell us your age, but can you give us, are you a taller woman or are mm -hmm. you? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm under, say I'm under five, seven. Okay. You're under five, seven. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. And, and you won't give us your age. So can you give us an age? Yeah, wait, 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 wait. I can't ask me Kevin Samuels in his thing. What's up? Wait, What's Fonset, let me ask you, because this, this has kind of been like a back and forth type of thing. <laughs> Do you prefer taller women or shorter women? Kind of what's your deal? Because a lot of a lot of dudes are like, man, the shorter the shorter women are women, and you get you get a five two, five three, five four, they winning. Like, what, actually, what's your deal? I actually love a volleyball player, so yeah, I like, like a tall I like tall women. Yeah, okay, no, absolutely. I'm not that tall. I'm tall women thick, with those big thick, ass thick, feet, thick, you're cool with that. <laughs> don't Jeez. say that. TLA. Like, sometimes they have pretty feet too. TLA. TLA, since you're a feet man, you're all so, concerned about so, Brie Larson's feet. So, no, I, I gotta look at them. Y'all want me to? Someone they, they, said, they Luke Casey said, don't even look they, at them. It's like a toe hanging over the front of the, the shoe, like it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's nasty. She got four toes in one line, it's disgusting. No. <laughs> Shout out to Trash Can tall? Waves. Are you tall, sir? Yes, I'm 6'2. I'm okay, so well, I mean, that's not tall for men. Yeah, it's men. pretty tall. You need to swim. I can see right. that. Yeah. Right, right, right. Um, but how tall yeah, is your you, volleyball player? My volleyball. I mean, I like a woman five nine to five Jesus ten. You know what I'm that's tall. Yeah. She put on I mean, that's not my sport. only preference. I will actually take a five two. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like five, my ex girlfriend two, was five two. That's what's up. Five two, five three. Even yeah, five, you can't go too much further than that though, because I know some people that go further. No, I've that. seen some five foot even girls that are killers. Really? Nah. Yeah, okay, man. okay, okay, okay. Here comes the toxic Too masculinity, small. right? Here comes the toxic masculinity. stuck in the middle. <laughs> oh, yeah. Moving on no, to no. the point. Moving on to the point. Okay. Okay. What, what type of lawyer are you, Suzette? Personal are injury. You, personal injury. So you don't, are you not a trial attorney? I don't, I don't go to trial mostly. Most things settle. Most okay. Things so cases. that, is that why TLA has been dog walking you for these last two episodes no, uh, I, go on, go on, I respect your opinion <laughs> but again i don't lean into when i come in forms like this i'm not leaning into an attorney presenting her case at court that's not what i'm leaning into maybe you'll mm -hmm. get a little bit of that on my my stream next wednesday 
So you know, know, guys, y'all, y'all, y'all no check us out. Right you got no game. You were scared of Kevin Samuels, though. No, you was, no, you was listen, shook. You were sweating. I did not want to talk about this subject was... matter. The fact that I'm even here talking about this, this is not my expertise. No, nah, I feel you. I Absolutely. I thank you for coming. I thank you for coming. Crazy to me that this is even happening. I'm still, it's surreal. This is great. So if it was something else, I would have absolutely said yes. But this is his. You're going to benefit from it. domain and Mr. Samuel's domain. Y'all ain't going to benefit from it. Oh, no. Y'all going to skewer me. But I uh, uh, it, one more point uh, to the last caller's point. It's like uh, it's like the great Patrice O'Neill said, uh, getting a good career doesn't make you more attractive. Getting a uh, education doesn't make you more attractive. Basically, if you're in if he if I see a woman in a trash can, I'm like, baby, why are you in that trash can? Why don't you get out of there? Why don't you why don't you come to the <laughs> why don't you come over the crib? We, you know, we can hook up with you. Yeah, that you know was what I'm saying? So like, it's not the way Patrice told well, exactly. Patrice said, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm trying to stay with oh, you. Oh, but okay. shout out to Paul Set. Shout out to Paul no, for sure. For that sure. needed a setup, to be honest. It definitely <laughs> did. But uh, I, I mean, hey, we, we get what we 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 Trash cans beating a degree in women. Uh, no, we, we, that's what, we, what I'm we, saying. But it's it's equal parity. You don't see that. I mean, attractiveness doesn't increase with that degree necessarily. Stop. Y'all should close all the schools there. What, what, what are we no, doing? We got Majority you. We got you. Of people in colleges that are women. This is crazy. And y'all right. saying it doesn't make us any more attractive to you. It's crazy. I mean, I, hey, I I enjoy intellect, but I'm just saying, on on a whole, if you're trying to get something like yeah. in, in this dating market, it doesn't put you in a higher position than say this girl on Instagram that you know. Went and nice. got a BBL and all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, about think about it that way. And you, you in the capital of BBL. I was with oh, you I until you hit the BBL thing. Well, I like, mean, right. so it's Instagram all about the physical. Thing. Stop working your brain. No, no, no. no. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here, this is not true. We're this not going to deny true. that there is some portion. This is of not physical. true, but you don't necessarily need a PhD just to be reasonable. You know, I can I can get a woman who went to community college. She's got, you know, 10 years of good experience, life experience, you know, after the community college. And for me, you know, she's she's super, uh, she's super into me. She's super interested in me. She's super interested in my well-being. She knows I, I maybe I, I want I want her to cook a special meal. She 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 does a special meal. She does it because she she's into me. Like that that weighs so much more than a goddamn PhD. But but I could have right. a JD and do that though. TLA is that you, mutually exclusive? No. Here's the thing: you can have a J a JD and do that, but do not come to me and want more credit because you got the JD no, as I opposed don't. to a woman who went to the community college. And that's what you women do. That's right. the error. I'm glad you said the JD so I could point it out. So do we want not more say. Credit? What does that mean? We want more credit. You yes, you want to wave around the fact that you got your damn JD. It's not a it's not a it's not a college degree. It's not a associate's degree. You want to wave it around. You want to trumpet it around as an achievement. It is. Yes, but don't <laughs> expect me to give it more credit than someone who has a degree from a community college that treats me like a king. That's where you mess up. Do Are you, you seeing it? Have, I'm hearing you. I respect what you just said. And I'm That's the point. That. It's so simple to do. So we women can't get it. But even if we go back to like the psychology degree and things like this, like how you raise your kids and the mindset that you're raising your kids, is that important to you? The mindset that you raise? Yes. Yeah, that the kids woman who will be helping you raise your kids, her mindset is not important to you? Absolutely. She doesn't have to be a psychologist is. to do that, though. They, like, you are you want, talking you about a basic, JD? Basic... There are so many great mothers that don't have JDs. What no, the I'm hell are you, what are you talking no, 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 no. about? I'm not saying you can't be a good mother without it. I'm so asking what are you, you what you value. I'm asking you what you value. I didn't say that everyone values having their kids being raised by someone by a mother who's good. But you don't I'm not need saying, advanced... not only good. I'm asking about education. You're saying no. You don't need a high education to value an education. There are there are mother there are so many black people that have sacrificed said listen baby I didn't go to college but I want you to go to college I didn't go to college but I'm gonna work two jobs I didn't go to college but I'm gonna work three jobs and I'm gonna work these three jobs so that you can go No I understand that Lee that's not new I I understand that darling. So what are you saying No I'm asking you 
what you're valuing. I'm not saying that I'm taking yeah, a position. So you are. <laughs> no, Suzette. Shout out, Toto. Yeah. Shout out to Bad News. Uh, one, two, four, three, one. Says, great show. Seems like we may be making like progress. Said, we try, but then, you know, it kind of, it's two steps forward with then a couple steps back, right? Me. Shout out to Bad <laughs> News. Uh, one, two, what four, three, my- one. Always yeah. supporting the chat. Shout out to my man, um, Damien, what is that? Here we go. I'm risking it, guys, pulling these things up. David says, uh, I was just about to ask this question. Hold on, please don't talk over me while I'm doing the super chats. It's not the same for men. Usually, a man's status increases with wealth, and usually, a man's status increases and wealth increases with time. Men and women use different metrics for attraction. This is absolutely true. Shout out to Kevin Miller again. What does Kevin say? TLA, I would respectfully disagree. have to disagree. As a man ages, as long as his money goes up with him, he becomes more attractive to women. It doesn't work the other way. Are you disagreeing with me? Did I say something that, that I, I missed that? I missed that. But um, as a man goes up, as a man, uh, I mean, listen, this is, this is not true. This is just not true. You know, it can't. Did y'all see Anna Nicole Smith? Did y'all see the corpse that Anna Nicole Smith married? <laughs> Do not tell me, Kevin. And this man, money, he had millions on top of millions on top of millions. All mm. right, there's a limit. There's an absolute limit. And if you think women are good, women might be with you, but do not say that they find you more attractive. Now, maybe it could be because Suzette's already crossed off attractiveness on her list, no, right? I, I, I'm, <laughs> just I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. But uh, yeah, I mean, what you're saying, you know, if you're 30s and 40s, you're right. But once you hit 50, you know, you start to you start to crest a little bit, to be honest. And then when you're 60s, you know, I hear what you're saying, but yeah, you know. Generally, I, I see where you're coming from. The truck guru says a PhD is a, in case of emergency, you being the first teacher of our kids is most important. Absolutely. And that's I, I where agree. I didn't understand what, you know, but okay. Uh, and our man, another one. <laughs> another, and he's a youngster too, man. He's 27 years old. Shout out to our man, Jonathan Barrenville. He was fighting these fights yesterday. I was on a, a live stream. I saw him up there on a panel. Some woman coming at him all crazy. And he's like, wait, just slow it down. Let's think about this logically. You know, let's try to take some emotion out of it so we can get to where we need to go. If you're talking emotionally and I'm talking, you know, how, how are we going to relate to one another if I'm trying to use logic and you're, do, you're in your emotions, right? If we, if we really need a plan, if we really need some solutions, Let's try to focus, right? And shout out to Jonathan Barrenville laying the law down. What does he say? It's not that your degree and career aren't valuable. They just don't make you any more attractive or valuable to us. Necessarily, you women do not want to understand that. We will keep saying it until you get it. Thank the Lord for the manuscript so that you can, you can receive it in a way. You, can, you have some availability to this knowledge because like you said, like you said, Suzette, you were not taught this growing up. Women were not taught Apparently raised this. wrong. Apparently raised wrong. <laughs> no, it's not wrong. It's just, you know, it's, it's what we have now in 2021, right? It's what we have now. I picked the sweet and friendly cashier at Target with her GH, GED any day before I even look at my colleague with her PhD in computer science who's super masculine. And unfortunately, he's right. I mean, you will have a better chance. Now, neither one of these is like the best pick, right? You know, if she got a PhD, if she's got a GED, GED working at Target and she's 26, you know, she's probably got some issues going on. But his point is well taken is that at least, you know, she's she'd be focused on, on him and not someone who's super masculine is going to try to run the whole damn thing. So Jonathan Barrowville is, I mean, he's absolutely right. And this, it's, some, it's something that you women are just fighting and fighting against. Yes, your PhD has value. You should be proud of it. It just doesn't really help you out in our eyes. It's not a high preference for us. Even a step further, it could push you away from us for numerous reasons, one of which is that it took you eight years to get and you were isolated from us in those ivory towers and you come out, you know, you're 36, 38, and now you're like, we're all the guys, right? And so it's putting, it can put you behind the eight ball, right? When it really didn't increase your value so much to us, 
it increased your value as a person. It increased your value as a, as a, as a, you know, as a lady, as a woman, but to us, that's all we're saying. That's all we're saying, right? Necessarily. Listen, if I have a woman- I'm going to get a job at Turkish Chicken. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get a job. <laughs> listen, if I, and let me be honest. Popeyes, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get a Popeye's job. Just to help you out. Listen, if, if, I, if I'm dating a woman and she's, you know, let's say she's an investment banker. She, if she's an investment banker, shout out to all the investment bankers, you know, she's good with numbers. Let me tell you something. I'm not good with numbers. All right. I'm not. I'm an attorney. Suzette knows most attorneys, we're not just we're just not good with numbers. All right. She could help out. That could be a huge help. You know, she has her MBA and you know, she's working at a big bank. She has a lot of knowledge that I don't have. So that you know, I, I might even count that as that as a check. I'm gonna give you a little check for that, but that's a little check. There are big checks, right? And you don't that you having your you being an investment banker is not a big check. You being an attorney is not a big check in my eyes for a relationship, for a marriage. That's all we're saying. All right. Shout out to uh, the John Jonathan Barronville for such a huge, huge uh, a super chat. And, and the comment really is just so on point. And he's walking the walk because I saw him yesterday. He was cammed up. Jonathan Barronville was cammed up and was letting a woman know about it. Say, hey, man, calling her out when she got emotional. So uh, Jonathan Barronville is a man that 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 talks the talk, but he absolutely walks the walk as well. Um, so, OK, uh, did you want to just close it out, Fawcett? Did you want to say anything before I rotate the panel? Absolutely. Um, hey, you can subscribe to my channel, Fawcett Media, covering uh, entertainment, doing some of this relationship stuff right now, kind of pivoting, you know, brands and stuff. But, uh, yeah, I just leave you with this. Uh, I don't normally talk about it, but what do men get for our degrees? I mean, I've got a master's degree and I don't even talk about it because it doesn't it doesn't mean anything. Hold on. Wait, wait. We can't say don't do it, Kevin. What's Kevin about to do? <laughs> Shout out to Kevin Samuel. Shout out to the Godfather. Sorry, I didn't want to interrupt you. What were you saying about that? Shout out to the Godfather. Yeah. What's up? Yeah. I was just saying, like, what does our degree mean? in the course of the dating market i mean what what is that you're asking me yeah well i mean it's really for anybody in, but yeah. so you're are you saying because you don't work in your field it's not valuable no in, in 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 contrast to what the young lady was saying before about how oh well you know it doesn't i'm i'm bettering myself you know so okay. you're saying kevin said we really want to win and drop what does kevin say oh, say women Lord. who really want to win know to drop the sign language and listen to men as they as they say they're, they're, they're what they desire and he's so true and that's kind of where i thought the first you know gorgeous jess she was listening for a second she was like oh i was talking to her did you guys see her she yeah. was listening and i was like okay we make a voice and i was like dude so i spoke for like five minutes it. and she was soaking it up she was soaking it up and i was like all right gorgeous jess do you see what i'm saying and she was like, yeah, but still, if we got a degree, I was like, oh, my God, we were so close. We were so close. <laughs> Shout out to Gord Jazz, right? So and Kevin Samuels is exactly right. If you women could just take a step back and listen. And, and Suzette is absolutely right when she says, you know, we have been taught something different. So we can't just toss it out of our minds at the drop of a hat because we've grown up this way. This has been inculcated into us. And she's absolutely right. Thank the Lord for Kevin Samuels and the Manosphere who are letting women know you don't have to labor under this misconceptions because the longer you have these misconceptions, the, long, the, longer, the longer your perception is separated from the truth, the harder it's going to be for you, the more frustration that you're going to have in not reaching what you say is your number one priority, right? So this is what Kevin Samuels is saying. Yeah. I'm sorry, but yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Uh -huh. um, I want to ask this gentleman a question. So if a woman has degrees, because this is my thing, and I'm, I haven't been reading the chat, so I don't know what the ladies are asking. What about those of us who already have these degrees? This is my big question. So yes, you're saying for younger women, in your opinions, that is not going to be valuable to you. This is not how men in 2021 is looking at women in terms of value. So if you already have your MBA, your JD, your, your master's of whatever, 
are you guys completely excluding these women from your dating pool because there are now younger women who have uh, a four-year degree or less and that's it for you or what it, what do you do or what rec recommendations would you have just from a man's perspective just trying to see where you guys are at for anyone who does have these type of degrees already i would just say it's an added bonus it's it's something that you can add to your list of qualifications but in the grand scheme of things it's not going to be a determining factor and that's what i'm saying i think you all are weighting it too heavily that maybe it should put you above some other women but i'm telling you right now you you mentioned miami as a market you're dealing with the heavyweights yeah. like you're dealing with some some straight up women who their whole life is beautifying themselves so you have to understand that that might be part of the reason you're having an issue but i'm gonna say it's that way in every city i'm gonna just tell you it's I not in LA right it's now. not in in atlanta boy you know there's so many black women here like the black well what? when you say when you say it's that way no in no, every no, city, no. i'm just talking about no, what no. she was physical saying physical attraction she was saying, and beauty out yeah she was saying it was difficult education. she okay, kept, had to keep kissing frogs in miami that's what i'm talking about yeah, she didn't like when I brought that. Oh, no. All right, because here's what we're going to do. Thank you so yeah. much, Fawcett. I'm going to give, I don't know if Kevin Samuels you, wants Fawcett. to hit the link. Okay. I will, um, if, if he does, I will I will drop you down, Suzette, and then you can no, come I'll back I'll listen. Up later. I'll sit up here and listen. Yes, praise God. I will sit up here and listen. Okay. So I'm going to feel is most appropriate. Mm -hmm. Okay. I got to make some room for if, well, somebody, somebody let me know if Kevin Samuels wants to come up. Mm -hmm. if, if the Godfather wants to come up and speak on this, please, a lot of people want to know how. How he feels. Um, if he does want to come up, I will. Uh, I will make some state. I will make some um, some room in the in the in the back because, of course, we're we're filled up here. And uh, so, yeah, if he wants to come up and uh, give us some knowledge, he absolutely, absolutely uh, can come through. We would love to uh, love to see it. Uh, let's do this. Let me. Uh, I know I've missed some of the super chats. What does uh? What does uh, Charles say? Charles says, if I own a marijuana dispensary and your degree is in body, ah. then your degree is useful to me. And see, this is, I think, how guys see it. Wow. Guys are like, you know, if you really want to help, then help, right? But don't think that we are going to give you extra points just because you have the degree. You know, if you have a PhD in psychology, I don't know how that's going to help. Is that an achievement? Yes, but please don't expect me to value it so much, right? Uh, while we are waiting to see if our man, Kevin Samuels, wants to come up, we had a woman, we had a man, so let's bring up another woman. Let's let's bring up some reinforcements. We got Chantel. Chantel in the house. How are you doing, Chantel? Did, uh, did, did, did someone see if Kevin Samuels said he wants to come up? Hi, Lead. Hi, Suzette. Doing, how are you doing, Chantel? Hey, Can you hear me? Chantel? I'm doing well. I think there's a delay in my mic. Is there? I don't know. We'll, we'll talk for a second. If there's a delay, we can't really, we're not going to be able to work with it, to be honest. It's a long delay. But kind of, uh, let's just see. Tell, tell, how do you feel about what you've heard thus far? Yeah, this is not going to work, Chantel. I'm so sorry. But um, but thank you for coming up. I appreciate it. Hopefully, if you come back, I'll try to pull you up because your delay is just way too, way too long. Um, all right. And I think that's all the women that we have on the on the chat, to be honest. I was trying to get you somebody, somebody good, right? Let's get a let's get a young buck. <laughs> let's get our man um. Let's get our man, uh, Devil's Bane. We got Devil's Bane in the house. Long time no see. Devil's Bane, how are you doing? Doing well, doing well. How you guys doing? Doing Seems great. Nice doing good. All right, we got JP here. JP says, here's the deal. I survived the streets, 20 months in jail, an honorable tour as a paratrooper in the 82nd Airborne Division, BA Econ, MS analyst. I still got to have game to get the ladies. Accomplishments are not a substitute um yeah and i think someone uh oh someone okay wait wait someone's saying that kevin samuels wants the link all right let me drop the link a few, i'm gonna drop the link 
I gotta clear the uh clear the back, guys, because I because you know when the bo- when the Godfather wants to come up, we gotta we gotta clear the back. So give me give me a second. We're gonna no one hit the link except for Kevin Samuels. Um, oh damn, I, I you had two things up, Devil's Bane. You had two things up. Um, I clicked your one thing and uh, the other thing uh, also disappeared. So uh, let me just make some room for our man, the Kevin Samuels. Please detox. Uh, please don't don't come up. This link is just for uh, just for Kevin Samuels and uh, making some room. All right. I think we got uh, enough. Give us give me one second here. All right. What does uh, JP say? Oh, we already talked about that. What do you think about JP's uh, comment that you know men have to men can have so much and it's not valued by the women? Okay. All right. Let me stop. That. Don't answer that question. And shout out to JP. Thank you so much. And you're exactly right. So uh, we have the <laughs> we Rob is exactly right. We got Kevin Samuels in the house. He is about to cook. You know, this is not an ambush. Would you like to stay up here? <laughs> Or I will like listen, and if I have down? one or two questions, I might ask, but I will listen. Fantastic. And listen, let me let me just say, again, you know, we're talking to someone who has an immense amount of knowledge, so it would be a waste. Uh, you know, a lot of people wait hours to talk to him, and they never get the chance. So I know, Suzette, I know, but, you know, you are kind of in the cohort of, of, of women that he talks to. Right. So this is a this is a great opportunity. <clears throat> so let's bring up the one and the only. We got that godfather in the house. <laughs> they get a double appearance. How are you doing, Kevin Samuels? I am well. I am well. Um, in between uh sessions, uh, it's just funny. I, I just got off a session with a Harvard educated attorney. Um, wow. Um, yeah, so Here's the thing. You guys are talking, you're discussing education and, and, and things like that. And what I think a lot of women need to understand is something called attraction symmetry. Most often women are wanting because, here's the, here's the reality, because they don't have what we want. They're trying to make what they have substitute. It's like if you don't accept uh currency you know well i want to buy this car we only accept uh, u.s dollars and euros well i've got uh got pesos or i got a yen we don't accept that well we can convert it we don't it doesn't convert what you have does not convert to what we want mm. and what men have always wanted in women fit feminine friendly cooperative submission submission is respectful cooperation and childless. That's what matters to men across the board. And the higher up you go, the more restrictive it becomes. Now, what you typically don't hear is women who have those things and their education being single. Wow, that's true. They don't tend to find those. I mean, because there's a subset of women who I've done, I've, I've, I've defined as nice modern women and these women often call themselves traditional Uh, but you're not traditional let me explain why traditional women men are not an option they're a requirement because family is paramount if you're if you're a traditional woman you were raised to value family above self so the likelihood of you reaching age 27 and being unmarried is unlikely for true traditional women there's a, there's not a matter of I'll do it afterwards. Um, this is why you find this is why you find so many women who are uh, from different cultures who start to prioritize relationship. They all go to college, you know. They go to college, but in our community, black women have been told to take your twenties for yourself, where they think twenty six is young for marriage, when actually. 27 is old for marriage. Mm. Um, what I'm going to be talking about going forward is what's going on in China and the impact of th- their attempt to, t- to socially engineer a population is devastating them. But in China, women over 27 are called Sheng Yu, Sheng Yi, leftover women. Right. Leftover women. Women who 
may be young for a human, but old for marriage and old for several reasons. One, the biology. It is, it is, it amazes me how many times I hear women who are over, th who are late twenties, early thirties, all wanting to have two or three kids. It's like, okay, well then who's going to raise these children? Because you ask her, do you want to work to pay significant bills? Oh, no, I don't know. Not a problem. But when I ask, what percentage of our family financial load do you want to have to be responsible for for a lifetime? Inevitably, it's less than 20 percent. Then you want to have a middle class, upper middle class lifestyle. That's when the numbers and everything start to come out. And it's like you want a man who's earning the kind of money to where your money, if you stop working, would not impact the man. And you want to be able to do this at a, at a later age. And my thing is this, the men you want, want something from a woman and a younger woman who may, because I only deal with educated women, but I don't deal with women whose education is paramount to them to where they own partner tracks, such and so forth, because I don't have to, mm. I don't have to. Um, and there are plenty of women who follow me, who will tell, who, who come on and say, I was going down that path. But then when I found the guy that I was, I knew that I should be with, I would decide to go down his path. And that's why she's married to a cardiac surgeon right now. And she was at Harvard with him. So in, our, in the black community, in order for professional black women to get what they say they want, they're going to have to stop prioritizing what the men say we want. Absolutely. There's no negotiation. Let me oh, jump yeah. in right quick, because what, what I heard a lot uh, when talking to Suzette today and the, the other days, and I think other women echo this, too, is that they say, well, you know, the reason a huge part of the reason that we women are like this is because how we were raised, you know, what our parents taught us and, you know, how, how we mm -hmm. were brought up. Is, is there a cure for that or or what, what, yeah. what do you think? Not that, the cure that, to L.A. Oh, my. Excuse well, me. Well, a lot of women are in a situation is that they don't want to be it? in. Is there a fix yes. for it? Mm -hmm. Yep. It's called accountability. Mm. It's like a lot of black men weren't raised with a father. And we weren't raised to be the men. We, we weren't raised to be the men we are, but we had to fix it. Yes. We, see, yes. see, the stuff that we talk about over here, Shaharazad Ali and her ilk have been talking about that for the longest. Now, the problem is, the problem is that when it gets right down to it, we can have these intellectual discussions back and forth. But I have spoken to thousands of women and I have yet to have a woman honestly think that the things that we talk about really are going to impact, impact her. I had a conversation just Tuesday, just Tuesday. So I'm, I'm going to be uploading it that you ask the average middle class, the middle income weren't earning mother of two, blah, blah. Are you going to have enough to live on and retire on? And they cannot conceptualize a life that it doesn't work for them because they saw their grandmothers and aunties and everybody be okay. But what they don't realize is you, if you're over, if you're late thirties or forties, you saw a generation that had, you know, a, a stronger nuclear family an extended family, all these other kind of things. And the notion that, you know, it's just going to work. They all think it's going to work. Right. Or else, why are they moving? Why are the women who seem to have all this the reluctance moving in such a lackadaisical way? Yeah. Do you hear from a lot of women? We, we had a woman up uh, today, a 30. No, she was a, a Jamaican woman. And, you know, I was at, at the, the issue had come up about whether she would actually approach men. And she mm -hmm. said, no, you know, I would never approach a man. And then she said, well, the right man just has to come. Right. The whole right. manifestation. He, right. he just has to come. Right. Do you do you encounter that a lot? A lot of women feel that way. Every single night, mm. every single night to the point to where it is damn near a pathology. I mean, I understand, <laughs> I, it's from women who are childless with children. Mm. They all feel like they are going to win. And even when you sit down and talk to I've talked to women who are high level, high level, master's, law degrees. Man, they, it's like, well, yeah, but it's this whole manifesting, speak it into existence. But then you ask them, what in your dating life has shown you 
that this is going to work? What is the probability? And most women give themselves at least a 50 50 shot. Most give themselves a 70 percent shot at this happening. This is why you see so many women who are just not taking mating as a competitive thing. It is. I'm just going to rely on the, the universe, my friend group, the, the church or the, 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 the sorority or whatever. This is why black, black matchmakers are leaving because black women think getting a man of value should be free. Mm. He, a matter of fact, he should he should find them. Right. That's what they were saying. That's what that lady said. Oh, he'll find me. You know, he's going to come. He has to come. He's coming. Mm -hmm. And he's going to he's going to come and he's going to go right by you. <laughs> because when he sits down with you, he's going to find a woman who has not prioritized understanding men, understanding what men want. He's going to find a woman who's going to sit down in front of him and at best interview him. And it's like, well, and you and this man is sitting around thinking, well, I don't need your money. I'm doing just fine on my own. Life is going. What can you be in my life? And most women lead with what they do. And what they do is for their paycheck. You have no time studying or preparing for what you're supposed to be for me. So when I asked the whole question, but you got a cookbook? I don't need a cookbook. You oh. Didn't... oh, what? <laughs> you know, I don't need a cookbook. I don't need this. Okay, well, you want these children. Who's going to cook for them? And it's like, well, family planning. Who's going to do this? Who's going to do that? Uh, it'll work out. God. All right. Well, I say this to my, especially to my college educated professional women, uh, men are looking to see that you put this, the equal amount of effort or more into getting a man as you did getting that career and that degree. And if you're not doing it, sorry that you didn't learn it. Sorry that your mama didn't teach it. Sorry that you were lying to, but it's the world is a cold, harsh place. It's not your fault. It is your responsibility. You're behind and you need to run harder. Mm. Uh, Mr. So, Simmons, may I ask? I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Absolutely. Um, Mr. Simmons, may I ask? It sounds like. You can call me Kevin. Okay. Thank you, Kevin. Um, with respect to that shift that you're talking about in mindset, to me, mm -hmm. it has to be almost across the board, like a, a, a massive cultural shift with how women in, um, you know, the black community are seeing themselves versus what you're telling us that men are seeing as valuable. I know okay. what you're doing in terms of your platform is a part of that cultural shift, but what else? I mean, for those who are not in the manosphere, I'm new to the manosphere. For those who have not kind of opened their ears or are just like you're saying, they're following other prescriptions that are clearly not working. How does that cultural shift start to happen or what can we do so that men and women are not speaking like literally two different languages as far as what they're seeking out in partnership or what their expectations of how partnership will come about or marriage will come about. Okay. So what I think I heard you say was in order for this to work, it has to have, it has to be a seismic shift in the culture. Yes. Nope. 10% mm. will do. Nope. Mm. Tipping point. Nope. See, see, here's here's what I would do. I would do it with a woman like do, do with a woman like you. You're in Florida, right? I am. Mm -hmm. I I'd say uh, take you and all your friends that you think are on your level. All right, and I take one or two men and maybe eight of you guys, and I put those two men who are marriage minded looking for wives at that time, and I throw a pencil in. I throw a pencil, a stick, and a knife, and I say fight. Who do you think, what you gonna do? Your best friend, your bestie, your sorority sister, your girl, your, your junior league, what you gonna do? Well, you said a pencil, a stick, and a knife. <laughs> Which pencil, one am I gonna stick go? And a knife. There's 80 y'all, pencil, stick, and a knife. Mm -hmm. And we can only, oh, so only the men that, oh my goodness, uh, Hunger Games? Uh, <laughs> oof. I hear you, sir, I hear you. But the thing is, what you gonna do? Mm. Stab another woman is what you're saying, or infer? I mean, not literally, but like fight her down to get that man. What you gonna do? <sighs> not a stick, I don't think. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. Well, I, I think see, what I, happens, I, your point is what well happens, taken. And what happens, lead is just like on Bear Grylls Island season two, 
women want to lead by committee and they don't want to be rude to each other. And they want to be nice. And they'll sit there and I, and I have these two men who are ready to go. And every minute of the lead attorney's life is from his billable hours. You wasted 15 minutes of this high value man's time, not wanting to offend your friend. <laughs> You're wasting all this time. And then eventually what I do is then I'll, then what I'll do is I'll put a wall where you are and then I'll push a button, the wall will drop where you are. And then here come in the white women. And I'll, and the same pencil, the stick, and the knife will be with the white women and say, here are the two men, eight white women. Guarantee you, uh, you would see bl Hunger Games. They would fight, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And that's my thing. Black women, you have been you have been made to not even be in line with your nature. You're supposed to be ready to compete for what it is you want. See, if I said there is a partner position, or if I had said that there is some status or that you that you and all your sorority sisters and girls want it you guys would you guys would fight for that because you deem it more valuable that's what that example shows us our women don't even feel us they don't even feel that we're valuable enough to offend one another for much mm. less fight yeah so you, how do you, you have a cultural hmm? I was just so how do you, you see a cultural see a, shift yeah go ahead i'm sorry so how you see a cultural shift with the one woman who recognizes that whether you use a pencil, a knife, or a stick, it doesn't matter. All she had to do was walk over there and do something. I didn't say what to do, but the fact of the matter, they don't do a damn thing. Mm -hmm. They expect us to come do it. So the one woman who has been listening to whether they listen to the man, because a lot of women listen to me. My channel is over 30% women. And whether they hear it from me, this is getting out worldwide. And women are, are starting to say, you know what? I don't like it, but I got I, I, I put this put the corporate girl thing to the side and I put the thing that I, I thought I was feminine. I thought I was this. I thought I was that. I did what you tried, what you said to do for a month. And I'm in a serious relationship. I'm engaged now. Here's my wedding. See. And what happens is when a woman sees somebody, you, women notice change in other women. You see a woman you've saw you've known for a long time. You ain't seen her in six months. She lost a few pounds. Oh, girl, you're looking good. You lost some weight, something so forth. You see that rock on her hand, right? What? Huh? Uh? -huh. And how would that happen, girl? I uh, I I learned how to be sex sandwich in silence. Mm -hmm. mm. That's what I did. I, I learned how to not. I learned how to turn off the not be right. I I, I knocked off this bullshit. Um, this BS conditional femininity and I started walking around in my feminine and I started vibrating at a level to where masculine men could 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 see me. So where I stopped stop making it stop with the princess kind of idea like that has to come to me and started realizing I got to compete for the kind of rare man that I think is special. And then when I get him, I got to do something and be something. And I got to take pleasure in doing and being because I want just as much as I want him to feel like he has me and I'm special to him. I need to make him feel like that every day because when he leaves, the competition is fierce. This is why so many sisters laugh when you see other groups of women out early in the morning jogging and running or eating salads and drinking water because they know that they got to compete. Right. And when I ask the average black woman, would you cut your friend off at the kneecaps to get to that man? She says, no. Well, buy a dog and die alone. <laughs> <laughs> what is it <laughs> i mean i'm serious i'm serious because i'm serious because see in the first example i gave the way it has typically gone is well there's a pencil a stick and a knife there's a room eventually he's gonna want some sex so all i have all right. to do is sit here and wait and we live in a connected global world now to where I need you, I need black women to understand. Becky, Marisol, Mylinga, Jamila are watching y'all. They're watching y'all not go after your men. They're watching you talk about the dating market is trash and this and that. And they're like, hmm. They are studying. They are enrolling in African, I mean, uh, Dr. Tia San Johnson's class on black masculine studies at University of California, Fresno. He said the largest amount of women enrolled in his black masculinity studies were white women. And he said, like why? Mm -hmm. yeah, because they said, well, I like, I, I'm opening my dating preferences up and I need to learn these guys. 
black women don't even, black women think men should be free much less go study for this come on man now it's latin women so my question to the professional women is what do you think you should have to do to get a man that you value because we often talk about the men that ain't getting it done well i'm talking about the men that you value since they're so rare so hard to find what is it that you think you should have to do and oftentimes all you hear is nothing right so um, listen really really appreciate you coming on and dropping that knowledge there are so many women in uh suzette's situation i know down here in atlanta i know that for a fact mm -hmm. <laughs> i've dated them right and yep. it, it seems like these are at the same time these are these are these are very intelligent very smart women but at the same mm -hmm. time they can't figure out what the root of the problem is they look up and they say well you know why am i in this situation why don't i have kids why am i thinking about you know freezing my eggs you know it wasn't supposed oh, yeah. to be like this and oh, they don't have any answers. You're not taught to fight, TLA. Excuse me. That, that's what I, sorry to interrupt, but I see that. The only people that talk like Mr. Um, uh, how Kevin is just uh, express himself. And I was, again, at an earlier time in my life are like, and not to be like classes, but my hood cousins talk like that. My hood, younger uh, um, female cousins would be like, you have to fight for your money. You have to fight and get him. Mm -hmm. They were talking like that from day one. And again, I was taught. And again, that's no excuse. That's like, whoa, that's like, you know, not cool, low class, whatever. But yeah, they were very in tune with that. And they were very in tune with their um, being this 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 war, this competition. But I, well, again, we're not. Yes, go ahead. Well, see, so I'm going to use my Uno reverse card now. I don't buy that. I'm mm. going to tell you why. Mm. Because all I have to do to get a different outcome is change the two men. I bring in two white men italian men little brown dark hair good looking and have eight black women in there automatically they look at those men and know stick they knife mm. they uh-huh they know what do you uh, start to see or do you start to see they start smiling posture stands up they're not looking to see what's going on they're, they're looking to say they're looking to see who's moving toward the stick mm. they're flipping their hair Black women know non-black man, oh, he ain't gonna put up with this bull crap. He has to be competed for. But you know what? If I get Prince Henry or if I get the dude from Red, if I get him, you know, I get extra points. Especially if he's a man of value. Oh man. So yeah, no, no. And the funny thing is. Black women, you want to know what to do for black men? Do what do for do for black men what you would do for a white man, and that would be just fine. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know what to do because it's the same thing you do at work. How do you get that promotion? You st you get to work, you stay late, you do extra you do extra homework, you win, you make a company bottom line, you bring in that client, you do all that stuff. You know how to do this. You do all that. But you only do it for the men you deem that are valuable. So it's not that you weren't taught. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm telling you is uh, biological. What you've been, what's been done is the ethnic image of the black man in your mind has been so devalued to where he's not even worth considering for competition. This is why you say you love us and do all the other things. But the only time we see your love is when one of when George Floyd has been did something happen or when somebody been shot. But you ask the average black man, when's the last time you had a woman just be nice, smile? There was a whole big thing about smiling for the longest. Mm -hmm. So what is it going to actually take? It's going to take about 10% of women breaking away from the hive mind group think. Start, start being proud pick me's start being proud women who are who associate with not not just talking actually doing something and being something because those women when they make them when they make their presence known just like they do in my facebook group the mix they get snapped up you know i get like who put it in the comment section earlier i've gotten people married on uh, married and coupled on accident why is that why 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 is a man who runs a facebook group got more success 
than these so-called matchmakers. Because <laughs> I started with what the men want. Mm. Gotcha, gotcha. So if 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 you focus on the on what the men want, then maybe everything kind of falls in line. Because if you do it the other way and focus on what the women want and maybe the women's priorities, then then maybe you end up in a situation like well, this where 62% of the black women are single. Well, and see, women look at stats like that and they, it's so big and it's like there's 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 safety in numbers. Mm. I, I'm looking for the one woman who says, I don't, I'm looking for the one woman who's going to go sit at the bar at Ruth Chris on a Tuesday night and go for hers. Right. See, you have to be willing to cut your friends off because if you're friends, you're friends for a very good reason. You guys are similar in a lot of ways. That means you probably like the same kinds of men. If there's only one, what are you going to do? You got to compete for them. And if you don't compete, open the door and somebody else will. That's what it comes down to. And that, and the thing is, lastly, that um, the woman who's not a, I asked the other day, I asked a, a woman last night, um, if I put a man, if I put, if a man, if you were dealing with a man who you was the kind of man you want, marriage minded and told you he wanted to be with you, but for some reason that he can't necessarily explain to you or that you understand, he has an issue with your single friends. And he says, look, I respect who they are. They are your past. I'm your future, but I, we can't go forward in life or in marriage with them as your friends. You have to make a choice, and I respect your choice either way. You know what she chose, right? She chose her friends. Wow. And mm. I said, that is crazy. It is against your biology to choose your friends over your, over your man and your family. And, and, and the funny thing is most of these women claim to be Christian. I'm like, well, then where, if you're supposed to leave and cleave from your family, where do you think your friend's supposed to be? But here's the funny thing, and I got to run. Many women aren't even willing to give up social media. Right. They don't want to give up anything. <laughs> so it's like my question to the to the women who think we're always bashing and don't talk about the men and such and so forth. Well, the men, got a, men have been under examination since D.W. Griffith's Birth of a Nation from 1915. We've had enough. My question is this. What do you expect your brothers, your cousins, and your nephews to do if women aren't willing to actively get out there and compete for these men who are thorough and approved themselves to be ready to move down? What are they supposed to do? Are they supposed to just sit and wait for you guys to get yourself together? Or are they supposed to go ahead and keep the race going? Facts. That's the hard question. So, uh, well, I, I, I'm going to let that, let that run. I know several people probably want to get in here, and I got a call I have to get to. Um, this will be continued, um, especially tomorrow. Uh, a lot of stuff going on. So appreciate you guys. I'll talk to you later. Thank Thanks, you. Man. Thank you so Thank much, you. Kevin Samuels, the Godfather blessing us. Thank you so much, Kevin Samuels. Really appreciate it. All right. Love it, love it, love it. When the Godfather comes through and expresses his uh knowledge and experience that he has doing this for so long uh super super deep and and suzette we got suzette with some questions in right absolutely i, 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 I decided to speak suzette decided to speak <laughs> <laughs> suzette speak so again shout out to kevin Zabel. and let me give a big salute to kevin Zabel. what do you say give my likes up right if y'all can hit the like button if y'all could subscribe as well thank you so much thank you to all the people who were doing the uh the super chats as well really really appreciate that guys uh, thank you all for liking it uh liking the video all right let's keep this going and what we'll probably do um we'll probably close the back so everybody who's back here will be reached but you know we've been going geez we've been going for four hours all right so we've been we've been doing it what is uh hank and uh, shout out to hank tyro for the 404 Hank is always supporting such a strong brother. Shout out to all the Sigmas. Shout out to all the military vets. What does he say? At Kevin Samuels, excellent show over the past month, focusing on the ages of 33 to 40, the danger zone, right? Thank you for last night's episode, giving specific steps. 
that high value women need to do from now on. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much for this, Hank Tyrone. You are always so, so generously supporting me, supporting the live, supporting the streams. Really, really Yay, appreciate Hank it. Hank Tyrone. Hank Tyrone mm -hmm. is the absolute man. Shout out to Hank Tyrone. Shout out to all the Sigmas crossing the burning sands. All right, let's bring up, I think we were going to bring up Devil's Bane. I don't see him. He must have dropped off. Oh, we were going to, let's just try this again. I think we were trying to bring up Chantel. Chantel, can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you guys hear me now? Yay. Yes, yes. You know, just, just quickly, let me, let me know. What did you do to fix the lag issue? Oh, well, I was in my work office. I just moved. <laughs> I, let, I switched laptops. Oh, got you. Okay. It was on where my you, end. Where are you from? It sounds like you so, have an accent. Yeah, I'm originally from Jamaica too, Suzette. Oh, got the Jamaicans <laughs> in the house. Shout out to the Jamaicans. <laughs> and I'm also from <laughs> South Florida. So we have we have that, cool. those two things in common, cool. Suzette. Excellent. Um, Do you live in South Florida now? No, I moved to Dallas last year. Dallas. Okay. Everybody moving out there. Mm -hmm. So yeah, what did you think about this? You know, you heard Suzette speak, you know, how you heard our uh, interaction. And then we had some people on, we had the Godfather on kind of what's your take on all of this? Um, so being from South Florida too, I can relate to what Susa is saying mm -hmm. and, um, I'm not taken away from her argument. There's definitely pee in the dating pool as the, um, the last caller said. However, I think as black women, we tend to focus too much on what the men aren't doing and, um, the lack of men, rather than if we are qualified for those men that we want. Um, not so, as, as I said, on my, I say on my channel, I'm not trying to bash or shame anybody because that's what they always say, you're bashing black women. But not to bash black women, but we need to look within to see, are we even qualified for the men we want? Um, Can you expound on that? Because I know they're going crazy in the chat. Do, are let's we talk even about qualified? Or, what does that mean? The weight or weight, for example, as black women, right? A lot of us are overweight. We know men like women who are fit, feminine, friendly, as Kevin would say, right? So we as black women will have our list, but then we don't look within and say, okay, the man on the list, he's going to want something too. What does he want? And am I qualified for that? Am I that person that he yeah. wants? Why do you what think you Chantel? Big bone, they got a few curves, though. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Uh, go ahead. What were you gonna say? Um, no, yeah, I was just saying, saying, oh, sorry, sorry. Oh, go ahead. Go, sorry. I'm shutting up. You go ahead, Suzette. Oh no. no, I was just gonna say. I think that's the disconnect in the between black men and black women. Why do you think that black women uh, do not focus on what would make themselves more attractive to black men? Why do you think they see it the other way around? Because we were raised to say, I'm the prize, I'm the table. He's supposed to take me for how I am. Mm -hmm. However, that's no excuse because if, like for myself, for example, I'm 30, right? And I had that mindset, oh, I'm the table, I'm the prize. I can get to whatever weight. I can wear how much weave and nails and lashes. And the guy's going to accept me for who I am, how I am. But my results were saying completely different. I wasn't getting married. There weren't men of value that I wanted, lining up at my door. It was the Pookie and the Ray Rays and the, I call them feminine energy men lining up at my door. And I had to look within and say, okay, I can't just say I'm the table. I can't just say, oh, my lady parts are what I'm bringing to the, to this relationship. I have to see if I'm qualified for the man that I want. And that's when I realized it was the masculine energy it was because I'm, I'm, I have my MBA too. I am, I went to school. I'm, you know, I said, I'm Jamaican, I'm immigrant, you know, Go to school. Don't focus on boys. Get your education. Um, but it's it's our responsibility, especially after a certain age, if we're not getting our desired results, to ask the hard questions. We can't just blame our upbringing. We can't just blame, oh, my parents didn't teach me and there wasn't the manosphere when I was growing up. We have to take responsibility and take accountability. Got you. You said that you recognize some traits that maybe men might not really appreciate so much and you change some things about yourself. You know, what would you say to women who are find themselves in Suzette's situation? There's so many of them, especially here in Atlanta, highly educated, attractive, and they can't, they can't find a, a good, a good partner. What would you suggest maybe they look 
some areas they might change within themselves that might that might help them secure the man that they they say that they want. I would say come over this space, the black manosphere, and listen. Listen not to react and listen not to not to debate or anything, but listen, genuinely listen. And if there's something within yourself, you know, we can all start with something as simple as the fitness aspect. If there's something within yourself that you know, okay, I can lose some weight. You know, we have we live in a um, age where social media and Snapchat filters kind of turn many of our women delusional. Like they think that they are mm, hotter than they actually are. So um, so I think, yeah, I think we're we're just the media panders to us. We need to look within and really tell ourselves this. I mean, I'm, I'm guilty of it, too. I was 20 pounds overweight during the quarantine and I thought I was still hot. Not to say I wasn't I wasn't hot or I was a, I was on a tr- ugly, but, you know. Mm -hmm. I had to look within and be honest with myself. And it hurts sometimes. I cry because, I mean, Kevin just mentioned your friends. You have things in common with your friends. And when I observe my friends, all my friends are masculine. All my friends are unmarried. And I had to look and say, oh, well, this is probably why I found myself at 30 and not married. I thought I was going to be married by 27. Nobody couldn't tell me anything. Um. But then I got, luckily I got to the point and, and shout out to my aunt who is in Jamaica. She, she's able to coach me through it. But luckily I got to the point where I can't just blame the men. I can't blame the lack of men. I can't blame men not wanting to get married or there are no good men around. I can't blame that. I have to look within. And it breaks my heart to see so many black women um, older than me still blaming the men, still blaming, oh, men don't want to get married or there are not enough men around. It breaks my heart because that's a childlike mentality. At Mm. what point are you going to look in the mirror and take some kind of accountability? Even if it's to say, yeah, I can lose a little weight or yeah, men don't like weave. Let me take out my weave. Interesting. And when you made these changes, did that help you? Were you able to secure a relationship or a marriage or did you see it working? I I, um, do observe it working. I'm not married yet. Mm But it is working in terms of the um, the quality of men that I started attracting and then how I have been um, approaching my relationships. My relationships have been more peaceful in mm. terms of where I'm able to let the man be a man, let him lead and just know that, OK, he wears the pants in the relationship. Everything doesn't have to be an argument. I know um, I used to say, oh, I love those little fun back and forth too. But men don't like it. Men don't want challenges. Men don't want to always be going back and forth. Where do you want to eat? I don't know. Like, you know, just make a decision. So um, in learning what I'm learning and having um, YouTube is great. Just even being in the chat, you can learn a lot in the chat. So um, just getting that that support and (laughs) education from men um, has helped me improve my dates in life. Yeah. May I ask that question, Lee? Absolutely. So are these single girlfriends, are you uh, following the Kevin Samuels prescription? Have you cut them off? Most definitely. Well, I um, all of my friends are in um, Florida. So there's a reason why I'm currently oh, in Dallas. Oh, okay. So kind yeah, of like- so I, I kind of removed myself from um, the situation. Surround myself. As I said, my aunt, I know she's listening now. Mm. Um, my aunt in Jamaica. So Lee, Jamaicans are listening to your mm, channel yeah, in Jamaica. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm and my sister is married. I, I just surround myself with, even though it's few, because most of my friends are single and still blaming men for their relationship patterns. Um, so even though it's still it's a few people I can surround myself with, I did move out from that city. And you literally had to move and take your yeah, take away yourself, I, as we say, from that exactly because I'm not playing no games. I'm trying to get married. I'm not. Right. I'm not playing games. So yeah, wow. I'm glad you could share that experience. Thank you. That's awesome. That is awesome. Well, shout out to you, Chantel Simone. You have a YouTube channel? I do. It is my name, Chantel Simone. I'll be following as soon as I get off. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Perfect. Thank shout you. out to Chantel Simone. Chantel Simone. <laughs> if uh, one of the mods can uh, drop her, drop the, the link to her channel in the chat, that would be great. Thank you thank so you. much, Chantel, for coming thank up. Thank you for having me. Bye. No problem. Bye. All right, let's give some equal time to the bros here. Let's give some equal time to the bros. Let's pull up a man right here. We got Ma- uh, we got uh, Ola. How are you doing? We can't hear you. You're muted. Okay. You can you unmute yourself? Oh, you gotta unmute Ola. All right. Can you hear me now? 
There we yes. go. All right, so we sorry got about that. I, I muted no uh, the mic as well. Yeah. Excellent. We got the man of prestige over here. Excellent. So you yes. heard what Chantel said. You heard what Kevin Samuel said. What, uh, you know, Suzette and I, we were kind of going back and forth in the beginning. Other people came in. What's your opinion on all of this? Oh, man, I was going to ask you for your opinion, but I think it's your show. So I think I should give my opinion. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so my opinion is that the sign languages, you know, mm -hmm. um, I get it. The conversation is about talking. And where to are you ladies. from? I hear an accent as well. I'm Nigerian. I'm Nigerian. Nigerian. Um, Excellent. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm Nigerian. Um, so um, the, the thing is that the sign languages, you know, this, we see the sign languages as a negative thing. I don't think it's a negative thing. For those who don't know what you're talking about, what are the sign languages? Right. So look at how long we've been on for four hours. CLA has been on for uh, four hours to unpack this conversation. Our certain conversations when it comes to romance and relationship will take time. And a lot of time where we try to push the rhetoric of facts and all these kind of things down, we're just trying to get to the answer very fast. We're not patient, you know, and it's not just relationship, it's in life. It's something that high value men, uh, the true high value men actually understand. Sometimes it takes time to get to the core of the conversation, to get to what somebody is trying to say. I think across board, I think most ladies take their time and they will speak sign languages. It's just what it is. You just have to learn how to ask quality questions, TLA know what that is, to get to the bottom. And don't take an offense to that. You know, I understand we're supposed to be talking to the ladies, but I also wanted to make a point that uh, let's not be too quick to judge the sign language. Uh, a lot of time, like shout out to the- Wait, wait, when you say let's not be too quick to judge the sign language, what does that mean? So, um, so- When you say I'm, let's not be too quick, is sign language good or is it bad? Is it an acronym for something? It's neither, it's, it's neither. It, it's neither good nor bad is the point. There's the nature of, uh, of all of us. When we're talking, when we get caught up in our emotions, we don't necessarily say what we mean to say. What do you mean body I, language? No, sign language. I, I, maybe they can explain it in the chat. This is a, this is a, uh, this is a, Hold minus, on how this are is a you minus use, language. Wait, wait, how are you using the a term and you don't even know what it I'm means? I'm going to try it. Thank you. Thank you. That's a oh, good point. Come Thanks on, for, come on. Ola. Listen, I hold the women accountable. But yes. now you come up here and you're using phrases that you don't even know what they mean. Thank you. Hold me accountable <laughs> and I'm going to explain it. So when, when the gentleman says sign language or when Kevin Samuel says sign language, that means they're going around and around and they don't get to the point. Right. Okay. That's what it means. That means they're just saying, the, you know, different. They're not saying what they mean to say. So I don't think that's necessarily. Uh, did I did I explain that? Did that work? You explained it incorrectly, according to the chat. But OK. OK. I'm lost. Uh, you're lost. OK. So sign language in real life, <laughs> the, the literal, the literal meaning of sign language is something that, uh, you know, the deaf and the dumb speak. Right? <laughs> okay, okay, yeah. keep going, keep going. I gotta hear this. Right. All right. So, um, so now it's become more of a figure of speech, right? Okay. Uh, within the manosphere, it's a way to describe that she's not getting to the point. She's not speaking fact. She's speaking emotionally. It's just a figure of speech. Does that okay. help? Yeah, it helps. I got you. I got you. Okay. All right. So but when you could... say if she's not, I asked you mm -hmm. if you thought it was good or bad, and you said it was neither. But now neither. this def this definition, it sounds like it's a bad thing if women are not getting to the point. So good point. So it depends on who is uh, reading that. It depends on who is saying is it good or bad. For me personally, I'm speaking to you. I'm saying I don't think it's either good or bad. I think it's the nature of all of us to speak with our emotions when we get caught up in emotions. That's just what it is. When you start looking at, at uh, right or wrong, generally you will judge just because you're seeing that person as speaking wrong. Got you. <laughs> yeah. I'm not I respect you, but I don't know. I'm not yeah, no one really knows what you're talking that's about. That's okay. Listen, thank everybody, you. Everybody's tired. Everybody's tired. I get it. That's, that's fine. 
but no, I, I still wanted to speak to to the yeah. to, to yeah, the point. I won't use I won't use sign language. I promise. Okay, well, all right, <laughs> all right. what's the point? You, you so, kind of lowered your credibility a little bit. So, right, thank so you. I appreciate that. Build it back uh, up. What's the reason the, why the, I'll explain. The reason why I use sign language is because in the chat they've used it all day long. That's why I used it. Oh, okay, right? okay. Right. So, but basically, what I was trying to say is that sometimes to get to the bottom of a conversation, it takes time. That's the point I'm trying to make. We shouldn't be too much in a rush. After all, TLA is not in a rush because he's running these live streams crazy, running it down, right? We shouldn't be in a rush. The idea that we have to get to the fact, get to the fact. See, the double-edged sword of this conversation is that you're going to take this back to your relationship and try to hurry or try to okay. rush your lady to get to the point, and it's going to backfire. Uh, and, the, and the other side of this double-edged sword is that TLA is going to continue to have these watch hours and we're going to continue to benefit from it. I'm going to be here to continue to support him, right? But I'm just saying, be careful uh, when you say sign language, sign language. It's, we can't get to the point that quick. We have to be okay. patient, gentlemen. That's the point. And uh, so shout we out, can just shout take out our to time and, and kind of get to the point. That's you right. Take your time, young, young man. man. To get to the All point. Right. To <laughs> get to the out, point. <laughs> To uh -huh. get to the point, it's a function of time and patience. That's oh, just gotcha. life. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. All and, right. And and and, uh, and and I know you always do the shout out in the beginning. Uh, yes, I did want to be a part of the conversation, so I started Man of Prestige. I am not offering any solutions. I'm just having conversations over there. So shout out to you, TLA, for uh, always giving us the uh, always giving. And I, I'm going to pay my dues right now. To make sure that uh, you know, I pay my respect and support your your platform. Oh well, I appreciate so, that. Shout out to my man Ola. You see his name right here. Charlie X said, "Yeah, I was feeling what he was saying." Charlie, okay. we we gotta know what he was saying. So so shout out to Ola, man of prestige. Y'all go and follow him over there. And uh, one of the moderators could drop the link to his channel. Thank you so much, Ola. Really appreciate it, brother. Thank you, man. I appreciate you. Thanks for doing what you're doing, Suzette. Nice to meet you. A pleasure, Ola. No Thank problem. You. Thank you. Shout all out right. to all the Nigerians in the house. Shout out to all the Kenyans. Shout out to all the Kikuyu. comment. <laughs> Your Honor. This, oh, I'm sorry. See, this is why I can't just pull shit up and just leave it up like I do. I got to read everything. What did you say? Your Honor, this man. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah, we have this statement stricken from the record. Damien, it's a funny, it's a funny. I, I, Oh my I'm goodness. sorry, Ola. I did not mean to leave this. So I, I I clicked it, I put it up, and I started doing other things that I saw Susan laughing. But shout out to you, David. And to be fair to, to Damien, Ola was a little confused, right? But Charlie X said, listen, I know what Ola's trying to say. I know what he's trying to say. So shout out to Ola. Back to shout my Niger to, brother. <laughs> shout out hey. to David. Shout out to all the Nigerians. Somebody said, man, <laughs> the Nigerians <laughs> might have to hold something, right? They might have to hold something. <laughs> Uh, shout out to way, way too, way too rough. You are way too rough with that, uh, with that super chat. Thank you. We got a D'Angelo, D'Angelo Bell in the house. Thank you so much for becoming a member, D'Angelo. Really, really appreciate it. We got Elephant Room 19. Okay, we got somebody who says, wait, back up, Whoa. Lee. Let me break it down. Okay. The Nigerians are confused. <laughs> the Nigerian sector is confused about what the sign language is. Sign language elephant room 219 informs us is shame, insult, guilt, and the need to be right. All right, so we, we got the record straight. We got the record straight, all right? My man Damien said, let's strike that from the record, and elephant room is going to supplement the record with the, with the real meaning, all right? So shout out to you. Um... Okay, I'm gonna start reading them now. Shout out to heard but not seen. I can't really have your comment seen, but thank you so much. And then, uh, all right, I think I can pull this one up. What is um, Kashi? Am I reading that right? Kashi? What does Kashi say? The community is ablaze. Five alarm fire. We don't have time to create a peer reviewed research paper on firefighting. Let's put out this fire. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that's what we are uh, we're do. kind of doing here. Yes, we have a men and women coming together, calling each other out a little bit, but, you know, all focused on the same thing. We got the Godfather making appearances. He is active. 
You know, it's it would be so easy for him, guys. Listen for a second. I'm talking as a as a content creator. It would be so easy for him to say, listen, you know, you know, shout out to lead whatever he's doing. But, you know, he doesn't have half a million subscribers and I got a million myself. I got a million, two million, three. I can't be bothered going down there talking to these people, you know, the the, the lowly people. Right. Suzette's got a thousand. <laughs> Actually, I think Suzette's got one point five. Uh, yeah. You Suzette, listen, everybody Woo shout out to Suzette. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Growing. Yes. <laughs> Listen, you guys are supporting Suzette tremendously, right? So y'all are absolutely doing it up. And uh, it would be so easy for Kevin Samuels just to, oh, five, 1.51. All right. So Suzette, man, you are Thank getting you. hundreds and hundreds of subscribers. So many people are rocking with you. Thank you. Um, it would be so easy for Kevin Samuels to say, "Listen, I ain't got time to go down there and and talk to them. They're not worth it. My time is valuable. I'm doing consults with Harvard educated people. Like you know, let them do their thing." But no, Kevin Samuels is in these streets. He's in these trenches. Yep. Not only on his show, but blessing other shows as well. So big shout out to Kevin Samuels. And Kashi's exactly right that we are just trying to. Uh, we're we're all trying to fix this issue. It is an absolute huge issue and that's why you see you know people like kevin samuels people like suzette speaks we're all up here trying to get down to the bottom of it right shout out to raven la raven what did she say what if someone never had a boyfriend because they were forced to date traditionally and didn't learn to date into their mid-20s and early 30s yeah this is hardcore and um this kind of goes back to to what suzette speaks as well about being raised a certain way and a lot of people want to say, hey, we were raised this way. So that is what it is. Kevin Samuel says, stop the bullshit, man. Like, listen, it's not your fault that you were raised this way. But now it is your responsibility. That's what he said. So yeah. if you were raised a certain way and you no longer agree with that, Ray, you see flaws in that way. It is not your fault, but it's your responsibility to correct the errors that were implanted in you uh, as a child, right? So I think that's what Kevin Samuels would say. I think that's what a lot of people would say. It comes back to one word, accountability. Yes, are you gonna be accountable for your life at present? You can't really be accountable for what happened to you at two or four or what your mama told you when you were 12 years old. But today, right? This is, this is all you. You can't reach back and look at mama and blame her anymore. So shout out to Raven, la Raven, la reina. Ojalá que te encuentres super bien, Raven. All right, we got James Jones says, uh, if you want people to disrespect and insult you, go ahead. But I'm not accepting sign language. They will need to better articulate their argument. And I like this too. Let's hold these women to, to you know, what they say. Right. And I know Suzette is like, oh, you know, when I get home, I take off my lawyer hat. Listen, listen, we are all adults and we're going to speak. All right. And if you start speaking sloppily, expect people to kind of help you clean it up. And they'll be, oh, now we're going to parse the words. And no, oh, no, no. Oh, Just speak okay. precisely. <laughs> speak precisely so that we can get on the same page. So shout out to. Shout out to James Jones. I'm right there with you, James Jones. I want to hold. I want to hold these women and these men. And listen, the Nigerian. Shout out to Ola. He came up here. Did you? Did you? Did you see me give Ola a pass when it became clear to me with my half an ear that Ola didn't know what the fuck he was talking about? Then I was like, Hold up, Ola. Hold up. Now, are you saying that this is 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 not a negative thing? And then when he started tap dancing, did you just see me let him off the hook? No, I kept I kept my foot on the on the gas a little bit, right? So we're calling the men and the women out. We're calling the Jamaicans and the Nigerians out. Ah, all right, we we are we are being equal. Bumba clock. We're being equal across the board. All right, we're gonna be we're preaching accountability for what? both sides. All right, I pulled up some 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 comments that weren't great about about our Nigerian Ola. All cool. right, the whole the whole country had to take an L today. <laughs> all right, so we this all the women who are like, oh, Lee just beats up on women. No, I beat up on Nigerians too. All right, <laughs> all, the, all the people in the motherland. We're calling it fair. So uh, yes, we are. This is across the board. 
what does our man man of prestige say uh shout shout out tla if you elephant room where's the accountability sign language is used to describe going in circles not the shaving all right ola again wow. you're, you're, you're giving the nigerians a bad name wow. you're saying sign language is not you is is not the shaming when the s in the sign language i believe stands for the shaving and so uh, you know it doesn't sound like our man of prestige really wants to accept the accountability portion right you know sometimes we fight back when we shouldn't fight back <laughs> you know and this is this know. is true, you know. Uh, <laughs> some people double down. Some people absolutely double down on stuff. So we don't let the women do it. So we ought not let the men do it either. And Ola, you've been on my show. You've been on. You've been up here. I love when you come up here and shout out your channel. But you know, I can't let you slide. I can't let you slide either. If you're not really making a lot of sense. What does the U.S. law says? Can the court take judicial notice <laughs> of the fact that our Nigeria brother had no idea what he was talking about? He did it. He really did it, guys. And I want everybody in the chat to recognize that I called him out. Right? Don't don't tell me, you know, I'm calling Suzette out, but I'm letting the brothers pass. It's like nobody's passing. All right. Everybody needs to make sense. Words have meaning. And let's put them together in an accurate way. Look at Suzette. <laughs> Lord, I got you. I got you. I got you. Hey, no, Give it's not break. about catching. Listen, it's not about catching. Break, We're staying right here. And if you start to swerve off a little bit, I'm going to just push us right back. That's all. You know, you, you start. Fighting you in the Hellcat. I'm just, enjoying this ride. And you like, rah, rah. Well, we're going to do it. We're going to do it next week on your channel. All right. Yes. We're absolutely going to do it next week. I'm not letting Suzette slide, but damn, Nigeria. Don't don't represent the whole sector right back. Yeah, we can take judicial notice on that. We can absolutely do. Shout out to our man. What does Joseph say? Maybe, uh, man, he was so wrong. He needed three lefts to be right. He was a little bit out of there. He was a little bit out there. He doubled down. Oh, we got a, he got a $20 chat. $20 super chat. What does our man of prestige say? Okay, he's going to come with it now, guys. He's going to come with it. What's he say? He said, oh, <laughs> he tripled down. Why is he tripling down? These black pill kids are confused and they use sign language to dismiss conversations. I personally don't use it. With the black pill kids, listen, is it. I, you guys correct me if I'm wrong. I don't remember how the sign language started, but in my head, I have a I have it associated with Kevin Samuels. Did Kevin Samuels make it up? In my head, it's like this, right? No one can tell me, no one can convince me that Kevin Samuels is black pill. I have not seen every episode of Kevin Samuels, you know, fair enough. He's been on this, he's been on YouTube for years. But to call him black pill, I think is a further misunderstanding of what's going on right and suzette's like i don't even know what, what black pill mean for new yeah YouTubers. i don't know what that means don't even worry you know don't do not concern yourself with the black pill sector okay. because okay, there is you. it's a lot of yeah don't worry don't look over there <laughs> stay over here with the red pills <laughs> and the man of spirit don't look at the black <laughs> pill too much it's, it's a it's crazy over there but man of prestige is tripling down come on man come on uh what is way oh way too rough I shouldn't have pulled this up. I'm going to read it. Average men making average money want to be impressed and above, want to be impressed. Wait, okay, let me start off. All right, this is good. I'm sorry about it. I prejudged you from the last one. Average men making average money want to be impressed and above average man making above average money wants to leave an impression. Read that again. All right, shout it out. Above average men want to, want to leave an impression where average men want to be impressed. All right, I got you, I got you. And then we got uh, Anton, got, not the Anton, I got another Anton, Anton Shields. What does he say? The problem has been going on for 40 years plus. Our women know that they are doing towards men, wait, I'm sorry, our women know what they're doing towards men suffer little consequences am i reading that right guys after four hours these words start swimming our women know what they're doing what they are doing towards men suffer a little consequence the difference now is men are fed up and i've started to broaden their option <laughs> you're broadening the men's okay i think you mean 
you started to broaden your options or we started to broaden our options. Yes, absolutely. You guys are giving me puzzles up here, man. Uh, I, and I think you're totally right. And I think that Kevin Samuels did a did a poll, which got a lot of a lot of uh, attention saying, you know, a lot of black men are like, hey, man, you black women want to be single? Cool. 62% of y'all want to be single? Cool. You want to be 38 with your master's degrees and no kids? <clears throat> cool. Right. We're going over here. We're going to Brazil. We're going to Europe. I was surprised. I put Brazil. <laughs> the leader turned it. I played the game. I said, I know Brazil is going to be on top, and it wasn't. It absolutely wasn't. Guys, eu falo português também. I, I was teaching myself Portuguese, and then the whole damn COVID thing blew up, and I couldn't go, right? And, you know, their government started killing everybody. It was crazy the way they mishandled that. So I haven't been able to break out my uh, my Brazilian Portuguese, but hopefully pretty soon I can get over there. Shout out to... <laughs> Here we go again, man of prestige. What's he say? Is he going to apologize? Let's see what he says. Let's read it together. Are you ready? All right. What's he say? All right. You, Suzette, read it. What's he say? I don't even want to read it. What's he right. say? Holding you accountable. Now you are speaking sign language. I never called KS the goat black pill. Thanks for the sports. <laughs> okay. All right. I look. I think we got what you mean, man of prestige. Don't feel no offense. People are just joking with you, but they're just joking, man. Offense. Yeah, they're just joking. I they're think just you understand joking. what you meant by the by the um sign. So don't don't know. We're not saying that you are calling Kevin Black Pill either. Okay, we're good. Yeah, thank you. you that was really nice the way you did that, Susan. Shout out to Susan Speaks for smoothing out. You see when a woman comes in, a woman's <laughs> hand, a woman's touch, she, she can smooth it out. I like that. Shout out to Suzette Speaks. And every, even from the very first time she came up, everybody talked about Suzette's beautiful spirit, you know, her character. You can absolutely see it coming through. What does uh, Bohemia Mama say? Shout out to Bohemia Mama. Let me hit the, let me hit the, the sound. Said, hey, TLA and Suzette. Sorry, I'm two hours late. Was cooking and cleaning. Here we go. It's All the right setup. Now. It's All the right setup. Now. <laughs> so right. what did I miss? All I hear is references to Jamaicans <laughs> and the night. <laughs> Was that bad? I tried it. I don't know. And the Nigerians and what is Black Pill? What did I miss? Update me, please. Woo. Blessings to all. Hey, listen, this has been a full show. This has been a full show. Take it from the beginning, ma'am. Yeah, you got to go all the way back to the beginning. There's been too much. But I love the way you oh, little, sorry, I'm just getting in. I was cooking and cleaning. <laughs> shout out, shout out to all the black women who cook and clean, right? Not one or the other, but, the, you know. You know, it used to be a thing, what was it, like two years ago on the memes was like, get you a woman that can do both. Right, y'all remember that meme? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you have a woman dressed one way and the same woman dressed another way. Like, get you a woman that can do both. Bohemian mama, like, oh, sorry, guys, I was late. I was too busy cooking and cleaning, right? So shout out to Bohemian mama. <laughs> y'all ain't letting up. Y'all are not up. letting up all of Nigeria. <laughs> what does they say? What does Jaff say? Hola, not only did you not use sign language right, you were offensive by saying that sign language is used by deaf and dumb. Oh, did he say dumb? I didn't know he said that. I missed that. I think he, well, he might have said that. God damn. What is the correlation between the term sign language and the actual term? And who are the dumb you are referring to? Man, you guys are on it. Let me try to defend him a little bit. Let me say I'm Miss Dirty. All right, shout out to Ola. Let me represent the Nigerian sector. He did when he brought up the deaf and dumb, he did say that that's, that's kind of where sign language started, right? Now he wasn't talking about this Kevin Samuel sign language. He was talking about the actual, the actual sign language, right? There you go. That's exactly right. So he was talking about the sign language, and that was used with the deaf. Now, back in the day, they did call people dumb. Right. That, you know, back in the 30s, 40s, 50s, giving people lobotomies. Right. So I think that's what he would say. I'm going to try to defend that. I'm going to try to hold Nigeria up, even though I don't know if they deserve it. Because, Ola, you were like quadrupling down. Right? You couldn't really. 
You know, you were kind of quadrupling down on some stuff. And that's not what we want to do. You men do not allow women to double down and triple down. You women, you men want women to be accountable. Let's kind of do it ourselves, right? And that's what Jaff is saying. Jaff is like, hey man, Ola, I don't know if you're doing right. <laughs> right. So let's let's let you know, sometimes guys, it's okay to say we're wrong. It really is. It really, really is. Shout out to Jaff. Thank you so much, Jaff, for such a generous uh, super chat. Really appreciate it. I hope you don't mind me trying to help our brother out, man, because he needs it. He was digging himself a hole. All right. So thank you so much. <clears throat> what does Charlie say? Ola, we still rock with you. Okay, let's hold the Nigerians up. Where the damn Nigerians at? Said, this just a light roast. But why you got to use sign language now, though? Just have your points together next time. Shout out to Charlie X. Charlie X be a supportive leader, 30 Heart. What were you going to say, Suzette? No, I'm just li leave all alone. That's good. It's good. Leave it alone. <laughs> what is Joseph Pryor? Joseph Pryor, another one. Blessing. Thank you so much, Joseph Pryor. Says, actually, it was an acronym that he came up with a year ago, right before that I have a PhD. So, so Kevin oh, Samuels is the one. I, yeah, I always have it linked, but you never want to, you know, you never know who invents anything, right? So I'm kind of cautious with that. But I do say that, you know, in my head, sign language and Kevin Samuels, like it's a tight correlation there. So thank you so much, Joseph Pryor. And thank you so much for the $50 super chat. Really, really appreciate it. So so um so generous all right i'm gonna go back to doing oh sorry about that and i was i was just gonna say let me apologize i know i missed some super chat guys we had kevin samuels we had other people up i didn't want to interrupt so many people on this track the stream has been going really fast what is coast to coast balling podcast show can't miss that when i'll even hit it for you says you missed my 20 dollars super chat sorry about that i apologize uncle kevin uncle kevin Y'all calling him Unc now? Uncle Kevin Samuels came and set the record straight fire. Amazing live lead. We made progress coast to coast. Yes. Things, these, I, I really think, you know, what we're doing on these live streams is actually making progress. I do not want to have, you know, 10 people, 10 icons up and everybody screaming at each other. And it's an echo chamber. And I love some of the women, you know, Suzette says like, hey man, where are the women at? Women came up and women were like, no, I feel Suzette. So it's not just Suzette, guys. It's kind of a gender thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. We like, know it's not you. you. Kevin Samuels is on here like, so people like Suzette with her issue. <laughs> <laughs> no, but listen, listen, Suzette. I mean, I could tell you some things, Suzette. I might tell you off lot, but I've been on some dates with some women who are kind of in your category. And oh. some of the things that they say to me are outrageous. Oh. And they don't even mean it to be, but... And you do not seem this way at all, but I have talked to women who were so desperate. I mean, so, so desperate. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's it's amazing. So hopefully we can find solutions, right? We're, 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 and, and you do not seem that way at all. Your, your spirit absolutely looks beautiful. There are some women walking around, you know, Heavy. you look at their bank account and you would think they have all the reason in the world to be happy and they are not. Mm -mm. They are just not happy. Coast to Coast Balling Podcast Show Channel. If someone could drop the link, I'm so sorry that I missed your super uh, your twenty dollars super chat. I'm gonna go back, guys, to reading all the the twenty and above. This is the rule that we made because I got all these people in the back and I haven't gotten to them. So we're gonna I'm gonna shout everybody out. Shout out to uh, shout out to uh, Reckless Gaming. Really appreciate that. We got the practitioner, her practitioner, her beautiful. Uh, beautiful woman as well. What did she say? Sign language. He made a good point. Women often say things in the heat of the moment and with a ton of emotion. His point was, let's not be quick to discredit a woman. In the pursuit of love, it takes time. This is a reading of it. I didn't read it this way, but you know, if you say it this way, I'd have to go back and look at it, you know, but maybe you actually, maybe you absolute, I said, actually, I meant to say absolutely. Maybe you absolutely have a point, practitioner. So thank you so much. Another one standing up for Nigeria. Shout out to Nigeria. Thank you so much, uh, Willa, as well. Says respect. No, research the Kambachi River Collective. All right. Thank you so much. All right. And again, I'm going to go back to the, we're going to just a quick shout out. Shout out to Anton Shields. Shout out to She Stole My Thunder. Uh, shout out to Chad. 
again, if I don't, everybody wants me to do read the twenty dollar ones and above, right? Because if I don't, we will be here all day. Shout out to uh, Peoples. What does People Hernandez say? Samuels didn't come up with sign. He credits it to B G S. Uh, I don't know how you say it. I don't either. But thank you so much, people. Really appreciate uh, you correcting me on that. You see how I did that? Uh, see how I did that, Ola? I said, oh, I made a mistake. <laughs> I'm sorry. Thank you for <laughs> correcting me. It just came off the top. So thank you so much, people. We could do it. We could absolutely do it. So thank you so much. All right. Um, Jesus Christ. Okay, here's what I'm going to do, guys. And I think I said this already. I was going to keep it going, but... It, uh, the nigga getting tired, to be honest. We, we're going to have everybody come up. We might enter into it. We're going to do a three minute. Um, we're going to do a three minute. Uh, what do you call it? A three minute uh, express round. All right. We can't have everybody up for 10 minutes. We'd be here another four hours. Big shout out to our man. One for the money check mates. One for the money check mate. Does anybody play chess in this mug? Right. If anybody plays chess, we should. Are there any chess players? We should do a whole channel just for the chess players and, and like get get a little group of chess players. I was the uh, chess club president, chess club president at uh, Georgia at UGA. So when I see something like chess mate, you got my uh, attention. All right. Who do we have? Do you remember if we, oh, we had Ola up, right? We had Ola up. So we'll bring up a woman this time. Uh, let's bring up the one and only Melissa Jane live. Woo! We're bringing up Melissa Jane live. How are you doing? Yes. Uh, I might have you muted. I'm sorry. Uh, it's me. It says, it's me. It's me. Oh, okay. Can Perfect. How are you doing, Melissa Jane? I am doing great. Can you hear me all right? Yes, yes. hear you perfectly. Yes. Listen, you. I, Melissa, tell us about your YouTube channel. I know you in the technology because I hear your Discord beeping and everything. So you're on it. Tell us real quick about your YouTube channel. And then right. I want to hear what you have to say about this. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, my, my YouTube channel is my name, Melissa Jane. Mm -hmm. And I, I give information about technology, um, specifically social media at the moment. We're doing a series on uh, Instagram, Facebook, and uh, and some techni techni technical things about YouTube as well. And even Discord. <laughs> right, and even Discord. Excellent. Now, I hear you have an accent too, man. We are Listen, TLA is international on this mug, right? The diaspora Absolutely. in the building. Yeah, the diaspora. That's true. Where Where are you located, uh, Melissa Jane? I am in South Florida. Big up, Suzette. Suzette speaks. Yay! South Florida. She's right there. Where are you from originally? What's the originally accent due to? From England. England. Excellent. 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 I knew that, of course, but I just want to I just want to get it out there. Now, let me give me I'm going to ask you how you feel about this. You've heard me and Suzette kind of go back and forth. You've heard other people come up. You heard the Godfather come up. You heard the Nigerian Ola come up. I want to hear what you have, to, what, what you think about all this. Let me give a big shout out real quick to Jamie St. Patrick said, Kevin Samuels be pulling up like Debo. <laughs> in these streets right i'm a hide wow. mine right i'm a hide my chain right <laughs> when when he's on wait when when he was on suzette wait am i reading the right he's when, trying he's speaking uh african-american vernacular in english okay when he was on suzette be be quiet no, when he's on suzette be quiet Okay, I'm sorry, guys. Listen, I, some of y'all are new. What I've told you is after four hours, I can't read anymore. I don't have my glasses on because of the light. So from zero to four hours, I can read. After four hours, I can't read. I will say it would help me if y'all motherfuckers would use a comma, right? If you could just put a comma. When he's on, comma, Suzette, be quiet. But when he leave, comma, she be back talking again, right? So help, help me out. Put a damn comma. All right. So I respect him, James St. Patrick. That's why. I may not agree with everything, but I'm learning and I respect him. That's why I show that. I show uh, that shout way. out to us. Uh, shout out to Jamie St. Patrick. Really appreciate it. Always hitting your brother up. Always supporting the stream. Thank you so much, Jamie. And you're right. And uh, listen, and uh, I, I show Kevin, I, I show Kevin Samuels the same deference. This man is a made man, yeah. the oh. Godfather for a reason. So when the Godfather step in, we all yes. just gonna. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna learn right we are all gonna learn what is james earl moan says shame insult guilt and the need Fine. to be right that's sign language 
everybody's trying to correct the Nigerians. <laughs> Smoke, yeah, that's exactly right. All right, so um, uh, Melissa, so what do you think about all of this? You know, what's your impression? Now you were you spent some time in England, but now you're in South Florida with Suzette, so you kind of see the yeah. landscape. And just, you know, as background, are you married or are you in a relationship? Kind of what's your situation? Actually, I, I am married. And I just want to touch on about, about three different things because I've watched all of the, the streams okay. where you guys have been back and forth. And you, you got to have more. You got to have more because I know that there's a lot more people that have something to say, especially today. Because yes. you, you said you want to hear from the women. I'm about to come on at uh, eight o'clock. Eight, eight o'clock is typically my time. So if you haven't been, if you haven't finished by then, <laughs> oh, we're, no, we're we're wrapping up. Hopefully by be, eight, we're going to be talking uh, over there on my channel. Anyway, so the first thing was, um, Suzette, we grew up in the same type of uh, family dynamic, right? So I totally understand about your parents want you to focus on your education. No matter, we no man, right? No. All right, yes. let's not worry about men right now, so, little attorney. <laughs> <Right. laughs> exactly. Same for you, right? So you know, but 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 of course we can't we can't let that hold us back now. Now now we know we gotta we gotta change that. So I got married late in life, right? I only, I've only been married for seven years. Um, so I I kind of feel like where, where you're coming from, you're thinking, okay. Uh, wh where are these guys, right? You can't necessarily seem to find one right now. I f I felt the same way in the same way in my in my twenties, my thirties. I'm not going to tell you exactly how old I am, but listen, I I'm I'm later on in life here. But um, so the the question about do are you going to settle, or are you going to settle, or are you going to change your list? Yes, indeed. You know when you rolled out that long list of things that you wanted initially. I was the same way. In my 20s, I had a very long list. And you kind of have to make some adjustments, okay? Well, and let, let, wait, no, let's, let's call this out. Let's call this out okay. and let's be clear because a lot okay. of times there are euphemisms and people want to use nice language. But let me just ask you straight up. Yeah. You say you have a long list when you're young yes. and as you get older, it's shorter and shorter. Yes. Is that settling? Settling? Oh, did you, say, yeah, did you hear it? He's like, oh! Did you, did you did you hear the pause, guys? Like they don't want it. They just do not want to acknowledge it. All right, but what do you say? What do you say? I'm gonna tell you, little turn. Okay, okay. Because to, 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 in my in my uh, opinion, to some degree, I would say yes. I settled to some degree, but I was but that's what I decided to do because I wanted to have a husband. Listen, yes. man, you got to just put some of those things. You got to just check off some of those things. And, and and to be honest with you, to be fair, some of those things don't even become important anymore, Suzette. Right. Some of those things you're going to realize, this isn't really that important. Some things are not going to change. Some things are going to be a no, uh, you know, no deal breaker. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just look at your list a little bit and just maybe just make some little tweaks to it. Yeah, but in defense, in defense of Suzette, she's crossed off attractiveness. All right, there's not much left. <laughs> There's not much oh, left. Like, hey, when a woman see. crosses off a track, I salute Suzette. That of it. Like, if she. You gotta have a little sum now. Come on now. <laughs> you know, but it's not the prime thing. No, I'm just teasing you, Suzette. Yeah. But you a real one. When a when a woman crosses off a track to this, I'm like, okay, she tried to get it. She tried to get it. <laughs> two, other, two other short short points. Okay. Um, when, you, when you spoke about um, uh, um, do you um, do you approach uh, do you approach man you know to to, to meet um there's a there's a way to do so without it being like blatant you know because no no woman no woman of dignity wants to just go up to a man and say you know would you like here's my number would you like to date me or whatever so you know there's, there's ways to do it. in a grocery store store you may ask him for his opinion on something in a in some other place you might just ask him for the time you might strike up this conversation somehow just to see how it goes and then you take oh, it from we there. got game oh, we done bumped into a couple people right. hey well, oh, excuse me i'm That's sorry saying, excuse me. Right? Yeah, we, do, we do what we gotta do <laughs> Do we yeah. gotta do? So, I heard so that. We, we just do it with style and class. That's that's how I, that's what I would say about that. And the final, the final point I wanted to make is about the Godfather, Kevin Samuels. Salute yes. to him. Yes, yeah. Um, shout out to Kevin Samuels. You know what? At first, you, you we we think that he's the boogeyman, right? Because we've heard many of us have heard many of his streams. I've heard many of his streams, and I would say to myself, I would never 
call into that show. Why would I? I mean, first of all, I don't even meet the criteria of, of the women that typically call in. But a lot of women are calling in knowing that they're going to get they're going to get what, what they're going to get asked. They're going to get roast. <laughs> if you don't want if you don't want someone to ask you about your height and your weight, do not call it to Kevin Samuels. That's the exactly. first thing that is going to ask you. All right. Um, but today, uh, I, I really kind of saw him in a different light today. Mm -hmm. um, so, the last, last two streams, not to interrupt, but the last, the last two. two, the last two. It absolutely. was a different side. I agree. Absolutely. The two streams that he gave, especially today's one, um, he spoke about things that we that we as women, let's just say I was still single. I would say immediately after hearing today, today's stream, I would say, you know what? I got to check myself, man. I got to, I got to mm. really look back. I've got to make some adjustments. And if I do want a husband, I got to make some adjustments. The reality is I'm just going to have to. So th th those are really my, my, my takeaways. Um, Kevin Samuels is, is, is the godfather. He's got a, no a lot of uh, knowledge. Uh, I'm not as afraid of him now as I, as I was. And, I, yes. and I, Suzette, you've kind of softened up a little bit towards. My blood pressure was still high though. My blood pressure was up, but you know, <laughs> of course. it was of better course. than the first time. Thank y'all. Thank you. It was the first time. Thank so, you. So yeah, you know. But what I what I will say to you, Suzette, I, I I have I have high hopes for you because I think that you're a kind of person that's going to take uh, take notes, and I can see within in within the right environment, mm -hmm. and it may even mean that you don't you do leave South Florida. I mean, I actually left from England yes. <laughs> to, yes. to to New York, then South Florida. But it wasn't necessarily to 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 meet a man. It was for my career. But in the in the process of that, and just being open and 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 and, and out there, uh, yeah. I did meet my husband. So I, I'm wishing you all the best, my sister. Thank you know, you. We're, we're in the same community, in the same media world. So much yes, leader, lead attorney, you are something else, man. You are so you are so on it with the communications. I'm learning so much from you regarding communications and listening. <laughs> Listening, you, Listening. You, 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 everything. I'm, I'm actually curious to know what you're going to say about what I'm just. <laughs> no, listen and listen. You know, and guys in the back, I know that I said I was going to limit it to three minutes, and I know she went longer. And I just be honest, I played favorites. All right, <laughs> Melissa Jane has a special place Thank in my God. heart. Do Yay. not come up here and say you gave Melissa Jane more than three minutes because I am well aware of just playing favorites. I love Melissa Jane. I love her content. We absolutely Congrats. need her in this sector. We don't have anybody to kind of help us out with the technology stuff like she does in the way that she can do it. So shout out to Melissa Jade. I let her talk her three points. Thanks, Guys, Melissa. when you come up, you will not get three points. You will only get one point. But I did, I did, I did play favorites with that. So thank you so much, Melissa Jade. Absolutely. Really, really appreciate it. Also, Melissa Jane is part of my Patreon, super active <laughs> member. She's always contributing, always learning. So it's not like I'm just you know, up here sent before. I do love her. She's beautiful, but she supports me too. So I absolutely, uh, absolutely played favorites with cash up as well. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thank you so much. Yes. Thank you so much, Melissa J. You see, Melissa, man, Melissa J knows how to take care of a black man. All right. So shout out to Melissa J. I uh, really, really appreciate it. If one of the moderators could please drop her, uh, Please drop her. Um... I'm going live as soon as you finish. I'm going live. Okay, live everybody, live. go over here because oh. hopefully we're gonna we're gonna be out uh, by eight o'clock. By eight yeah, o'clock, we stop. Give me about thirty so. minutes, and then I'm gonna go live after we're finished here. So y'all can come over to my channel after. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so much. Hi and, guys. Uh, I do want to. Uh, right, thank you so much, Melissa James. Thank you. Thanks for bringing those super chats, fam. Hank Tyrone is exactly right. Really, really want to appreciate all of you guys. We're still going on. A big shout out again to uh, Melissa J. Humongous shout out to my man, second in command, the Steel Curtain. Says, man, I had a two and a half hour meeting. Y'all still going back. Shout out to uh, Steel Curtain with the uh, with the super chat. Shout out to my number one in command, Gail Lockett, for letting me know what's going on in the in the chat. Shout out to Maurice, Maurice November. Really appreciate it. And uh, Gail again, and uh, uh, the Steel Curtain again, really appreciate it. And uh, so thank you, everybody. Really, really appreciate it. All right, we're going. Listen, I know I played favorites. It is what it is, but we got we got to be out of here, guys. I'm, I'm tired, <laughs> to be honest. And um, our, our girl, uh, Suzette Speaks, is starting a, a chat uh, as well. She's starting a live stream right after this. Uh, please don't tell me I missed this. Let me get my man. I, I said it's a man. I might not. SM, thank you so much, SM. Really, man, y'all be holding the lead up. 
I'm telling you, guys, listen, I, I told you someone sent me a video, my own video of seven months ago. I was so happy, guys. I was so happy in that video. It's seven months, it's still on my channel. And I brought up this subscriber count that I had, and I had 3,000 subscribers. And I was so happy because I had crossed the 3,000 mark and I was still going because I wanted to quit. I absolutely wanted to quit. YouTube is YouTube is tough, especially when you're making every mistake in the book. And I was making them. Uh, and Suzette, Jesus Christ, Suzette, you have 1.56 uh, subscribers. So you guys are really supporting her. Thank you so much. So she's over half of where I was when I was I was about to quit, man. So to 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 think in seven months to, to that you guys appreciate the content so much that y'all are holding me up like this, I'm speechless. I'm absolutely speechless. So I really, really, really want to thank you. And um, so to, thank you, SM. Thank you to everybody. Just like just like Hank Tyrone said, thank you guys so much for holding me up. All right, uh, who do we have on? We had a woman, right? So now let's get a man. Let's get a man on here. Let's get uh, our man Gaston's world. Yo, what up, what up, what world. How are you doing? <laughs> What's going on, lead attorney? Man, What's trying to be like you. You got a you got a YouTube channel yourself, right? I absolutely do, and we're gonna get active over there. It's time to stop playing on these YouTube streets and get this thing rolling, man. We ain't gonna get no fixing in the community any other way. So yeah, I definitely do. Uh, man, so follow awesome. me at Gaston's world. Hey, we talking, we having them talks. Perfect. Um, so one quick question, um, yes. you know, I shorten it up. Uh, if you put in the same amount of work or wait, do you have the energy to put in the same amount of work that you did in your profession um, into a relationship now? And um, how willing are you to do that? Do you have the will and the energy to do that? I left a fast pace um, legal environment switch completely the area of law I've been practicing in for this reason. I did not have a life before. And I noticed that like, again, once you know better, you do better. So right. absolutely for the last, I would say since probably 19, 20, 2019, maybe a little 18, but mostly full fledged 2019. I'm like, this is for the birds. They lied to us Go on and work hard and pay your own bills. They lied. <laughs> right? So, no, I can't. I want to send my degree back. They won't take it back, y'all. That's what I'm right. trying to say, y'all. I got the degree now, and it's like, again, one so thing that bar car is thick, huh? So, yeah, listen, <laughs> I got to pay the bills because I made more bills. You got, you don't want to make, you don't want to make too much money, but you got to make more money. Like, y'all, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. So, I definitely have already made that change. I'm a lot more flexible than people I think assume. So, I, I, I mean, I'm willing. Oh, I'm to sorry, real quick. My question was, do you have the energy to put? into a relationship or the will to do that for a relationship now why not yeah that's what it's about yeah 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 that's what that's what men need to know is that yeah. you know these women aren't just no confusing. you're not a side burner back burner cross burner i don't know you're not none of that y'all heard that come out side <laughs> burner, yeah, back burner. i love that accent i need to it's spend six if you talk to me Jamaica. for real for real after a couple of guinness it's gonna be a different it's gonna be a cold it's gonna be a cold heavy. switch <laughs> That's what's up. Maybe it's I gonna be a code switch. Y'all get into very, very genteel uh, colleague speak. You know how we do. As, That's as, what's as folks. up. But I'll yeah, take you to Pogo then and give you a couple oh, of those yeah. Guinness. Please, I, I love top, the accents. Top golf. <laughs> <laughs> top golf. That's exactly right. There you then go. I'll embarrass myself, <laughs> right? <laughs> hey, top golf. All right. Thank you so much. Shout out to hey, Gas's World. Thank happy you. Happy to be here, man. Thanks for having me on, Lee. Congratulations, Suzette. Keep on rocking. Don't keep that momentum rolling. All right. Thank you, That's what's everything. up. Shout out to Gaston's World. Y'all go check him out. If one of the mods can please drop the link to his chat in the channel. We got our man Joseph Pryor. What does Joseph Pryor say? Ad hominem. It's an adjective of an argument or reaction directed against a person rather than the, the position that they are maintaining. Since there was no personal attack, the there was no ad hominem. All right. All right. Thank you so much, Joseph. Right, really, y'all breaking really out the dictionary. Appreciate Thank it. you. Yeah, we get real. What does Ebony say? Love you, TLA and Suzette. Absolutely. Thanks, Ebony. All right, so we had a woman's, no, we had a man, Gaston's world. So let's bring up, Let's bring up Tasha Q, not Tasha K, <laughs> right? What is it? What's yeah, Tasha so K? Shout out. <laughs> you was like, is that? Is that? What? I was like, what? <laughs> Shout out to Tasha Q, not Tasha K, Tasha Q. We see oh, her right man. there. Tasha, can you hear me? 
Tasha, I might have you muted. Let me see if I can uh, unmute you. All right, it says you got you got to unmute yourself, Tasha. All right, Tasha. Tasha. Love you muted. You got to unmute, babe. She might be gone. She's waiting around. Going once, going twice. Tasha, you. All yeah. right, we tried, Tasha. We tried. We tried. We tried. All right, we are moving on. Do we got any other woman to take her place? We got Tara, Tara Jones Williams. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Doing fantastic. Thank you so much for being so hey, patient and, and coming up. Do you oh, have no a Do you have a YouTube channel, Tara? I do. Yes, but I'm starting back creating content. It's my name. I have two. One for my personal, where I talk about relationships and my dating life and how my husband and I got together. And then I have another one that's about finances. It's called Your Pretty Pennies. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. All right. So I'm not sure how long you've been around, what you've heard. You know, we had the Godfather show up and, you know, me and uh, uh, I keep on Tasha K is in my head. <laughs> me and Suzette, you know, we had a nice uh, back and forth. And then Suzette was awesome enough to to do some Q&A. A lot of uh, a lot of followers, a lot of subscribers, a lot of people wanted to know kind of how she felt about stuff. So she she was super honest and, and open about that. And then we had other people come up. We had Nigeria in the house, you know. What do you what do you feel about all this? Kind of what's your take so, on Well, here's my two takes. And so just a little preference. I am a wife now. So my husband and I met when I was 29. We were married, we got married um a couple of days after my 30th birthday. Nice. Um, he brought two kids into the marriage. I brought one. They're mm -hmm. all a bit older, so they're older kids. And um I just hear a lot when i heard the conversations on here but also in other areas i see a lot of women approaching dating with the idea of well what if it goes wrong what if something happens what if it falls through but they don't go into that mindset into college they don't think about that when it comes to any other thing that they're striving for in life they don't think about the the worst case scenario right and so i really think as women are getting out here dating um they should expect the best from men right i was a single mother going into my marriage i could have at 29 years old said you know what there's no great guys out here because of what my child me and my child's father went through i could just throw in the towel i'm going to focus on my career which don't get me wrong i am a financial success coach i have my own business right i was self-made before my husband but also now that i'm married and going into dating him i looked at him like i want a husband I want a leader, a provider, a protector. I want a father for my stepdaughter and I want to be a mother to his children, right? And so I thought I just expected the best. I expected the best at all times. And so it's interesting how some women can speak manifestation, manifestation, but yet they're speaking and expecting the worst. Mm. So I don't care what you write down in that little book. If what you believe is that men are going to fail men are going to leave you men are dogs men aren't committing whatever it is that you're saying that's what you're going to attract and you're going to see in your life nice nice I mean, guys imagine if i would have said that imagine if i would have said oh i don't care what you write down in your little book did you hear the little <laughs> that was a little shady baby that was a little shady well, see little women shady. can come at women but if a dude does oh, little shady. Dirty. Later, we have to, because sometimes yeah. as Black women in today's age, again, I'm only 32 now, mm -hmm. we need to have that wake-up call and kind of get that grit going because we don't understand any other way. We yes. do not understand any other way. Some of us are hard-headed, and I was once there. Ooh, but the listen, she's, she's letting Damn. them know. Damn. She's letting Damn. them but know. I, you know, the Damn. thing is, my mother, she's very masculine. She's very, like, I'm head of household, and she's proud of it. She's not going to hold you up. But I was also raised by my grandmother and spent a lot of time under my grandmother, who was a single mother, who raised six children, who had a husband. My grandfather, may he rest in peace, was an amazing man, right? My dad was an amazing man. And so I see both ways that men do have their downfalls. Men do have their shortcomings. But I value men as a whole way more than to sit here and pick them apart for their small shortcomings because we have shortcomings as well. And right. I wouldn't want men to throw us away. All right. Listen, y'all heard it here first. Like y'all heard, heard it here first. Tara Jones Williams, please go check her out. Everybody yes. in the chat is feeling. 
Can oh, I say that? All right, Tom. Okay, I know, TLA. I hope you get a great night's sleep tonight because I love you out here working. Listen, everybody's supporting you. So I'm, 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 I'm going to give you an extra bit. Okay, everybody's loving thing what you're saying. I want to say to the woman who was like, well, I got a degree because I want to support my husband. Yes. Being two years into the game on this side, again, I'm no marriage guru. I can help you get the ring. But, you know, I'm still working through that whole marriage thing. And I have mentors and women that are before me that's 30, 40 years in the game for marriage, right? Um, but when I think about my husband, so he is a provider, meaning that even though I have money coming in from my business, he takes care of all the bills, right? All the major bills he takes care of. If something was to happen, which, you know, there's been times where he needed my help or something, his, my role to him is not to help him financially, is not to help him problem solve. My role that he wants me here is for softness, is for motivation, is to rub his back, right? Is mm. to say, you got this, go at it tomorrow. You can meet that goal next month because he's in sales at a, you know, an RV dealership, you'll get it next month. He doesn't want me to say, you know what, sit down on the couch and let me pick up the pants and I'll go get a job in the marketplace. That's not what he wants for me. He wants me to make sure the kids are good, help him make sure they learn the Bible, make sure that they smell good and that they bathe when he come home, make sure that dinner's mm -hmm. ready. Whether if we ordering it or whether if I'm cooking it, he don't care, M right? More shade. Did you say you have a degree too? Does he yeah, oh yeah, I have a degree in finance educated, and biology. Oh, oh yeah. Wonder. Okay. Just mm -hmm. asking because I'm trying to think of his mindset and now your mindset. Okay. Just yeah, asking. Yeah, he has a business degree. Okay, and so, cool. but he was raised by two parents. Both of us were made, raised by two parents where um, for him, his dad was always a breadwoman. His mom is, is a teacher. She always worked, but that was a bonus. It was never like you have to. And the men in his family are like, it It comes, the, the mantle for providing for the family is on me. I don't need you to provide for me. Even if I do get into a rut, encourage me to get back out there. Don't try to be the man for me. Mm. Mm. The only time this doesn't, go ahead. I was going to say, if a man gets sick, you're out of luck. Not saying you, but yeah. I'm just saying in general. That's the only time I've seen that not work as beautifully as it, you put it. And I agree with Which it. they should have FMLA as a financial background. Yes, we should have yes. FMLA. We should have short-term disability. Absolutely. We should have long-term disability from his side to where you're still getting provided for. And even the woman said, well, what if he dies? What do I do? That's called insurance that you will have. You'll have life insurance to where you have enough to where in the next three to five years, you have enough money in your bank that the life insurance company will cut you until you get remarried and be an amazing wife to another man. Spin mm. that financial mm. game. I love you it. You know what I'm saying? See how that goes? See how that goes. In there. I see you slid in that good. Shout <laughs> out. I was going to be like, man, you need your own YouTube channel. Like, you got one, right? I got so one. I need to stop playing. My husband, speaking of my husband. His, okay, no, 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 no. Right, come on now. Come on. All right. I'll okay. give you a little. You already got some <laughs> extra minutes. But go ahead and shout out your, go ahead and shout out your channel. Okay, my husband's channel, because I really want to shout him out, is okay, Derek Williamson. Shout, He's shout awesome. out to Derek. Shout out to Derek. And then my channel is Your Pretty Pennies. And I'm going to be back creating content on my personal channel, which is Tara Jones Williamson, and also my, my financial channel, which is Your Pretty Pennies. Awesome. Well, everybody in the chat loved you. Let me just pull your name up. Tara Jones Williamson. Y'all see it right here. Hey. Shout out to Tara. Thank you so much Thank for coming in so and dropping much. knowledge. And and really providing a perspective that we haven't uh, we haven't yeah, had on the stream. Yeah, yeah. so thank, thank you, thank you, thank you. And great, great show tonight, Suzette. Good luck. Thanks, thank you. Bye. What about TLA? Sure. Oh, and TLA, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Men are invisible in this nation, boy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got, got two men. Let's pull our man, Tra Trayvon. Shout out to Trayvon. How are you doing? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Trayvon, how are you? Before I give my opinion, yes. I need to hold you accountable. Okay. I see you up here with the white people's stats. But I remember four weeks ago, I came up here with stats. And remember what you told me? What did I tell you? Remember what, uh, what you, you said? You don't believe in these stats. These stats doesn't sound right. But then you could go Get time stats to <laughs> made up by white people. Oh, oh. So what's, what's the deal? He said, Lee, you went to the white people's stats. 
All right, I'm not sure what stats you were talking about. Ooh. Like, Trayvon, you were so, I mean, you, you with the numbers and all that, so I'm not really sure what stats you were talking about, but I hear you. And I'm glad to see you. I'm glad you're back. I haven't, I haven't heard from you in a long time, so I'm glad you're doing well. Stats. Yeah, it's like you with the white people stats. Shout out to Trayvon. So, yeah, what do you think about all this, Trayvon? You got, you got the Godfather coming in. We got Suzette, you know, pouring out her heart. We got... Uh, Tara coming in, telling these women how to get in shape, you know, get that get that man. What do you think about all this? I think the problem is that black people are still living like it's in 1980s. Mm-hmm. What I mean by that, you have women, right? They're not using their power that they got. They can have any man that they want. They can ask any man to marry them. They just have to go and do it. Mm. Stop waiting around because it's 2021. You got the power. And guys need to accept that women have these the power. You know, we need to accept that it's not 1980 no more. Wait, okay, okay, okay. Hold on, hold on. Wait, let me just did I hear it right when you said that guys need to accept that women have the power? Yeah, yeah. Well, what, 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 what I mean by that? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, hold on. Hold your brakes, young man. Hold your brakes. All right, all right, all right. Okay. Well, what we got going on, Trayvon? How is it? Why do guys need to accept that women have the what power? I mean, what I mean by that, if girls have college degree. Don't be intimidated. Just go and ask her out. Okay? okay? That's what okay. I mean. I mean All right. Okay. I mean, yeah, so if a girl has a college degree, don't be intimidated by the woman's status. Go ahead and, and ask her yeah, out. Yeah, because sometimes you have to apply for jobs that you're not qualified for. Okay? <laughs> so. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Trayvon, you know, this Trayvon, where did this Trayvon come from? Sometimes you gotta apply. Sometimes you gotta apply for jobs you don't qualify yeah. for. Exactly. Jesus, <laughs> Jesus hey, hey. Christ! And well, let me ask you, Trayvon, how does it usually work out when you apply for a job that you don't you don't qualify for? How does that usually work out for you? It it depends who the connection you make. Because remember, jobs is about connections, not qualifying. Let's say I apply for a job and do it as a mathematician and I don't qualify for it because I'm a lawyer. I can't do math, Trayvon. So if I apply for that job and somehow someone was drunk and they gave it to me by mistake, how do you think that would function? Hey, and sometimes that happens a lot, okay? Especially in the tech world. Okay, so how does it how does it work out usually? I probably get fired, right? No, not exactly. They just gonna leave me in a job that I'm not qualified to do. Hey, hey, if, if you kiss enough butt, you will keep that. Job. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So that's that's the key to maintaining a relationship with a woman that I don't qualify for. Kiss her butt. I should just kiss her butt every day, no, Trayvon. No. Hopefully, she kiss me no. around. Trayvon, listen, everybody no. was rocking with you. We hadn't seen you in so long, and you come back with this <laughs> bullshit, Trayvon. Like, oh, like, what the hell? Well, are, you, are you being kidnapped, Trayvon? <laughs> hey, hey, are you? Hey. <laughs> well, just kiss her butt, lead attorney, and she'll keep you around. <laughs> the hell's not, going on, Trayvon? That's not what. That's not what I'm saying, Greed. You know that. You, you said kiss her butt. Away. I'm just teasing, but you wilding out, Trayvon, a little bit. Hey, your analogy hey. kept getting worse and worse. No, no, it's not. You just twisting my words, but. She knows what I'm talking about. She actually knows what I'm talking about. Oh, but, now you're on her side. No, he gonna rephrase. Counselor, may I rephrase? All can, right, can let's, let's go back. Okay. Rephrase. No, but but Kevin Samuels also was right about about some of the stuff about women need to you know put on their boots and go out there, you know. And men needs to do the same thing, and we need to stop fighting each other and just go out, you know. And what the best person wins, that's off. All I right, hate, Trayvon, we hear you. I'm just messing with you, Trayvon. You know we love you, but you you started to say some bullshit to be honest. But you know we love you. You know we love you. 
Okay. So shout out to Trayvon. And don't be a stranger, man. I haven't seen you in, in weeks. Hey, remember, remember, I'm from Boston. So this is the Boston Whipple and me talking. Remember. Okay. And where are you from originally, right? Because you have an accent. Where is it? Is it is it Africa? Is it the motherland or where? No, no. But I was. Boston. Mm -hmm. You're no, from Boston? I, mm -hmm. Actually, gotcha. I went down south, but I was born, you know. In Boston. Okay, so, gotcha. Thank shout you. out, shout out to Trayvon. Listen, you've been gone too long because now you know you come back and no one knows you. You start talking about apply for jobs that you don't qualify for, and then to stay in the job, start let, kissing butt. Let Trayvon butt. have his opinion, TLA. Hey, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Listen, you know when Suzette is rooting for you, you might be on the wrong team, right? <laughs> but listen, shout out, shout out to you, Trayvon. Thank you so much for coming up, bro. We really miss you. Okay. We really miss you. Okay. We haven't seen Bye, you in a Trayvon. while. All right, shout out to Trayvon. Trayvon on some other stuff, boy. Who what the hell happened to Trayvon? Trayvon said, bring your application. <laughs> <laughs> if she even if you <laughs> if she got a college degree, don't be scared. <laughs> the hell. <laughs> shout out to Trayvon, Aww. boy. All right, we got two more people here. We got uh our man E P no E B H. Y'all see him. Wait, let me Everybody fix hates me black. Everybody hates black. How are you doing? Hi. What's good? What's good? Good, Man, good, good, good. How are you doing? The, I'm good. I'm good, bro. I always catch the long stream and got to give y'all the paralegal elevator speech now. Okay. We love it. Now, you got a YouTube channel, right? What's your YouTube channel about? Yeah, it's the EBH Black Show with Powerball Rich. It's Everybody Hates Black. I'm Black. And, you know, it's a double entendre, but, you know, but mm -hmm. it, you had a good stream. Good, good stream. I got a couple points. No, I'm going to have one point, and I got one great question for you, uh, Suzette. Okay. And so I'm going to just try to make this simple. Um, a lot of the content creators that came on pre previously hit a lot of my points, including Kevin Samuels, and that shows that we're having growth. Um, basically, men just want to compliment. We want you to compliment. You can have your degrees. You can have um, all those things, but don't use that as leverage against men because when you use it as leverage, then it becomes a competition. And so, like, like you were saying, Sue, that like women are um, prioritizing, like the uh, your counterparts are prioritizing having a man, and so they they made that a priority. Women now, our women make the bag a priority. So now, how do we make that? What's the solution? The solution is, like you said, the go getters versus the manifestation. I'm just going to use an analogy. If you were raised to skip to run a race, but then you start running a race and you seeing a lot of people running. I think you might want to start running. So um, you guys, I just think women, if they just start running a little bit, you guys are great. We love that you're in your bag. Just be a compliment to us. That's all. Facts. All right. And, and so here's, the, have, qu yeah. and here's mm -hmm. the question. Here's the question. Here's the question. Yes, Suzette, mm -hmm. could you marry a paralegal and be his paralegal? Mm. In life, you mean in general? No, I mean, like, for real, like, uh, uh, you're an attorney, yes. you know, that you're the boss, right? Yes. And there's mm -hmm. a paralegal. Mm -hmm. Now, could you marry an actual paralegal mm -hmm. and be submissive to that paralegal guy and become his paralegal, so to speak? I don't want to work for him, but I could be. Submissive. No, in a relationship. In a relationship. Oh, you mean in a relationship. Okay. I was like, what? Uh, okay. No, just in a relationship. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm clear on that. Don't think you can have two heads. I don't think that's that's there we go. that's not that's not how it goes. Even if you disagree, and I think I heard, I don't know who said it, it wasn't me, but you know, submission is not when you agree, submission is when you disagree. So mm -hmm. that's that's you gotta have the trust in the person to believe in where he's gonna go and that he's gonna do the right thing for the family. So that that's when you really have to submit. That's a that's the scary part. That's why you wanna choose correctly because you're like, oh my gosh, I know his heart. So I, I disagree with, you know, where he thinks we should be going, but that's my head. There we go. Wow. Yes, yes, good. Well, you're not All the right. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay. Listen, thank What'd you, you say? I didn't hear that. What'd you say, Black? I said, I said well, you're not in the 68.2 of women. <laughs> like, because, you know, majority <laughs> of women don't feel like that. But You maybe, don't think so? Uh, I guess not. I'm, no, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Because most women won't, like... Like you say, submission, that's a whole firestorm. You know what I'm Yeesh. saying? So, and I understand that's, that's not, that's not that's every beautiful. woman. That's not every woman at all. But that's why I say on that bell curve, it's 
the majority. And if it's not the majority, it's enough to affect a culture. So we got to kind of do what's counterintuitive to society. Society will tell you, you're the prize, you're the prize, just like people were saying. Yeah, you're the prize, but also the men are the prize too. You know what I'm saying? So let's let's just kind of like back off what society and social media is pushing out there because it's really driving us further apart. All right. Thank you so much, EBH Black. Please, y'all go check him out. Y'all see his name thank right you, here. The you. EBH Black Show. All right. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. All right. And last but not least, we got no, gla no glaze off. No glaze off. Can you hear me? Tell him, Gaston's World. No glaze, no glaze off. Can you hear me? Going once. Going twice. Come on, you. We can. Can you speak up? No glaze. No. Oh, all right, we try. Gaston's world know about it. I'm ready to bounce. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much, Gaston's world. Um. Oh, all right. I'm gonna let you. All right. Let's see. One more time. Bam. No glaze off. Can you hear me? Oh. No glaze off. He has an amazing icon. That is not. That is a great icon. All right. We try. We try. We try. All right. <laughs> Uh, and let me get this last one. Uh, the funny thing is Trayvon is saying all that, but most, oh, all right, I tend to pull that up. Shout out to Trayvon, man. We love Trayvon. All right. But thank you, uh, Mira. I can't say that name. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, Suzette, man. Epic Whoop. stream again. I am so happy for, you know, that, that I, that's that? Hellcats outside. <laughs> <laughs> they waiting on you. They waiting on you. <laughs> I'm so happy that this stream went well. I really would just want to thank you again for your thank time, you. for being so open. I want to thank uh, Kevin Samuels, of course, for coming in and, and everybody who participated in the in the comment section. You guys were live. I will I'll give you the uh, the last word. And, you know, also, guys, listen, please, please, please go subscribe to Suzette's channel. It's Suzette Speaks. Y'all see her down there. She's a TV host and attorney by co-counsel. Oh, uh, we right. will. She's gonna have me in the hot seat. We're gonna do this. It's gonna be reversed. If you want to see TLA in the hot seat, if you want to see TLA cross examined, Ooh, check wee. us out. November. Oh, uh, third. November next 3rd. Wednesday. Mm -hmm. November third. Three p.m. Um, yes, November third. All right. Um. Okay. Yes, November third. Sorry about that. All right, uh, yeah, 3 p.m. Please, please, please come check us out, and you will get to see the lead attorney cross-examine the lead attorney on the hot seat. How is he gonna do? How is he gonna do? Be a cross attorney, be a cross-examined by an attorney. We will see. All okay. right, so um your your what are your closing thoughts on this? This is just an encouraging conversation. I, I of course appreciate all of the back and forth. I, you know, again, when we broaden the conversation, not only to be, because again, I'm no relationship expert. Clearly I have a lot to learn. Um, but the way we kind of, you know, um, explored more in depth, what, um, men think and what women think and what, you know, where we are currently so that we can bridge that gap. I find so much joy in that. Um, one quick, uh, message to, I think her name was La, La Reina, the Cuervo or something like this. She had yeah, asked Raven. what to do. I think mm -hmm. Raven, she was asking like, what do you do? I've been taught all this stuff, 20s and 30s. I, if I were you, um, just like I think it was Miss Chantel or Chanel, uh, mm -hmm. my Jamaican sister from Texas, check out her channel. And then also what she has done is get a mentor outside of your circle who is teaching you or stuck in the old paradigm. So find you a big, uh, big auntie or it could be a relative or not that is going to school you in some of the things that we've been talking about. I, I agree with Mr. Samuels in terms of, you know, we got to have some game too, ladies. Y'all got game? Y'all mad? Okay. We got to have some game too. And I think- The hell was that? No. <laughs> Did y'all see it? She was like, we got to have game too, ladies. Did y'all see that? Like, what the hell? <laughs> That's a real game. Listen, shut up. <laughs> Did y'all see that? That was so I mean, consciously illustrious. I had half an eye. <laughs> She was like, we live women need we need games too, right? <laughs> I wasn't trying to do that. Hell no. I'm tired shout out. I'm grabbing my phone. Shout out to Suzette Speed. She's going to get it. She's like, nah, I'm going to get it now. Kevin Samuels like, I'm going to get it. <laughs> I'm just being game in general. I think sometimes again, it's been so easy. And we, you know, with our, our achievement, it comes easy. And we put our 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 um, you know, all our effort into it. So I'm, I'm willing to, like I said, learn from everything I've heard. Again, 
just as one woman trying to figure this thing out late in the game um, after college, it is a beautiful exchange we've had. And I'm just grateful um, for all of the people who participated and everybody who is just, you know, uplifting the the, the discourse. And, and thank you. Thank you, TLA, for the exposure. Huge. Thank you for having me back. And thank you to everybody who has come over. Um, Y'all got to give me at least 20, 30 minutes so I can eat real quick and then I'll be on my stream. But thank you, TLA, Fantastic. for making this possible for, no for the problem. Godfather to be here. Thank Listen, you, so you you absolutely earned it. You you just come up here and you just start blazing. What does Jordan say? Her game starting fires. All right, y'all see Suzette game. <laughs> Like, listen, like, well, all right. So shout out to Suzanne. Oh, Please I'm tired. Go, go to her channel in 20, 30 minutes. Give her, give her yes. time to eat some hot sales and then uh, go over there. All right. Yeah, like, so, how you don't drink no water? I'm so thirsty. I'm, I'm listen, I'm a soldier, man. You're I get good. it down. I'm a soldier. All right. So thank you so much, Suzette. And uh, y'all go check her out again. All right. Thank you. All right, guys. We made another one. Shout out to the man of prestige. Listen, he, all right, listen, listen. It's all good. Shout out to Nigeria. Shout out to Ola. What does Ola say? He says, thanks for the roast, TLA. You are the best. You know, I'm just, you saw me get on uh, Suzette right now. So, you know, and I got on, listen, me, me and your boy Trayvon, we like this, but I had to call Trayvon out. Trayvon was on some other stuff, but it's all love. You know, I got love for you. I got love for Trayvon. I got love for uh, for Suzette Speaks. A lot, a lot of love for Suzette Speaks. She was instrumental in this. So thank you so much, uh, Man of Prestige. Guys, we did it. I just want to thank everybody in the chat, everybody who, who contributed. I, unfortunately, because of all the stuff that was going on, I had my half an ear. You know, like Kevin Sam's had to pay attention to the chat. I really couldn't figure out who was the sponsor, but I'll go back and try to, uh, I'll tally it up to see who was the sponsor. But thank you guys so much for contributing. Y'all holding me up. Again, man, I was so close to quitting. This YouTube thing is very difficult. And did you see how I started the stream? I started the stream, I made a mistake. I had to cancel the stream and restart it. So even now I, I make mistakes. It's, it's, it's a difficult thing and I was about to quit. And the fact that we are here and you guys are holding me up and you guys are supporting me through all of my mistakes. And uh, we're just trying to get to the truth. We're trying to figure out some tough issues and we're, we're being honest about it. We're being truthful about it. And, you know, we're, we're putting in the work. So I really, really appreciate every single one of you. Thank you guys so much. A big special salute, a special salute to uh, Kevin Samuels for coming on. There's no reason why he needs to go on anybody's channel, especially somebody's channel who has, you know, what do I have? 75,000 subscribers. He has a million plus, right? There's no reason for him to, to get on and uh, to come up. So thank you so much to Kevin Samuels. Thank you to my number two, man. Thank you so much to the Steel Curtain. I hit it for the Steel Curtain. Thank you so much, Steel Curtain, for supporting me, for supporting this stream. I really appreciate it. Also, to the one and only Gail Lockett, my number one in command, best moderator on YouTube. And a big, big shout out as well to an unsung hero, Friendsgiving. Y'all don't know who Friendsgiving is. If you don't have a YouTube channel, you know you might not know <clears throat> who Friendsgiving is. But if you have one, especially a small one, you know who she is because she's always supporting tremendously, so graciously behind the scenes. She's been supporting me for so long, times when I did not deserve it, and not just supporting, but supporting so generously. I'm so, so grateful to her. So uh, thank you so much, Friendsgiving. Really, really appreciate that. Thank you to everyone in my Patreon. Special shout out, of course, to United Fitness and to Jamar John Johnson. Killers in the game. So thank you to everybody. Join my Patreon. If you want to start a YouTube channel, do not join it this month. Just wait until November 1st. If you join right now, they're going to double charge you. All right. So thank you guys so much. We made it again. Big shout out to Suzette Speaks. Big shout out to uh, Kevin Samuels. Big shout out to Gail, Steel Curtain, and Friendsgiving. And everybody who's, I don't even want to start mentioning who contributed because I'm going to leave so many people out. But just know that it's hard for me to express my gratitude to you. So thank you so much. I cannot begin to tell you what your 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 support means to me. I, I'm really grateful. You guys have no idea, no idea. So uh, thank you. All right. Uh, I'm not your attorney. 
I am the lead attorney, and I am here to help you lawyer up. Y'all have a great night.